Before diving into the audiobook, here's an introduction to set the stage. Part 005. Audiobook title Walker of the Worlds. Chapters 1 to 2182. Author Grand underscore void underscore Taoist. Source web novel. Audiobook produced by Zephyr Audiobook. Prepare yourself for an extraordinary journey through the world of Murim. Crafted by the talented Grand underscore underscore Taoist. In this epic tale, follow Arthur, Lin Mu, and his master, the Void Weaver Spider Shukong, as they navigate through a realm filled with mystery and power, all linked to a mysterious ring that empowers them. This captivating novel offers an immersive experience, and you can engage with the author directly on his Discord channel to discuss his other fascinating stories. For more content, visit my YouTube and Odyssey channels, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Enjoy the story. Even in the top three sects, there were barely any disciples whose capacity of Dantian in the Qi refining realm reached 2,000 spirit Qi wisps, not to mention 3,000. Even 1,500 wisps was considered a rarity in the top 10 sects. While it only seemed like Arthur S. capacity was only three times that of a similar stage cultivator, it was not so. While it was only three times for now, it would be exponentially more when he reached a higher realm. Vistenvelbin.cm for new updates. Even a hundred spirit chi wisp difference became a huge difference in the long run as it only meant that that much extra space was present for refinement and compression of spirit chi. The more spirit chi was refined and compressed, the more stable the foundation of a cultivator would be. Still, the reason why there were not many cultivators with higher capacity was not that they were not talented, but rather because even in the top sex, they would restrain its expansion as it would only take that much longer for that disciple to reach the next realm. Another major problem was the injuries caused to the Dantian could be life-threatening, and there was a big chance that the cultivator would actually end up crippling themselves permanently if their Dantian was shattered due to the expansion. In a way, Arthur only survived it because of his abnormal body-tempering realm cultivation due to which he had ample amounts of vital energy seething within his body. Most cultivators would abandon vital energy once they reached the Qi refining realm and thought of it as an inferior to spirit Qi. An entire day passed before Arthur's fever finally went down. His Dantian had stabilized and was no longer expanding. Even the drops of liquid spirit chi which floated in individual droplets on the bottom of Arthur's Dantian merged together forming a small pool. If one were to look at this pool and the wisps of spirit chi floating over it, they would think that it is a scene from an immortal painting. Inside Arthur's abdomen, something else was happening. A complex and obscure pattern appeared on his stomach. This pattern was the same pattern that had appeared when Arthur had first bound with the lost immortal's legacy treasure, which was the wooden slip. The obscure pattern flickered and small runes started appearing from it. These runes were too small to be clearly observed, and it could not be perceived what they meant. All that could be seen was that they had some kind of a complex form. These runes spread all over the stomach and formed a net. The net had large size gaps and it did not seem proper. The obscure pattern flickered unstably and a few more of those small runes appeared from it. These small runes too joined the net, making it slightly more denser. The obscure pattern flicked even more, but it could not produce any more of the small runes. The obscure pattern, as if running out of fuel, fizzled one last time before disappearing. The net formed from the small runes shrank and faded into the surface of Arthur's stomach. Just as the obscure pattern disappeared, Arthur opened his eyes. Huh, what? Heavens! Not again! Arthur uttered painfully as the hunger attacked him like a beast. He quickly withdrew the meat from his ring and started eating it. Over the days he had stored plenty of cooked meat in his ring, but even then it was steadily being depleted. Arthur had already known that his hunger was increasing more and more, thus he increased the amount of meat he cooked. It had come to the point where he had already finished half of all the beast corpses he had accumulated till now. Still, something was feeling strange to him. Usually, when he got the rush of hunger, it would immediately start being satiated once he started eating, but that was not happening right now. Arthur ignored it for a bit and continued eating, as he was more bothered by the pain for now. But after a few minutes, he had reached a point where he had already finished the entire beast and yet there was not even 1% of reduction in his hunger. Senior, something's wrong, Arthur shouted out in his mind. I know, it seems like there have been a few changes in your body. Quickly check it with your spirit since your Dantian probably expanded even more. And perhaps even the nameless technique of the lost immortal must have had some effect. Shukong the stanzas suggested. 
Arthur split his attention with some difficulty and used his sprite sense to observe his body while still continuing to eat. He had already withdrawn the second beast that was cooked beforehand and was already eating eat. Arthur first observed his visceral organs and could not find anything different with them. He even looked at his stomach and scanned it closely, yet could not find any change. Huh? It's not my organs, so is it my dantion? Arthur thought as he peered deeper. Chapter 228 Strengthened Foundation Arthur a spirit sense reached his dantion and it was then that he witnessed it. The sight was strangely beautiful and he even stopped eating for a brief moment. It was as if he was looking at a beautiful painting and he was the person in the painting that was sitting on the side of a pond. The shimmering pond of liquid spirit chi and faintly glowing wisps of spirit chi looked amazing to him. It was now that he noticed it. My dantion has doubled in size? And what's this even the drops of the liquid spirit chi have merged? This looks beautiful. Arthur muttered in his mind. While Arthur was witnessing this scene, Shukong the stanzas was doing the same through Arthur's mind. Indeed, it increased as I expected. He even managed to form the chi pool, that's good. His progress should be even more faster now. But this hunger, it is abnormal even when considering the nameless technique. Did his training finally push him over the limit or is it something else? Shukong the stanzas thought. Sigh. Only time will tell. Shukong the stanzas muttered to himself before looking towards the eternal altar that was in a calm state. Arthur had finally gathered his wits and drew his attention back from his dantian to focus on eating. In the time that he had spent observing his body, he had already finished another beast. But now he could finally feel a reduction in his hunger. Hew, hew, hew. Arthur took labored breaths between each bite. This is too much. If it increases more, it would take me even more meat to satisfy the hunger. I just hope it doesn't flare up like this again for a while. Arthur thought to himself, feeling helpless. FNDD é UPTS on N OV I L I N ponto com. Arthur ended up finishing one more beast for a total of four beasts before he was able to stop. He could not move anymore and simply lay down on the ground surrounded by a pile of bones and scraps of the meat. He slowly blinked and looked around in the room. The room was now quite messy, to say the least, and it would take him quite a while to clean it again. Sigh. How long is this going to take this time? Arthur spoke to himself as he waited for his strength to return to him. He closed his eyes and took a brief nap, and when he woke up, he was feeling energized. He felt like a river of energy was coursing through him, and an inexplicable sense of comfort filled him. The vital energy within his body thrummed in harmony, and similarly the spirit chi circulated within his meridians automatically. Crack, crack, pop, pop. Arthur stood up, and the joints in his body crackled and pop. He could feel the strength that was coiled in his body. It was as if it was packed to the brim, yet there was still a desire for more. Arthur clenched his fist to test and immediately felt the difference. This increase, it almost double of my previous strength. Arthur said in a shocked tone. Seems like your body has finally started to acclimatize with the spirit chi in your body. Shukong the stanzas spoke. Arthur was confused upon hearing senior Shukong the stanzas' words and was wondering what he meant as he had not heard of anything such as this before from him. In fact, in all that he had learned about cultivation, he did not know of anything that was similar to this. What do you mean, senior? Arthur questioned, feeling curious. What you are experiencing right now is nothing but your foundation getting deeper. You see, when a person cultivates they accumulate spirit chi in their body. But even if they have large stores of it, they can't utilize it perfectly. This becomes even more apparent when there is a difference between the cultivation realms. Another great factor in this was your body tempering realm cultivation. You remember when I said that the body cultivation realm was important, right? This was the reason. While one can have spirit chi, they still need a strong vessel to be able to contain and control it. Reaching the eighth stage of the body tempering realm puts you at the very minimum requirement level that is needed to contain the spirit chi. The higher your cultivation gets, the more difficult it would be for your body to handle it. For cultivators who only cultivate spirit chi and not the vital energy, they need to spend much longer to stabilize their foundations and need an extensive amount of resources as well. While the time taken to do the same with body tempering realm cultivation is longer at the start, it results in a big difference later. Your body has harmonized with the spirit chi, and now you should be able to use a much larger amount at once without harming yourself. This was the reason I wanted you to continue with body tempering realm cultivation. Shukong the stanzas explained. 
After hearing Senior Shukong the stanza's s words, Arthur felt quite enlightened and grateful. He was lucky that he had met Senior Shukong the stanzas or he would have probably gone on the wrong path and end up regretting it later. Or worse, he would have never even found out that he was wrong. As a great sage once said, Knowing about a mistake and regretting it is better than never knowing you made a mistake at all. I am grateful for your guidance. Senior Shukong the stanzas. Arthur spoke in a content tone. Hmm. Shukong the stanzas hummed in response before continuing. Once you reach the peak of the body tempering realm though, I have something that would help you go even further, much further than this world has seen. Arthur was curious about it, but decided that it would be best for him to wait patiently till Senior Shukong the stanzas tells him himself. He now knew that Shukong the stanzas had much more experience than anyone in this world and his guidance was priceless. Chapter 229 A Nostalgic Encounter Arthur sat down and tried to observe the status of his body now. He wanted to see what exact difference was there, now that his foundation had been strengthened. He chanted the Severing Heart Sutra so that his perception could be at its peak and then used his spirit sense to observe his body. While he had seen it before when he was still eating, it was not as thorough as he was distressed by the pain of hunger and thus couldn't focus. But now that he was free from it and was feeling better than ever, he had no such restrictions. Arthur went from the top of his body and went all the way down. He observed his meridians, which seemed to have slightly increased in diameter and had even gotten a bit thicker. He then observed his stomach, which seemed to be looking the same as before, yet he had this innate feeling that something had changed. Discube en AW chapt erraesa ena ena zero e, ela, Burundi, com. He finally came to his dantian and saw the same painting like scene, except this time he wasn't as amazed. The spirit chi wisps were still floating around above the pond of liquid spirit chi, but from time to time they would leave the dantian and enter the meridians on their own and circulate in his body before returning. He also observed that the number of wisps was actually increasing slowly and this speed was much faster than his previous natural rate of recovery, which came as a surprise to him. Seems like having a strong foundation has way more hidden benefits than I thought. Arthur thought to himself. Having thought of this, he decided to return to his routine and left for the kitchen so that he could cook more meat. But when he reached there and was about to light the fire, he realized something. Huh? I'm out of wood. Hmm. Guess I should go buy some. Or I can just ask Hei Ping, I think. He did say that I can request him some things. Arthur muttered to himself. He thus left the kitchen and started walking towards the door of the courtyard. He opened the door and looked for Hei Ping but did not see him there. Did he go somewhere else? Arthur thought before scanning the area with his spirit sense. Not here? Was he called by the Hei Corps, perhaps? Arthur thought out loud. Taking a few more glances around, he reckoned that he would have to get it himself. Thus Arthur started walking in the direction of the market. While he still did have some cooked meat present in his ring, Arthur did not want to take any more chances with the nameless technique. He didn't know how much more could his hunger intensify, thus he wanted to be fully prepared. Besides, he had plenty of money with him right now. Arthur took a brisk walk and took in the sights of the town. He had been in seclusion for a rather long while, thus it was actually feeling a bit refreshing to him. This is kinda nice. Perhaps I should take a long walk, relax myself, and clear my mind. Arthur thought to himself. That would be a good idea. You should try out your techniques and skills now that your strength has increased. You should always have a good grasp on your capabilities and limits. Shukong the stanzas advised. You're right, senior. I'll do as you suggest. Arthur replied before reaching the town market. The market was relatively empty than usual as the winter was still in full effect and it was currently snowing. Arthur himself wasn't even wearing any thick robes and was in his simple clothes. Before he could at least feel relatively cold, but now he felt no different from being in his house. His vital energy which was fully contained within his body was protected from the weather. Some of the people that were selling their wares were shivering with cold, due to not having adequate clothing. While others were simply weak and had low body tempering realm cultivation. Arthur curiously did a scan of the entire market with his spirit sense and found out that out of the tens of people there, barely four reached the fifth stage of the body tempering realm. Most of the adults that he saw were at the fourth stage of the body tempering realm and below. Only the guards that were standing at the entrance of the streets and square had a cultivation that was at the sixth stage of the body tempering realm. Arthur quickly found a few people that were selling wood and bought it all. In fact, he bought all the stock that was available in the market currently. The people who were around looked at him with strange looks, 
and some of the sellers were even suspicious if he even had that much money. But once he showed them the coins, their attitude changed 360 degrees and they quickly accepted it. Arthur knew that he shouldn't store the wood in his ring here. Thus he asked all of it to be delivered to his house, which they gladly accepted. Arthur spent about half a gold coin to buy the entire stock of the wood. This display of wealth also garnered some unsavory looks, but they went unnoticed by Arthur. Let's take a walk to the forest. I need to test my skills too. Arthur thought before changing his direction to the forest. But there were a couple of people following behind him. They stayed a fair distance away from him, thus Arthur did not notice them and currently. His focus was on something else, making him lost in his thoughts. Arthur eventually reached the outskirts of the town and exited from the northern part. Just as he got a sufficient distance away from the town, his ears picked up something. They were footsteps. While he was in the town, he had not paid attention to it as there were many people around, but now even outside they were following him. Sigh. This is nostalgic. Chapter 230 Insult The men that were following Arthur were now in the range of his spirit sense and he could see them. There were a total of five men behind him, though he was surprised as he found two of them to be rather familiar. These two? Aren't they the same men who chased me back when I sold the snow-veiled hair? Arthur spoke to himself in surprise. The men having seen that Arthur had already noticed them showed sly smiles on their faces with some that were more evil than others. But as they got close, they noticed that Arthur had not moved at all and he didn't have a change of expression either. Ah! Seems like this kid has gone dumb from fear. One of the men spoke. Of course he would be. Look at him, he's so scrawny and small we can snap him like a twig. Another man who was carrying a sword and was over six feet tall spoke in a demeaning tone. The two men who had once chased Arthur before finally realized who he was. It took them a little longer to recognize him, as his looks had slightly changed over the past few months. Although they were not widely different, they were still quite different for someone who had only seen him once. You! One of those two men yelled. Brothers this is that brat which made fools of us back then. He even made Big Brother look bad. The second man explained. Ah! Seems like we now have more business to settle than before. The man who seemed to be the leader of the five men spoke as he cracked his knuckles. Brat, give us all your money and kowtow on the ground a hundred times, and then maybe we will let you off. The final man who had a mouse-like look spoke in a shrill voice. Arthur did not respond to their taunts and simply stared at them and their ridiculous display. I didn't know there were mouse beast men in this world. Shukong the stanza spoke in an amused tone. Arthur immediately realized what Senior Shukong the stanzas was saying and chuckled in response. Yes, Senior, he does look like a mouse. Perhaps he is indeed a beast man, we don't know. Arthur spoke out loud. A vein popped up on the man with the mouse-like face. What did you say, brat? You dare insult this daddy. I'll teach you. There won't even be any bones left of you when we're done with you. The man with mouse-like face spoke. Ah, little brother. It seems like this kid's parents didn't teach him any manners. What do we know? Perhaps his mother was a whore and didn't have time to teach him. Being busy with other men. One of the men wearing a gray shirt insulted. He had an axe on his back and had a long scar extending from his left ear to his neck. Yes, yes. His father must have been a weak eunuch seeing how scrawny he is. The leader of the men added. But as soon as these words were said, the environment of the area changed. While it was cold before, now it felt chilling. All of the men felt a chill passing through their bodies. They could also feel a malevolent aura that had suddenly appeared near them. They looked at its source simultaneously and saw Arthur standing there with a malevolent look on his face. His lips seemed to be moving and he was uttering something, but they could not hear anything. Gulp. The men could not help but gulp their saliva, as an unknown fear washed over them. They could not tell why, but they knew the person in front of them was dangerous. Although logic told them that Arthur looked weak and young, their instincts were telling them something else entirely. The leader of the men forcefully grasped hold of himself and broke out of that strange spell. What are you all doing standing? Get him! Leader yelled. Crack. The rest of the four men finally broke out of their stupor and were just about to move when they heard a sickening crunch. Splatter. A wet warm liquid splat onto their faces and bodies as they turned to see someone standing beside them. The person who was previously in front of them was now just beside them. Arthur had his hand on the remnants of the head of the man who had insulted his mother. One of the men touched his face and looked at the warm liquid that had splattered on it. Blood! The man spoke in a daze. 
The remaining four men were now stuck in a strange daze as they could not understand what had just happened. One moment they were standing here all fine, and Arthur was far ahead of them. But now he was near them and their companion's head seemed to have been crushed. Discube en avedopla chapt erraesa ena ena zeru e, ela, burundi, com. Arthur stayed in the same posture and turned his head to face the man who had insulted his father, in an almost robotic manner. He had the same malevolent expression on his face, except this time it was dressed with the blood and brains. You should not have said that, Arthur spoke in a cold tone. Hearing the voice of Arthur made the men feel as if flaming steel was being pressed upon their hearts. They tried to speak and move, but discovered that the fear had rooted them to the ground. No matter how much their mind tried, their body simply did not obey. With every passing second, Arthur's expression was getting more and more malevolent as veins popped up on his face and his eyes turned bloodshot. Vital energy and chi coursed through his body as every inch of his muscles filled with strength. It seemed as if his body had increased by one size and the loose clothes he was wearing became stretched taut. Chapter 231 Bottom Line Arthur let go of the now dead man and fully turned towards the man who had insulted his father. He clenched his fist and buried it in that man's chest. Crack. Crack. Splatter. More blood splattered as a hole was smashed through that man's chest. The trees at the back could be seen and the man's ribs now poked out of the new opening. Blood flowed endlessly from the man's chest as he fell to the ground with a loud thud. The remaining three men had finally been shaken from his days as they instantly started running. Dedemon. The mouse-like man yelled in fear as he ran ahead. Monster. This is monster. Another man uttered in disbelief. The leader of the men did not have the will to speak anything and was fully focused on running instead. He was at the back of the two men as he was the last person to start running. He had only gone a few meters ahead when he heard a sound. Swish. A short sword flew out his side and impaled itself into the head of the man with the mouse-like face. But the short sword did not stop there and continued flying, taking the mouse-like man with it until it pierced into the head of the other man as well. The two men had now been sandwiched together with the short sword as a toothpick and collapsed on the ground. The leader's eyes went wide as he saw this and was suddenly stopped in place. He then felt a tight grasp on his neck, as if it was the claws of death itself. He found himself being lifted off the ground and his legs kept on flailing in the air. Mercy! Mercy! Please let go of me! Oh great lord I… I made a mistake. It was those two who wanted to rob you and suggested this. The leader pleaded with tears and snot coming out of his mouth. He couldn't see Arthur behind him as he had been grasped from the behind. Thus all he could do was plead in the air. A mistake? Certainly not. Though you all will be useful. Perhaps you all would be a good sacrifice for pleasing the souls of my parents. May they find peace in the afterlife. Arthur spoke in a hoarse voice that was almost unrecognizable. Arthur tightened his grip as the man kept flailing and pleading. But soon he couldn't speak as his throat had been crushed. But that was only the start, as Arthur kept on exerting force until the man's head was forcefully severed from his body, leaving behind a mangled neck on the body as it fell to the ground. Arthur threw the head to the side forcefully, which made it slam into a rock and burst apart like a watermelon. Get the latest chpters on n slash velbin.com. Arthur looked at his handiwork with a cold look and then raised his hands to take a look at them. Sigh. Even more mess. He muttered in a hoarse voice before it started to return to normal. His clothes that had been stretched taut became loose again, and the power coursing in his body calmed down as well. All this because I just wanted to go out for a relaxing walk, Arthur said in a frustrated tone. Good, good. The dignity of an immortal must not be challenged. The same way a dragon's reverse scale must not be touched. These men crossed your bottom line and deserved this. Shukong the stanzas praised in a slightly joyous tone. The rage that was clouding Arthur's mind had finally started dispelling as he felt the implications of his actions. A sense of guilt filled him for a moment before swiftly being banished by Senior Shukong the stanzas's words. What he was saying was right. These men had insulted his parents and thus perished. But the next thought that came to Arthur made him feel confused. The Burning Heart Sutra. It is different. I didn't even use it myself. It automatically came within my mind and before I knew it I was chanting it. Arthur muttered to himself. I'm afraid such is the power of the demonic path. Your will is not strong enough to fully control it, and thus it will take over when you truly get enraged. 
it will take you some time to get used to it and let your will get tempered. Still, you shouldn't use it carelessly. The aura of the demonic path is not something that should be revealed easily. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur silently listened to Senior Shukong the stanzas s words before nodding in agreement. While he was not physically tired the way he was when he first used the Burning Heart Sutra, he still felt the mental exhaustion from it. He could tell that the burden of using the Burning Heart Sutra was quite high in his mind. This strength, it was ill-suited for a task like this. It could have been easily accomplished without the power of the Burning Heart Sutra. This was simply a waste of effort. Those men were not even cultivators. Arthur spoke in a self-explanatory tone. Arthur S. Mood had been fouled by this incident, and he no longer wished to continue. He didn't even bother cleaning it up and just decided to leave it to the Hay Corps. He thought that now that they were taking care of the law and order situation in the town, this work should be left up to them. Arthur did not notice this clearly, but his personality had gone under a new change. While it had already started changing back when he received the ordainment of the world's will, it had now progressed further. But Shukong the stanzas was not one to miss this as he basked in this moment. He's finally experiencing the true reality of this universe. This is but the start. I'll have to guide him and make sure that it doesn't become too overwhelming for him. Shukong the stanzas stated to himself. Chapter 232. Clean up. Arthur did not bother staying low-key anymore and sprinted all the way to the town center. He now wanted nothing more than to return to his house and cultivate. He regretted that he even chose to go out and wondered if it would have been better if he had simply returned to his house from the very start after he bought the wood. The people along the way saw him running past them and were shocked, to say the least. Even the guards wanted to try to stop him, but his speed was not something that they could come close to. Before they could even react, Arthur had already run past them. Still, there were some guards who seemed to have recognized Arthur. The new town heads esteemed guest, Arthur? What happened to him? One of the guards who recognized Arthur spoke up. His companions and the residents who were nearby heard his words and were surprised. That's Senior Arthur? Another guard questioned. As expected from the new town head's guest, his cultivation is unparalleled. One of the guards who looked a little fat spoke in a flattering tone. Still, one of the guards was able to see Arthur S. troubled and frustrated expression while he was running. This guard was actually a member of the Hay Corps and had seen Arthur in person before and had also witnessed his might. All the Hay Corps members that had been assigned as guards were informed of Arthur beforehand and were told to report his actions back to Hay Bao. The guard seeing this immediately went towards the town center. But he saw that Arthur was heading towards there as well. He's going to the town center in such a hurry. Did something drastic happen? The guard questioned as he continued on. Arthur soon reached the town center and swiftly made his way up to the office. The guards at the entrance greeted him with cupped hands as he passed by and led him inside. Arthur saw that the door of the office was already opened and Hei Bao was sitting at the desk while someone else was also sitting opposite to him. Arthur recognized him immediately, as he was none other than the supervisor Li Pong. Hei Bao looked up the moment Arthur walked in and noticed his expression. A bad feeling arose in his mind, and he gritted his teeth before letting out a sigh. Sigh. Supervisor Li Pong, I'll talk with you later. I have some more important matters to attend to. Hei Bao spoke. Li Pong heard his words and wanted to ask him why he was cutting his meeting short, but looking at his serious face made him think again. Hei Bao currently had a superior position than him and was also a cultivator. Hei Wan, who was the acting town head, had personally appointed him to manage the town while she was gone. Thus Li Pong did not question it further and directly stood up. He glanced at Arthur and was surprised. He also saw his expression and the gloomy aura that was radiating off of him. Why is he here? Is it related to the culprits again? He questioned internally before walking out. Once Li Pong left the room, Arthur extended his spirit sense and did a quick sweep of the area. His spirit sense also passed over Hei Bao, and he could feel it. As soon as it touched him, he felt a chill pass through his body and for a moment there he felt fear. His spirit sense, it's incomparable to before. And what was that feeling? Killing intent. What has he done now? Hei Bao questioned himself. Once Arthur was satisfied that there was no one listening to them, and they had privacy, he narrated the incident from before and asked him to take care of the bodies. Gulp. As you wish. You can go rest now. I'll send some guards to clean it up. Hey bow lip lip. Thank you. Arthur spoke in a calm tone before leaving the office. 
Hay Bao's brows furrowed upon Arthur S. departure, and he called out, Guards! In a few seconds, four guards appeared in the room. All of them were members of the Hay Corps and were disguised as guards. What is the problem, Captain? One of them questioned. Call a few men, we are gonna go check out something. Oh, and also get some guards to look up these persons. Hei Bao answered and then described to them a few things. The guards' expressions changed to serious and one of them swiftly left to carry out his task while the others went out along with Hei Bao. Their destination was none other than the place where Arthur had killed the five men. Upon reaching the site of the massacre, the Hei Corps were shocked and Hei Bao's expression turned displeased. Clean it up. And not a single word of this to anyone else. Hei Bao ordered. FNDD é UPTS ON N OV I L I N PONTO COM Yes, Captain. The men replied before getting to their tasks. Sai. I need to report to the leader. Something may be wrong with Arthur. Hebao thought. Back in the town, Arthur had long since reached his house. He entered the courtyard and saw the wood that he had bought kept in the yard. There was plenty of wood there for him to last a few months, perhaps. He quickly stored it in his ring before entering his room. He glanced at the mess that was still there and got to cleaning it. A few minutes later the room was clean, but the faint smell of meat was still lingering in the air. At least it does not smell bad and is not a foul smell, Arthur said to himself before getting to cook more meat. Once everything was prepped and ready, he finally sat back down to cultivate. Only cultivating will calm me down. Chapter 233, The Complications of Burning Heart Sutra A day was passed in cultivation as Arthur S. mental state finally returned to normal. He had been chanting the Calming Heart Sutra endlessly during this time, yet found that it was not being as effective as before. The demonic path is as domineering as always, it will take him longer to get used to it. Even though he also has the approval of the Buddhist path, he hasn't grasped the essence of it yet. While the demonic path is much easier to grasp, all it needs is rage. Shukong the stanzas thought. Arthur opened his eyes and let out a breath. His face was tranquil and no trace of the previous distress was seen on it. He had thoroughly been cleansed of his previous condition. Senior, from what I've experienced yesterday, it seems like I need to use the Burning Heart Sutra and gain better control over it. Arthur spoke in a calm tone. Oh, just as I thought of it. Yes, that is indeed what you should do. Once you get used to it and become familiar with that state, not only will you have better control over it, but you may even increase your strength by another fold. Shukong the stanzas replied, MMMHMM. Arthur hummed in response before a determined look appeared on his face. The words of the demonic figures appeared in his mind as he repeated after them. Ignite thy heart as a furnace. Let your rage fuel your strength and unleash rampage upon the worlds. Behold, the Burning Heart Sutra. Arthur's expression soon changed to a strained one as veins popped up on his face and his muscles grew taut. His eyes were closed, but underneath his eyelids, they had turned bloodshot as well. Upon reaching his state, his mind started to wander as he had no target to unleash his rage upon. This made his memories of the past came back to him and the sorrow accompanied it. And along with this sorrow came unprecedented rage. Arthur clenched his fists in rage as he tried to control it. He stayed like that for two minutes before Shukong the stanzas called out. Enough! He ordered. Arthur snapped out of his thoughts and stopped chanting the Burning Heart Sutra. His face and eyes went back to normal and his body also relaxed. Phew! This is much harder than when I killed those men, Arthur said with a tired voice. Indeed, when one does not have a goal in mind, their will starts to waver. Right now you don't have a target on which you can focus this power on thus it ends up targeting yourself. Shukong the stanzas said with a straight tone before continuing, Hmm, you should use the Burning Heart Sutra once a day like this. But, you need to reduce the time period. Thirty seconds should be good for now. Two minutes is clearly more straining on you. When you killed those men, you barely spent a minute in that state. This is a taxing technique. Better to be reserved with it for now. Arthur carefully pondered over Senior Shukong the stanzas' s words and agreed with them. The stress that the technique put on him was certainly large. He didn't know if it could have harmful effects. Thus, it would only do him good to be prudent. Discube en avedopla chapt erraesa ena ena zero e ela burundi com. That does seem to be the better choice right now. Arthur agreed before standing up. He took a look outside the window and saw the cloudy sky and the swirling snow. The winter should be ending in a month now. Not much time left. Arthur muttered to himself. 
He sat back down to cultivate and return to his routine, except this time another task had been added to it. The task being the daily usage of the Burning Heart Sutra. Days upon days passed as another month came to an end. Xiangwei City was a city that was well known in the Shuangqian Kingdom and was also known in other parts of the Great Zhou Empire. There were two reasons for it. One, it was one of the biggest cities of commerce and thousands of trades happened there every hour. The second being that it was home to a lot of big and prominent mercenary companies. The climate in the Xiangwei City was also completely different from that of Wu Lim City. While it was also cold here, it was not on the same level as that of the Wu Lim City and there was no snow here either. The sky was also clear and the sun shone brightly. At the south of the city, there existed the mercenary district. This was the place where most of the mercenary companies' bases were located. While the smaller mercenary companies had their head bases here, the bigger ones like the Ashen Cloak mercenaries had a smaller administrative base here. The bigger mercenary companies had their main bases located outside the city in special areas that had been allotted to them. This was an honor that was only reserved for the most powerful mercenary companies. Still, the mercenary district was the central hub of the mercenaries as this was also where the office of the mercenary union was located. The building which housed it was rather large and took up around 10% of the entire mercenary district. This was a shocking thing for a single building to occupy such a large area. But it was a given, as the building had many different departments in it that performed different functions. Some dealt with the requests and commissions that they received, some dealt with the legal aspects of the job, some dealt with the goods that they obtained while some parts functioned as a dorm for the mercenaries. Thought the most important part of the mercenary union was considered as the grand meeting room. This was where the most important meetings were convened and big decisions were taken. Currently, in this very room, a meeting was taking place. There were more than a hundred seats in the room and all of them were filled. Right now, a man was standing in the center of the room and was speaking to everyone. This man was none other than Ting Xiaolian. He was currently informing everyone about the events that had happened in the northern town and forest. Nobody knew, but this meeting was the start of the upheaval. Chapter 234 Mercenary Union The people in the grand meeting hall were all in an uproar after hearing what Teng Xiaolian had just spoken. When the people had been informed that an important meeting was organized, they had not expected for it to be this serious. Most of the mercenary companies had sent their members out to the mission that was assigned by the mayor of the Wu Lim city. Thus they were quite enraged, to say the least. This cannot go unanswered. The mayor must give us an explanation. One of the hundreds of mercenaries yelled. Yes, yes, this has never happened before. Mayor Wu Sun's audacity is too much. How dare he blame the mercenaries without proof? Who knows, he may even have a part in this. Perhaps he does not want to keep up his side of the bargain. Someone else said. The higher ups of the mercenary company that were sitting at the front of the room seemed quite agitated by hits too. But they knew that they could not express their displeasure directly like this. It would only be detrimental to them in the long run. Silence! The old man who was sitting at the head of the room shouted as he slammed his fist onto the table. His voice was thunderous and spread around in the room, making the furniture shake. One could feel the power in the voice and could tell that it was amplified by Qi. But to make things shake by mere voice meant only one thing. The old man in question was a nascent soul realm cultivator. All the mercenaries that were shouting immediately fell silent after seeing the old man spoke. Evidently the old man had a very high positing and inspired fear in them. After silence descended in the room, the old man gazed at everyone with a hawk-like gaze. The weaker mercenaries could feel chills going down their spine just from the gaze and subconsciously swallowed their saliva. Only when the old man stopped looking did they relax. But even in this time, their backs had been covered with cold sweat. The old man then looked at Tung Xiaolian before speaking. Tung Xiaolian, do you swear on your life and your honor as a mercenary that all you've said is true? The old man questioned. I swear on my life, my honor and the souls of my fellow mercenaries that all I've said is the entire truth that I've experienced. Tung Xiaolian declared as he slammed his fist upon his chest. Sigh. A sigh escaped the old man's lips as he too went silent for a bit. After thinking for a minute, he looked at the mercenaries gathered and the higher ups of all the mercenary companies that were sitting at the front. I've come to a decision. All the events that happened as Tung Xiaolian narrated will be reported to the sex. Since it is a matter of blood sacrifices, there may be unorthodox evil cultivators involved. This may go beyond our capacity to handle. Still, we don't know the full extent of this. Hence, I am ordering a total recall of all the mercenaries currently on missions. 
They are to report to the Union as soon as possible, and we will be doing a full-scale assessment. The old man declared. Surprised expressions appeared on the faces of all the higher-ups, and then their expressions turned serious. One of them who was wearing a full set of armor stood up and looked at the old man. The old man gestured with his eyes to let him speak. Union head, but if we recall all our mercenaries the backlash would be too great. Our reputation may fall greatly. How would we deal with that? The man spoke. The old man who was apparently the head of the mercenary union thought contemplated for a second before gesturing for the man to sit down. Do not worry about that. The union head spoke before flipping his palm and making a golden scroll appear in his hand. I'll be using the royal decree for this. No one will dare question us for our actions them. He added. The people were incredibly shocked after hearing the union head's words and knew how severely he was taking it. The royal decree was no small matter, and it had been bestowed upon the mercenary union by the king of the Shuang Qian kingdom for their services over the years. The royal decree allowed them to request the king of anything as long as it was within certain limits. A request such as the one they were asking was certainly not a problem for the king, who could silence all the people who had commissioned the missions. Even the cultivation sects would have to take royal decree rather seriously, even if they did not come under their rule. Besides, some of the bigger mercenary companies had cultivation sects backing them anyway. There was no way they would take this loss of their members silently. And, if the implications of the event are as they have been told so, then there will be no problem anyway and the royal decree would not be needed. The union head continued. The expressions of all of the mercenaries were visibly relaxed after hearing the union head's decision, and they all nodded in acknowledgement. Now then, except for the higher-ups, all of you can leave. The union head commanded. The mercenaries all stood up immediately and left the meeting hall, leaving the remaining people to discuss further. While leaving, two of the mercenaries from the crowd did not go to their respective bases, but rather they went to a building that looked like a pleasure pavilion. The two of them took different routes, thus did not meet each other and did not know that they had come to the same place. One of the mercenaries went up to the receptionist that was sitting at the entrance and whispered something to her, after which another worker took him to a secret room. A similar thing happened with the other mercenary, and he was taken to a secret room as well. The Lord needs to know about this as soon as possible. One of the mercenaries muttered under his breath. Master needs to know immediately. They mercenaries have found out about us. The other mercenary inwardly spoke with distress. Chapter 235 A Nostalgic Visit Arthur was sitting on his bed and was wearing a clean white robe. His face was currently filled with veins yet looked to be relatively calm. His lips were silently moving, chanting the Burning Heart Sutra. He maintained this state for over two minutes before he finally stopped and let out a breath. Phew! Arthur opened his eyes that were now filled with tranquility. Finally! Arthur muttered to himself. Good, you finally gained a good grasp over the Burning Heart Sutra. Now you can at least maintain your state without stressing yourself. Shukong the stanzas praised. Arthur nodded before standing up and stretching his body. Over the past month, he had been following his new routine and had become more habituated to the Burning Heart Sutra. Unlike before when it ended up harming his mind when he didn't have a target to unleash it upon, Arthur could now bear with it with much fewer problems. This wasn't the only thing in which Arthur had progressed in this past month. His skill with the Thousand Armament Blade scripture had also increased by another stage. By now, Arthur had already learned 10% of the weapons that were included in the Thousand Armament Blade scripture. His cultivation too had greatly progressed and he now had over 500 drops of liquid spirit qi, which put him at one-third of the way to the next stage of the qi refining realm. Once he reached the cumulative number of 1500 wisps, Arthur would be said to have entered the peak stage of the qi refining realm. In this process, though the basic qi pills had helped him a lot, his rate of refinement had also increased and now he could refine 15 drops of liquid spirit qi from the previous 10. This had increased his pace even more, though he still used half of them to practice the nameless technique of the lost immortal. In this past month, Arthur did not have a severe reaction as before. While his hunger did increase, it was a steady increase and not an abrupt one as he had experienced before. But this had also resulted in him finishing a quarter of all the beast corpses that he had stored in the ring. Now he only had the final quarter of meat left and Arthur knew that with his current increasing pace, it would barely last two weeks. Sigh. I need to go hunt. Thankfully, the winter is at its last legs now. Arthur spoke as he looked outside the window. While it was still cold, there was no snow anymore. The people had started to come out more, and even some of the trees and plants had sprouted new leaves. 
Spring was just around the corner and the worst part of the year was over. Arthur looked at the box of basic chi pills that was kept to his side and saw that there were much fewer pills left in it. He did a rough estimate and figured that only one-third of the pills were now left in it. Hmm, so I now have a total of a little more than 1,300 basic chi pills left. This should last me at least three more months, even if I consider the increase in my refinement speed. Arthur spoke to himself. He then closed the box and stored it in the ring before quickly finishing up his breakfast and leaving the room. Upon exiting the room, Arthur looked up at the clear sky and basked in the sunlight for a few seconds before letting out a breath of relief. This feels so much better. Arthur thought to himself before opening the door of the courtyard. Hei Ping immediately spotted him leaving and hurriedly went to greet him. He had already been informed of the incident from last month and was thus a bit tense. But now that Arthur was out of seclusion again, he wanted to check up on him. Last time he had been at the safe house when Arthur went out, thus had missed him. This time he wanted to make up for it. Good morning, Senior Arthur. Seems like your seclusion went well. Hei Ping spoke. Hmm. It was decent. Arthur acknowledged. So you are leaving right now? May I ask where you are heading? I can help you if it's within my capabilities. Hei Ping asked. I'm going out to hunt. No need for you to follow me. I want to be alone. Arthur answered in a calm tone. As you wish, then. Farewell. Hei Ping greeted before letting Arthur go. While Arthur was heading towards the forest, Hei Ping was heading towards the town center to inform Hei Bao. Arthur subconsciously headed in the direction of the hunting shack and the apple tree. He reached there after ten minutes and took a look around. Vistgenvelbin.cm for new updates. The hunting shack had become more damaged over the winter, and the wood it was made from was now rotting. A few planks from its roof had also been broken from what seemed like wind and had gone to who knows where. Arthur then took a look at the apple tree and found it to be rather bare. It did not have many leaves left and there were no apples on it anymore. Still, fine green sprouts could be seen, which showed that it would soon be rejuvenated. Sigh. A sigh filled with nostalgia escaped Arthur's lips as he spoke. So much has happened, and even more has changed. He took one last look at the apple tree before leaving to head deeper into the forest. Now that it was nearing spring, the beast should start returning. But that wasn't necessarily good for Arthur, as what he now required was spirit beasts and not normal beasts. Though, he wouldn't mind if he got some normal beasts either, even if they were a drop in the ocean comrade to his appetite. But as Arthur was walking, he sensed something move. The memory from the last month came rushing back to him as he immediately turned to take a look. A beast! Chapter 236 Hunting Again As Arthur turned around, he could see the blurry silhouette of a small beast rushing into a bush. He was actually shocked by this, as the speed of the beast was still too high for Arthur to see it. He would have understood this in the past if he was at a lower cultivation stage. But he was relatively strong now and should not have had a problem. Arthur could not even sense that strong of spirit chi waves from the beast and estimated for it to be at the early or mid-stage of the chi refining realm. How is that beast so fast for its cultivation base? Arthur spoke feeling confused. He extended his spirit sense and did a scan of the area but couldn't find it anything nearby. Whatever the beast was, it had now run away. Senior, do you have any idea of what kind of a beast it could be? Arthur questioned. Hmm, it is difficult to say. I do know of a few beasts that have great speed and agility, even at a low cultivation, but I doubt any of them could be found in a world like this. It's quite likely that it is a native beast of this world. Shukong the stanzas answered. I see. Arthur muttered before checking the area that he suspected the beast had come from. Arthur blinked to the top of a tree and tried to look around but could not spot anything. Seems like the beast is good at hiding too. But considering its size, it shouldn't be that dangerous. Arthur thought to himself. From the size of the blurry silhouette that Arthur had seen, he could estimate that the beast came up to his knees and was less than a meter long. The beast also had a tail from what Arthur spotted at the end of the silhouette. You can check the jade slip that you got from Jing Wei. Perhaps you will be able to narrow down the choices. Xu Kong the stanzas suggested. Ah yes, that would be good. Arthur replied before getting down from the tree. Now that the snow had mostly gone, the beasts had started coming out from the deeper parts of the forest. Arthur was able to spot plenty of them with his spirit sense but did not bother killing them as it would not be worth it for him to spend any effort on hunting normal beasts. Though Arthur would not mind if they were to come to attack him first. Arthur's main aim was to get spirit beasts, 
but they had also retreated to the depths of the forest now. Before, when Arthur came to the northern forest during winter in an area this deep, he had already encountered around four to five spirit beasts. But now he had not even seen one. Arthur kept on moving through the forest and continued on for another hour. Finally, he found something that would be worth his time. A herd of ash-crowned deers. This is good. Arthur muttered, feeling delighted. Arthur had hunted ash-crowed deers a few times before during his journey to the culprit's cave, thus was familiar with them. But unlike before, when he only encountered one or two of them, there was an entire herd of them here. Ash-crowned deers were a common spirit beast that were found in the northern forest and had characteristic ash-colored horns that extended upwards looking like a crown. They were relatively docile and did not attack humans unless provoked and usually stayed together in a herd that was around the size of 50 to 80 females and one male that was called the ash-crowned buck. Unlike the females, the ash-crowned buck was much larger in size and had bigger horns as well. It could run at a great speed and would impale anything that threatened it or its herd with its horns. In fact, Arthur could see the dried blood present on the horns of the beast, which implied that it had recently fought and perhaps killed another creature. Arthur spread his spirit sense and observed the cultivation of the nearest few deers and found them to be at the early stage of the chi refining realm. But Arthur did not attack right away he waited as he wanted to make a plan first. Now that he had come across so many beasts, he wanted to hunt as many as possible. But if he attacked carelessly, it was likely that all of them would run away and the ash-crowned buck would attack him. While the ash-crowned buck wouldn't pose much of a challenge to Arthur, he did not want to waste extra time to chase the herd. Arthur circled around the grazing herd and eventually came close to the ash-crowned buck. He then sensed his cultivation base and found it to be at the peak stage of the chi refining realm. Discube en a vedopla chapt erraesa ena ena zeru e, ela, burundi, com. It's much stronger than the rest of them, though I should be able to handle it, Arthur thought to himself. Arthur spent a few minutes thinking before he was able to devise a plan that would probably allow him to hunt at least 20 of them before the herd found out and ran away. Arthur blinked to the top of a tree and looked out for any ash-crowned deers that were slightly scattered from the herd. After finding one, Arthur blinked closer by going over the treetops. Once the beast was in the range of blink, Arthur teleported next to it with his short sword drawn and stabbed into its neck before quickly storing the beast into the ring. In the very next second, he blinked back to the treetop. He then immediately looked around and saw that none of the beasts had detected him yet. Good. This should work. Arthur muttered to himself before finding his next target. Chapter 237 Bait and Kill It didn't take him much longer before he spotted another ash-crowned deer that had wandered off from the herd and killed it immediately before storing it into the ring. He repeated the same thing over and over again, till he had hunted fifteen ash-crowned deers. It took him an hour to do this, and by now the ash-crowned deers in the head had discovered that their companions were missing. They would have been alerted if they smelled the scent of blood, but because of Arthur's strategy, no blood was actually spilled outside. The herd was now slightly alert but did not seem to be much bothered. Arthur waited for a minute before seeing that everything was still normal. He resumed his hunt and killed six more ash-crowned deers when he was spotted. The herd made loud grunting noises as they all started running away. The ash-crowned buck also locked its gaze on to Arthur and had lowered his head, pointing his horns towards Arthur. Sigh. Guess this is it. Now, no more plan. Arthur muttered before his short sword came floating in front of him. He then waved his hand in the air, and the short sword shot forward. The speed of the short sword was much faster than that of the ash-crowned deers and was able to catch up with them rather easily. Slash slash. Splatter. Blood spilled on the grass as eight ash-crowned deers were killed in one move. But before Arthur could attack again, the ash-crowned buck came charging at him. He immediately sensed it with his spirit sense and dodged it at the last moment by using blink. The ash-crowned buck stooped in its tracks and dragged its hooves across the ground uprooting grass. Once it noticed its enemy had disappeared, it turned around and let out a loud grunt before charging at Arthur again. This time Arthur blinked again, but only to the side of the ash-crowned buck before he withdrew a long spear and stabbed it into the ash-crowned buck. A pain-filled grunt was let out by the ash-crowned buck as the spear pierced from one side of its body to the other, crashed on the ground due to the impact and struggled in pain. Arthur walked close to it and waved his hand in the air making the short sword return to his hand. He then swiftly slashed the throat of the ash-crowned buck before storing it into the ring. Well, that went well. 
Arthur spoke before looking towards the other corpses of the ash-crowned deers that were lying on the other side. The rest of the herd had long since run away, and there was little chance of Arthur to catch up with them. But still, he had obtained around thirty beast carcasses, including the ash-crowned bucks. This is good enough for one day. I need to test out my skills now. Arthur thought to himself before storing all of the carcasses in the ring. He then continued onward into the forest until he found a suitable place that was wide and open. But just as he was about to test out his skills, his stomach rumbled with hunger. Been a while since I did this. It'll be a fresh change. Arthur spoke to himself before withdrawing one of the ash-crowned deer carcasses and skinning it swiftly. Over the months, Arthur had already skinned hundreds of beasts and had now become rather good at it and did not need much time for him to prepare them. His rising cultivation base also made it much easier for him to rip the pelt and break the bones. Once the meat was butchered, he set up a fire to cook the meat. Soon, a delicious aroma of roast venison spread out in the area. This of course ended up attracting some beasts, but they did not approach close, smelling the blood of the chi refining beast in the area. The blood which had been spilled out while skinning and butchering was acting as both a deterrent and a bait. If some spirit beasts do end up coming here, it would be much easier for me. I'll save time and kill two birds with one stone, Arthur thought to himself. He then sat under a tree and closed his eyes while waiting for the meat to cook. His spirit sense though was fully extended and he was observing everything that was happening in the surroundings. Arthur's impromptu plan seemed to be working as a spirit beast eventually came close and reached the range of his spirit sense. There! Arthur muttered as he flicked his end towards the direction of the spirit beast. Vishtenvelbin.cm for new updates. Shing! Arthur a short sword short forward and instantly nailed a spirit beast that had gotten close to the tree next to it. Gurgle. Blood spilled from the beast's mouth as the short sword nailed in its throat made it unable to make a noise. Arthur opened his eyes and saw that the beast he had just killed was actually a razor maw ox. He was a bit surprised upon seeing it. Arthur had seen a razor maw ox before when he was in the body tempering realm, but that razor maw ox was a normal beast. While this one seemed to have reached the early stage of the chi refining realm, Arthur stood up and walked up to the now dead beast and pulled out his short sword. Hmm. Is this the same one from back then? Arthur wondered as he took a close look. But even after a minute, Arthur could not find anything that could confirm his guess. It isn't uncommon for normal beasts to reach the chi refining realm naturally after a sufficient amount of time. Shukong the stanzas said, especially a strong beast like the razor maw ox, which can actually hunt a spirit beast even if it's at the body tempering realm. He added, Arthur hummed in response and stored the carcass in his ring before returning to his position, waiting for more beasts to take the bait. FNDD é UPTS on N OV E L N Ponto, com. Chapter 238. Beast? Arthur didn't have to wait for much longer as a few more beasts turned up and intruded in his range, no longer being able to resist the allure of the meat. Arthur did not let go of this opportunity and killed each of them that came close. Using this method, he ended up killing a total of six spirit beasts before they stopped approaching, probably because of the smell of blood that was spreading around. Beasts would usually be attracted due to the smell of blood, but there was an exception to this rule. When there were too many different scents of blood mixed in an area, most beasts would then start to avoid it while some of them would become outright afraid to go close. It was an instinctive fear built into their beings, as the scent of blood belonging to multiple beasts meant that a disaster was close by. For beasts, the thick scent of blood meant that many beasts were dead or injured. By now the meat was cooked and Arthur took it off the heat. He still let the fire burn as the climate was still a bit cold. Although Arthur wasn't affected by it, that didn't mean that he did not like the comfort of the warmth. Arthur had set up his temporary camp in a rather convenient manner. There was a tree to his back, the fire to his left, and the open area to his right. This way he had a view of the entire area while he ate his food. Arthur was halfway through eating his food when he sensed something nearby in his peripheral vision. It was slightly far from his spirit sense. Thus he couldn't exactly tell what it was but could still spot the bushes moving slightly. Arthur turned his head and curiously took a look while munching on the leg of a roasted ash-crowned deer. But when he focused on the area where he had seen the movement, it stopped moving. He still kept his gaze there for a bit as he wanted to confirm that whatever was there had gone away. Five minutes later there were still no movements so he drew his gaze back. Probably a beast attracted by the scent of the meat that doesn't dare get close. Arthur thought to himself. A short while later, Arthur had finished the entire roasted beast 
and was now ready to continue his assimilation of vital energy. While he was assimilating the vital energy, the bushes slightly rustled once again but Arthur did not pay attention to it. Right now, his entire focus was on assimilating all of the wisps of vital energy that were being released from the meat. The bushes kept on rustling until a small head popped up from it. The head only stayed visible for a second before it retreated back into the bush and disappeared. It was still too far for Arthur to sense it with his spirit sense. Thus this went unnoticed to him. A few minutes later another bush a short distance away rustled before the short head popped up again. Once again, the head only stayed there for a second before disappearing. Arthur was still focused on assimilating vital energy. This event happened a few times again, and each time the duration of the appearance increased slightly. As if emboldened by Arthur S. in action, the creature that was hidden in the bushes finally appeared. But this time just as it appeared, Arthur finished assimilating the vital energy and opened his eyes. As soon as his eyes met the creatures, the creature froze in place. Arthur could finally get a good look at the creature that had been playing hide and seek all this time. The creature had a small body that came up to Arthur's knees and was slightly less than a meter long, along with four legs. It had fluffy brown fur over its body and dark brown patterns that went down its back. The brown pattern came up to its head and formed an M shape on its forehead. The creature also had two brown ears that had fine fur over them that could independently move. Its tail was fluffy and had alternating bands of light and dark brown color that went all the way to the tip of its tail. It had two golden gray eyes that had pupils in the shape of vertical slits. Finally, on its mouth were a pair of whiskers and two small fangs that protruded from the edge of its mouth. Akat! Arthur muttered upon seeing the beast. The beast having realized that the person in front of it had seen it suddenly reacted and as if it were a flash, disappeared in a blur. What the? How fast is that? Arthur spoke in a shocked tone. He stood up and went towards the direction the beast had run away. But he could not spot the beast anywhere nearby. Returning back to the temporary camp, he sat down and thought about it. Senior, did you see that? Arthur asked. I did and I think I know what beast that is. Shukong the stanzas answered. You do? Arthur questioned as his eyes went wide in curiosity. Indeed, I do not know if the beast has the same name in this world, but it is called as a brown shrubby forest cat. It is one of the faster beasts in the Qi refining realm, and its speed can even exceed the speed of a core condensation realm beasts. But on the other hand, its overall strength is weak and it's a rather timid beast. Brown shrubby forest cats are rather docile compared to other beasts, though. Unlike other feline type beasts that are complete carnivores, Brown shrubby forest cats are omnivores who eat whatever they get. Also, because of this they rarely attack humans and will prefer to run if they are attacked. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur intently listened to Senior Shukong the stanzas' explanation and then pulled out the jade slip to see if it had any more information in it. Chapter 239 Brown Shrubby Forest Cat Get the latest chapters on n slash velbin.com Arthur held the jade slip and let his spirit sense interact with it. Upon touching the jade slip with his spirit sense, Arthur felt as if a book had appeared in his mind. He thought of opening it and it automatically opened in front of him. But upon its opening, he could see nothing on it as the pages were blank. Where's the information about beasts? Arthur thought, feeling confused. And just as he thought about beasts, the pages flipped once again and words started appearing on them. Arthur read them and found that they were talking about some beasts and the information was rather organized according to the beast's characteristics. Arthur could guess how the book worked from his previous experiment and thus wanted to see if it would be effective or not. Now that he knew the characteristics of the beast, he was able to find the information rather easily by sorting it out properly while searching it in the jade slip. As long as Arthur thought about the appearance of the beast along with its characteristics it would appear in his mind. He searched and eventually, the book opened to a pair of pages that showed the information he needed for now. Hmm, so it is called brown shrubby forest cats here as well. Let's see, high speed, brown fur, early to peak stage chi refining realm cultivation and a timid nature. Alright, this checks out. Arthur spoke to himself in his mind. Returning his focus to the real world, Arthur stored the jade slip away. Seems, like you were right senior Shukong the stanzas. Arthur spoke in an appreciative tone. Hmm. I didn't expect there to be a brown shrubby forest cat here though. Also, another thing I find unusual is their number. The brown shrubby forest cats usually travel in pairs of two to four and keep each other company while they hunt. They are able to coordinate with watch other to corner and hunt their prey. 
and if they are being hunted down, they can use this very technique along with their speed to escape the conflict. By splitting up at the last moment, they divert the attention of the predator and they manage to escape. The brown shrubby forest cat that we saw was solitary, so that is certainly unusual. Shukong the stanzas explained to Arthur. Arthur fully listened to his words and made sure that he had the intent to learn properly. Strangely enough, while Arthur was interested in the beast, he did not feel like hunting it. In reality, he just felt curious about it and wanted to know more about it. Also, now that he thought about it, compared to the other beasts he had seen until now, this beast seemed to be the most gentle looking and even looked a bit cute. Still, a few minutes later Arthur was done with his thoughts and was about to get ready to test his skills. But just as he was about to stand up, he felt the bush rustle in the distance. He then saw a small head pop in from the bush and gaze at him for a moment before disappearing. Huh? It's back. Arthur muttered to himself but did not move. Let's see what it wants actually seeing that it's coming here even after the meat is finished. Arthur thought to himself. Arthur had already stored the bones that were remaining from the ash crown buck. Thus there really wasn't much that would attract a beast here. Not to mention the blood scent of multiple kinds of beasts was still lingering in the area, making them avoid it. Arthur kept on sitting in the same position and saw the small head pop in through another bush. The beast repeated the same thing as before and withdrew its head back once it saw that Arthur noticed it. The beast kept on repeating this procedure, or rather a game of hide and seek multiple times. Arthur would keep his eye on the beast and would focus on the sound it would make as it moved through the bushes and the grass. This was actually working as a certain kind of training for Arthur, as he had never seen any beast that was so fast. It had been more than 20 times before the brown shrubby forest cat finally stopped its probing and actually developed a bit of courage and walked ahead. It first put one of its paws out and peeked before putting another one out. Seeing that Arthur was not attacking it and was peacefully sitting in his positing, the brown shrubby forest cat fully showed itself as it left the bush. Arthur could once again get a clear look at the beast, and only one thought appeared in his mind. Goo! He thought. Meow. The brown shrubby forest cat lightly growled as it tilted its neck while looking at Arthur. It then slowly started approaching Arthur and finally came close to him. But upon getting in a three meter distance of him, it stopped and changed its focus, looking at something else. Huh, what's it looking at? Arthur wondered as he followed the gaze of the beast. It ended up pointing him to the fire that had now died down and only had some smoldering coals and partially burned sticks left. It was still radiating heat, thus it felt comfortable. Hmm. It wants to stay in the warmth, it seems, Arthur thought. But his conclusion soon turned out to be false, as the beast did something he had not expected. The brown shrubby forest cat walked to the fire and lowered its head, trying to pick up a half-burnt stick. The stick was cooled on the other end and thus was no problem for it to pick up even though the other end was still red and slowly burning. The brown shrubby forest cat turned around and started running away at a blinding speed. Before Arthur could think of anything, it had disappeared in the distance. What was that? Chapter 240 Testing the Boulder Collapsing Fist Eye Arthur had imagined a lot of possibilities upon seeing the beast approach him, but that beast taking a burning stick was not one of those possibilities. He couldn't even begin to think for reasons behind that as the confusion plaguing him was rather complex. Why? Was the main question hanging in his brain. This is rather peculiar. Shukong the stanzas chimed in. Isn't it senior? What would a spirit beast need with a burning stick? Arthur questioned. I have no idea. Well I do, but they are likely to be false and would be far-fetched. Shukong the stanzas replied. Hmm. It is a mystery. Unless we see that beast again, I don't think we can determine the reason for it. Arthur spoke with slight disappointment. Having spoken his mind, Arthur pushed the thoughts to the back of his mind and focused on what needed to be done, the second reason why he had come to the forest. He was here to test out his skills now that his strength had increased and his foundation had become more deep. Not to mention, Arthur had not tested or even used some of his skills for a while. The main one being the boulder collapsing fist. Arthur had not used it ever since he used it to kill the former vice-captain Han Su before, though it was more because he had not gotten an opportunity to do it after that. Arthur had known very well that the boulder collapsing fist was a rather exhaustive skill and would drain all if not most of his vital energy and spirit chi. Although he could still control the amount of resources used up to a certain extent, it was still difficult to do so in a life-threatening moment. Another thing was the recoil of the boulder collapsing fist. Using it even once would render Arthur's hand numb for a while and would make it difficult for him to use it in the best case. 
In the worst case, he would instead be severely injured. Start with the basics. Use your vital energy for the boulder collapsing fist. Shukong the stanza spoke. Arthur nodded his head before entering the stance for it and initiated the breathing technique that was needed for the technique. He performed its routine and felt the vital energy within his body getting agitated. At first, all of it was moving and entering his arms, but he then focused and limited the amount that entered them to less than 5%. Unlike before, Arthur had no difficulty in doing this, as the vital energy within his body was quite harmonized and listened to his will. Soon a clockwise spiral of vital energy was formed in his right hand and an anticlockwise one was formed in his left arm. Having completed the routine, Arthur focused on the air in front of him and punched out, releasing the energy that had been building in his arm. Boulder collapsing fist. In that moment, Arthur could see an almost physical outline of his arm extending forward in the air. Sensing this new change, Arthur immediately focused on it and extended his spirit sense to observe it. But alas, it was far too fast for him to respond. Whoosh. The effect of the technique continued outward and caused a gale to whip up. The gale went straight and shook the leaves of the trees in the distance. Some of the leaves detached and flew away with the wind. It seemed as if other than that, nothing much happened. But that wasn't exactly the case. This time the distance between Arthur and the trees was about 20 meters, and yet the wind created by his attack was still strong enough to make the leaves fall. Another big thing was that Arthur had used only 5% of his vital energy in that attack, unlike a large amount before. This is certainly strong. Arthur muttered to himself. Indeed, if it can cause such an effect even at a long distance such as this, then the technique is quite strong. Not to mention it's not supposed to be a long distance technique, it's a close combat technique. Chukong the stanzas replied. Arthur nodded in acknowledgement and decided to try the technique again, but this time with a greater energy output. He entered the stance again and directed his vital energy to form the spirals, but this time he used 10%. Once the vital energy spiral was stable, he punched forward, letting the energy fly forth. Whoosh! The fist outline was seen once again, and this time Arthur was ready with his spirit sense. He observed it the moment it was formed and sensed the changes in it. He could see that once the fist outline was formed, it stayed in shape for a brief instant before breaking down into a spiral of energy that kept on moving forward. But that was all Arthur could perceive before the spiral dissipated and turned into a gale. The wind this time was strong enough to make the branches of the trees in front of him shake and more leaves to fall. Hmm. I'm starting to understand the technique a bit more. Shukong the stanzas suddenly spoke. Oh, you are senior? Arthur questioned with interest. Discube en avedopla chapt erraesa ena ena zeru e, ela, burundi, com. Yes. Use it again with more vital energy and see its effect. It should be more clear this time. Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur hummed in response before repeating the technique and increasing the output to 20%. Boulder collapsing fist. Whoosh. Arthur s spirit sense followed behind the fist outline and the spiral and could sense them quite clearly this time. The spiral was clear at the start and Arthur could see it churning upon itself, before it could no longer stay stable and dissipated. Crack. A small branch from the tree broke and fell while the top of the tree shook and the leaves flew away. Hmm. It is a rather straightforward method of using energy. Shukong the stanzas commented. Can you tell me more about it, senior? We still have to test it out with spirit chi and finally the combination of spirit chi and vital energy. Arthur spoke up. Of course. But before that, how does your arm feel? Shukong the stanzas asked with concern. Chapter 241 Testing the Boulder Collapsing Fist 2 Arthur looked at his hand and clenched and unclenched his fist. There didn't seem to be any difference from before and it seemed to be the same as usual. It is normal. I'm not feeling any strain or pain in my arm. Arthur replied. That's good. That means your body is now strong enough to bear it. Shukong the stanzas spoke. Back to the technique then. Arthur muttered before entering the stance again. Arthur sensed the spirit chi within his dantian flowing into his meridians as soon as he initiated the technique. The speed was actually faster than with vital energy and the spirit chi wisps quickly entered his arms. But at this moment Arthur was in for a shock as the spirit chi wisps that had entered his arm did not stay in the form of wisps. Instead, they started swirling together and collided into each other over and over until they merged together. The merging process was quite fast and soon enough, the spirit chi wisps had condensed into the liquefied form. Now instead of 50 wisps of spirit chi, 
there was a drop of liquid spirit chi in his arm. What? Arthur uttered with shock and lost his concentration. But because of this, his control over the technique wavered and the drop of liquid spirit chi that had formed dissipated, turning back into wisps. Ouch! Arthur yelped. It was as if someone had pinched his arm quite hard and it had become tensed for a moment. Still, a second later the pain faded away and his arm returned to normal. Oh, this is interesting. Shukong the stanzas spoke with an elated tone. Arthur used his spirit sense and checked his arm to ensure that it was fine. He checked the muscles and meridians of his arm and found them to be the same as before. No damage had been caused to them because of his mistake. What do you mean, senior? Arthur questioned. Looks like the centripetal force that the technique generates is strong enough that it can condense the spirit chi wisps into a liquid form. This is rather unique, and I have seen few other techniques that can replicate this effect. I have to say, the creator of this technique used a rather ingenious method to extract more power from a cultivator than should be usually possible. Though the drawbacks of this technique are rather obvious. You need a strong body to be able to use this technique without any injury. Shukong the stanzas explained. FNDD é UPTS on N OV I L I ponto com. Arthur intently listened to Senior Shukong the stanzas as explanation and absorbed all of it. He started contemplating on it and was made to snap out of his thoughts by Senior Shukong the stanzas when he spoke up. Can you bring out the booklet of the boulder collapsing fist for me to see? Shukong the stanzas asked. Ah uh, yes, Senior. Arthur hurriedly replied before withdrawing the book from the ring. Shukong the stanzas saw the tattered state of the booklet and then read the contents. His attention was pulled towards the part where it said that there were no minimum requirements needed for one to practice the technique. Hmm. <clears throat> this is rather unusual. The technique is written in the common tongue rather than Tao script. This shouldn't happen, unless... Shukong the stanzas spoke and trailed off. Arthur waited for five minutes for Shukong the stanzas to speak, but received no answer. M. Senior. Arthur spoke up. I can't come to a conclusion fully. I need you to use the technique more. Shukong the stanzas replied. All right. Arthur answered before entering the stance and performing the technique. He didn't let his concentration waver this time and execute the technique perfectly. The spiral of spirit chi was formed in his arm the same as before and condensed the spirit chi wisps into a drop. But it didn't end here. The drop then continued spinning until it could not maintain its spherical shape and elongated to form a long needle-like shape. The two ends of this needle were tapering and looked sharp, while the body of the needle looked like a strand of thread that had just been spun. Considering that this needle was formed from a single drop of spirit chi, it was rather thin being even thinner than that of a single strand of hair. Arthur was only able to observe all these changes because they were happening in his own body and he had been seeing it from the very start. Having observed enough, Arthur executed the technique and punched the air in front of him. Boulder collapsing fist. Pew. A low but sharp sound was heard as the spirit chi needle left Arthur S. arm and shot forward. The effect that appeared was quite different from before. There was no fist outline but rather a colorless needle of chi that had been released. It was not even visible to the naked eye and Arthur could only sense it with spirit sense. The needle of spirit chi soon made the air surrounding it revolve around it and created a faint vortex that traveled in a straight line. The vortex met with the tree and dissipated. There was no shocking effect and it looked rather anticlimactic. None of the branches broke, and neither did the leaves fall. Ha! Huh. Did it fail? Arthur muttered in confusion, seeing the technique dissipate. No. Rather, it did better than I expected. Go ahead. Take a closer look at the tree. Shukong the stanzas suggested. Arthur nodded and went up to the tree. He looked at the point where the spirit chi needle had hit and tree and found a small indent there. Is this it? Arthur thought before using his spirit sense to observe more in department. He then saw that the indent was merely the surface bark of the tree that had been impacted by the air vortex that was surrounding the spirit chi needle. The actual effect was masked by this, as he saw a tiny hole that had been bored into the tree. The hole's diameter was less than that of a hare's, and it went all the way from one side of the tree to the other side. The tree in question had a diameter of about half a meter and had been pierced cleanly through. Whoa! Chapter 242. Testing the Boulder Collapsing Fist 3. Arthur was certainly not expecting for such an effect to happen because of the Boulder Collapsing Fist. Before when he used Spirit Chi with Boulder Collapsing Fist, the effect was completely different and now it was something else. Look at the next tree behind it. Shukong the stanzas spoke. 
Arthur snapped from his shock and went to the next tree that was at a distance of three meters from the previous one. There he saw that another small hole had been bored into it as well. Except this time, it didn't pierce all the way through and stopped about half of the way. But that was not all. As the point where it stopped, the hole had increased in size as if the needle had exploded at the end. Arthur probed deeper with his spirit sense and saw internal cracks in the trunk of the tree. He reckoned that if some force was applied to the trunk, it may just split apart. Wanting to see how much damage it had actually caused, he punched the tree without any spirit chi and vital energy. This was already enough as the tree quickly split apart. Crack. Thud. The tree in question had the same thickness as that of the previous tree having a diameter of about half a meter. The cracks that were present inside it made it split into three irregular pieces that collapsed on the ground diagonally. The leaves of the trees were fallen all around and it had been broken from the middle. This is amazing, Arthur muttered to himself. Indeed, I reckon this would be able to pierce through the defensive techniques and skill of other cultivators. Now you have a ranged attack as well that you can quickly switch to close ranged one. Shukong the stanzas spoke. Hmm. Now we only have the combined effect of spirit chi and vital energy left to see. Arthur said with a little excitement. Yes, but before that you should rest and replenish yourself. Better to be in the optimum condition. Shukong the stanzas advised. Yes, senior. Arthur replied before sitting down to replenish his spirit chi. Arthur took out a few spirit apples and started eating them. He hadn't made use of them for a while and thought that this was a rather good opportunity. He finished two of them and had replenished all of his spirit chi to the top. Now all he had left was to replenish the vital energy. Hmm. Should I cook again or just eat some of the leftover stuff from before? Bah. I'll just eat the leftover for now. Arthur thought to himself before taking out some of the meat. Quickly finishing it, he sat down to assimilate the vital energy. Although Arthur could have let his body replenish the vital energy on its own, eating the beast meat was a much quicker method than that since he had depleted about 35% of his vital energy. Twenty minutes later, Arthur opened his eyes and was full of energy again. He checked the area all around him, ensuring that there was nothing that could disturb him or perhaps harm him if he is temperately incapacitated after using the boulder collapsing fist. Hopefully, I'm able to control it better than last time and don't get injured that bad. Arthur thought to himself before entering the stance for it. His breath melded with his technique and the vital energy in his body started roiling. It entered his arm and accompanying it this time was spirit chi. The two of them interacted with each other and seemed to be rather gentle, but that was only until they reached his arm. Arthur had decided to use 10% of his vital energy along with spirit chi as he wanted to be on the safe side but also wanted to see a potent enough effect. The vital energy was vigorous in action while the spirit chi was fierce. Both of them started spinning and collided with each other. The collision got faster and harder until they finally melded and formed something different. Unlike the spirit chi which was translucent white in color and vital energy that was pale reddish in color, this newly formed energy had a dual tone. The energy itself was white, but its edges were pink. The energy kept on spinning but did not change into a liquid form. It was as if the force was not enough for it to undergo further condensation, and thus it stayed in a mist form. Still, the power that could be felt from this streak of mist was not to be scoffed at. It was as if the combination of vital energy and spirit chi caused a qualitative change instead of a quantitative one. Arthur could feel that this energy was much more unstable than the spirit chi or vital energy. Not only that, but it also felt rather unnatural to him. He felt that if he didn't release this energy quickly, it would implode on itself. Arthur could see the energy spinning faster and faster until it took the form of a small and flat ribbon that was spiraling. Finally, he felt that this was the maximum he could withstand and executed the technique. Boulder collapsing fist. Boom. A strange resonant sound hit Arthur's senses as the ribbon of energy was shot forward along with his punch. The energy left his fist and in the process, tore the skin of his fingers and knuckles, leaving them bloodied. The ribbon of energy seemed to be moving in slow motion at first, but that was only an illusion caused due to how fast it was moving. It had left behind afterimages, making it seem as if a long ribbon was extending out of his fist. The ribbon of energy finally met the first obstacle that was a tree. This tree was thicker than the ones Arthur had targeted previously and was about a meter thick in diameter. The ribbon of energy effortlessly mowed through the tree, splintering it in the process. Chapter 243 Devastating Power 
It was as if invisible waves spread wherever the ribbon of energy touched and these waves fragmented everything. The wooden trunk of the tree kept on splitting into smaller pieces until they were as small as fingernails. All of this seemed as it if took a long time, but in reality, it happened in an instant. Then it happened. Kaboom. The tree could no longer withstand and exploded, spreading all the fragments forwards. A sonic boom accompanied this as Arthur himself was thrown back due to the impact. The sonic boom was delayed but was impactful. The ribbon of energy then detonated upon itself, being able to maintain its form resulting in another explosion. By now, the ribbon of energy had already traveled beyond the tree and created a stormy wind that bent the trees around it and made them bald. All the leaves of the trees were blown away as a wave of energy spread around in the area. The forest had now become absolutely silent. Hugh, Hugh, Hugh. Arthur took labored breaths as he laid down on his back, having been knocked back. While he still had most of his spirit chi and vital energy, the impact that he had felt had rocked him to his core. He could still feel his ears ringing and his head trembling. He didn't even notice the blood that was spilling from his right hand, which had now become injured. A minute later, Arthur was able to gather his wits and sat up straight, looking at his injured arm. The skin of his fingers and knuckles had been torn and cut, as if someone had slashed it with a knife. Blood kept on dripping from it and a stinging pain assailed Arthur. Damn, this! Arthur cursed in pain. He then withdrew the healing pills and popped a lesser wound restoration pill into his mouth. He closed his eyes and chanted the Calming Heart Sutra, trying to suppress the pain while the medical properties of the alchemical pill healed his hand. The effect of the pill to a minute to show as the injured skin of Arthur's hand started itching. Soon the bleeding stopped and the skin started scabbing over. Ten minutes later, the wounds were gone and replacing them were multiple brown dried scabs. Phew! Arthur took a breath of relief as he touched the scabs and found them to be rather stiff. He tried moving his fingers and found that to be difficult. The scabs had made his skin tight, which made it harder to move and the impact of the attack had also numbed his muscles. It should be fine after a day. You just need to rest your right hand for now. Shukong the stanzas spoke up. Arthur felt a bit better after hearing Senior Shukong the stanzas' words and stood up, wanting to take a look around. What the? Arthur muttered in shock as he saw the devastation that he had caused. The grass all around had been uprooted and dirt had been unearthed in a circular radius. The tree that was once in front of him was no longer there, and even the ones around and beyond it were broken while some were bent. The leaves of the trees that were close by were shredded and the others were all blown away, leaving the trees bare. Tens of broken branches were lying around mixed with the fragments and splinters from the desired tree. This form of boulder collapsing fist is immensely stronger than the previous ones. The qualitative change in energy is what caused such an effect. I have to say, I didn't expect this. No to mention you did not even use a lot of your energy. You barely used 10% of both vital energy and spirit chi. Shukong the stanzas praised feeling surpassed himself. That's true senior. But, while the consumption of the energy is less, I still can't use this form of boulder collapsing fist consecutively. The most I would be able to do it is two times, once each with both of my hands. Anything beyond that is impossible for now. Arthur replied as he glanced at his hand. Hmm, that is true but not for long. Once you reach the absolute peak of the body-tempering realm, you should be able to bear it with almost no injuries. This is already an improvement from before. Another thing is, even if you can only use it once with a hand, you can still increase its power beyond this. Shukong the stanzas speculated. Arthur then realized the true potential of this technique. If I increase the output to 50% from both spirit chi and vital energy, what would be the effect? Arthur wondered to himself. I advise you that you should not go beyond 20% output for now. I fear that even after reaching the peak of the body tempering realm, you will not be able to bear the recoil. But fear not. Once that time arrives, I have something that will help you greatly and will allow you to exceed it, perhaps. Shukong the stanzas advised. I understand Senior. Arthur was now getting even more curious about what Senior Shukong the stanzas was going to give him after reaching the peak of the body tempering realm. He was now looking forward to it and couldn't wait to see it. But he knew that being impatient would do him no good, and the best thing was for him to steadily continue his cultivation. Now that you've seen the effects, I believe these techniques deserve names of their own. It would do no justice for them to be nameless. Shukong the stanzas suggested. 
Arthur's eyes lit up as ideas started popping up in his mind. He thought of their effects and the characteristics the three different forms showed to match words that would suit them. He scratched his head in contemplation as he thought of potential names that he could use. Arthur ended up spending 30 minutes on it before he finally thought up names for it. I have decided. Chapter 244, The Three Forms of the Boulder Collapsing Fist. So what have you decided to name them? Shukong the stanzas asked, feeling curious. The form in which vital energy is used will be Boulder Collapsing Fist, First Form Impact. The form which uses Spirit Chi will be Boulder Collapsing Fist, Second Form Piercer. And the final form which uses the combination of both will be Boulder Collapsing Fist Devastator. These are what I have decided upon, Arthur answered. After listening to Arthur's words, Shukong the stanzas was satisfied and felt like the names were appropriate and could not really find any fault with them. In the end, they were but mere names and would not really affect the technique itself. Thus, even if Arthur had named them something else, he would not have minded. They're good. Shukong the stanzas praised. I think so too, senior. Arthur replied, feeling proud of his naming sense. Arthur then took another look around the area and he felt like he should leave now, lest someone else comes here and finds him. While it would not be a big problem for him, but it would still be too bothersome for him to give an explanation to others. Having thought of this, he decided to leave. Hmm. <clears throat> the day should start getting longer now. We should have more daylight. Arthur muttered to himself as he looked up at the sky that was relatively clear. The winter was now at its end, and the snow had stopped as well. The only place that Arthur could currently see snow was far in the distance on the northern peaks and the depths of the forest. While it was still cold right now, it wasn't as chilly as before. Soon the peasants would start farming and getting ready for spring. Though in the region among the four satellite towns of Wu Lim City, only the eastern town was specialized in farming and produced the majority of grains. The southern town was mostly an army base, yet there were still some peasants that grew grain in small tracts of land. It wasn't much, but it was still enough to satisfy the town's needs. But in the case of the eastern town, they grew a much larger quantity. So much so that around 95% of it was exported to the other towns and Wu Lim City, with a smaller part also going to other regions. Get the latest chpters on n slash velbin.com. I wonder if the hunters would be organizing the spring hunt this time. Arthur muttered to himself while walking. Spring hunt. Shukong the stanzas questioned with an interested tone. Ah yes, senior. Before the farming can be started, the hunters organize a large hunt to cull the population of beasts that are left over from winter. This allows the peasants to farm without worrying about random beast attacks and also allows the hunters to gain a reasonable amount of coin after the winter. Arthur answered, That seems reasonable. But why the uncertainty? Shukong the stanzas asked. It's just that now that there are mercenaries hunting in the forest, I wonder if the hunters will even get an opportunity to hunt. Arthur replied, Hmm. That is a bit concerning for the townspeople, but nevertheless shouldn't matter to you anymore. You are no longer a commoner. Shukong the stanzas spoke up in a calm tone. Arthur had a strange sense of realization after hearing Senior Shukong the stanzas s words. All this time, although he had become a cultivator, he was still thinking from the perspective of a commoner and was unknowingly thinking and worrying about stuff that no longer concerned him. Seems like I'm still not completely used to my identity. Arthur spoke in a slightly embarrassed tone. Don't worry, you will get used to it soon. Independent cultivators often have difficulties coming to terms with their new identities compared to the cultivators that join sections. Shukong the stanzas explained. I understand, senior. Arthur replied with a slight smile. But just as he said this, he smelled something that made him stop in his tracks. Hmm? Smoke? Is there someone nearby? Arthur thought to himself before blinking to the top of a tree. He then looked around and spotted smoke rising from an area near to him. This is strange, the hunters don't come this deep into the forest, at least not at this time, this is too early. Is it perhaps the mercenaries? No, they should be further in the depths of the forest. They won't find many spirit beasts in this area. Arthur analyzed. Why don't you just go and take a look? Shukong the stanzas suggested. Arthur hummed in response before heading in the direction of the smoke. A couple of minutes later as he approached the location, he could smell something different. Someone's cooking something? What's this? Sniff fish. Arthur muttered as he got closer. Arthur soon reached the location where the smoke was coming from and was surprised upon seeing the scene. What? He uttered in surprise. In front of Arthur, a 
pile of sticks and dried leaves were burning in a pile that looked as if they would go out any moment. They were placed rather messily, and it seemed as if the person who made the bonfire did not have any experience in setting one. Though that was not the most surprising thing, the surprising thing was actually the fish that was being cooked over the barely burning fire. The fish was skewered into a stick and was being held over the fire at a very low angle. But it seemed to be attached to a bush or whatever was hidden behind a bush, as Arthur could not see it from this angle. What is that? Did someone set camp and go away? Arthur wondered before walking closer. He saw that the stick that was skewering the fish was shaking for some reason, but when he turned to the side and saw what was hiding behind the bush he was shocked, to say the least. The brown shrubby forest cat? Is it cooking? Chapter 245, A Cooking Beast? The sight in front of Arthur was something that would shock most people if not all. What he was seeing right now was a beast cooking something, or rather attempting to cook something as the fish being cooked seemed to be charred in some places. Clack. The fish skewer fell into the fire as the beast finally noticed Arthur, who had approached it. The beast seemed shocked and dropped the skewer into the fire. But this led to small embers from the fire being kicked up, which then landed on the foot of the brown shrubby forest cat. The brown shrubby forest cat growled in pain as it flinched. It then took a step back and looked at Arthur as it froze in surprise. Um, e? Arthur spoke. The brown shrubby forest cat seemed to be startled by this and ran away in the next instant. Arthur thought of running after it, but then decided to let it go. He instead came to stand in front of the bonfire, which had now stopped burning. FNDD é UPTS on N OV I L I N ponto com. Am I wrong or was that beast really trying to cook this? Arthur said as he picked up the skewered fish. The stick was crudely skewered into the fish from the middle of its body. And the fish was not gutted either. This is strange. Very strange. Shukong the stanzas replied. Isn't it? This is the first time I'm hearing. Or rather seeing a beast cook. Arthur said with a perplexed tone. Indeed. Beasts don't cook their food. At least not beasts of this level. They have no need for cooking food. Shukong the stanzas affirmed. Arthur picked up senior Shukong the stanzas s words and a new question formed in his mind. Oh, you mean some beasts cook, senior? Arthur questioned. Of course. Some beasts can transform into a human form when they reach a high enough cultivation. While there are some that simply like food cooked by humans more so they steal from the humans. But it's rare to see a chi refining realm beast trying to cook. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur nodded in response and thought about why the beast would cook. But soon the pieces started clicking together. Hmm, it took the burning stick before and now it was cooking here. There's no doubt that its aim was to make fire from the start. And now that I think of it, every time that I encountered it before, it was always around the time when I cooked something. Arthur thought out loud. Shukong the stanzas too was now intrigued by this beast and was thinking of all the possibilities. I have to say, this brown shrubby forest cat has intelligence which does not match its species. Sure, brown shrubby forest cats are slightly more smarter than other beasts, but this kind of intelligence is beyond that. Shukong the stanzas spoke. Arthur listened to Senior Shukong the stanzas s words and started hypothesizing himself. Senior, could it be a mutant beast, perhaps? We know that its cultivation base is quite low, so the only thing that can be possible is that. Maybe something made it mutate in such a way that its intelligence was increased instead of its strength or cultivation. Arthur spoke. Once Shukong the stanzas heard Arthur's words, he couldn't help but think that they seemed to be likely. Yes. That does seem to have the highest possibility. It would also explain why this brown shrubby forest cat is alone and does not move around with its companions as it should. Shukong the stanzas said and took a pause. There is a possibility, but I don't know if it would be possible for this world. Shukong the stanzas added. Arthur was now even more curious and wanted to know more. Oh, please tell senior. Arthur requested. There are some special kinds of spirit fruits that have the effect of increasing the aptitude of cultivators. But these very fruits can have different effects when eaten by beasts. One of these effects being raising the intelligence of a beast. Shukong the stanzas answered. So you mean this brown shrubby forest cat must have eaten one of those fruits? Arthur further questioned. Yes, and not only that, but I have a guess about what fruit it could be. It is called as the dual circle ascension fruit. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur was lost in thought after hearing senior Shukong the stanzas s answerer and stayed silent for a few minutes before speaking. This fruit senior, do you think there could be more of them? 
Arthur asked. Hmm, that is a possibility. This kind of fruit grows on a vine that attaches itself to other trees and sucks the nutrients out of them. As long as the main tree is alive, the vine will keep on producing fruits every few months. Shukong the stanzas replied. Hmm, if we consider that the brown shrubby forest cat ate one of them four months ago, then perhaps a new one could be grown by now. If I gain it, won't I be able to increase my cultivation speed? Arthur spoke. That is indeed a possibility. Though you shouldn't get your hopes up. There are chances that it is not even a dual circle ascension fruit, but rather a different kind of fruit. Not all fruits regrow that fast and there is a chance that the spirit plant it grows on may not even be there now. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur contemplated on what senior Shukong the stanzas said for a while before replying. Still, I think I want to search for it, senior. On the off chance that I find one, it will be a great fortune for me. Arthur said in a firm tone. All right, you can search for it, of course. But for that, you will need to find the tracks of that brown shrubby forest cat. A beast will always remember the places where spirit fruits grow and will often return to that location to see if more have grown. You will first need to find that brown shrubby forest cat and then follow it around for long enough that it returns to the fruit. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur nodded with determination in his eyes as he then started thinking of a plan. Chapter 246 Dual Circle Ascension Fruit An hour passed during which Arthur had thought up of a plan that he may be able to use, but there were still some uncertainties that were problematic for him. The two biggest ones being him needing to find that brown forest shrubby cat and then somehow making it show him the way to the spirit fruit. While being lost in his thought, Arthur didn't even realize that he had already entered the northern town. He only broke out of his stupor after being greeted by some town guards. Arthur recognized one of them to be part of the Hay Corps and simply nodded at them before continuing on to his house. He looked around the town and could see the stalls being set up along the street. Oh, they're starting already? Are the merchants coming early this year or something? Arthur wondered. The merchant's caravan would come to the region every year, for times or once every three months. Their first visit of the year was at the start of the spring and their last one was before the start of the winter. Although they would usually come to northern town at the very last and would normally start from the western town circling around to the southern town, eastern town, and then finally northern town before entering Wu Lim City. They did this because the hunters took a little while to complete their first hunt of the year and obtain sufficient materials and goods to sell to the merchants. The merchants would also bring them fresh grain from the southern parts of the kingdom so that they could replenish their food stocks that get depleted during the winter. Arthur felt curious and thus decided to ask around. The people this time were quite genial to him, as he was now recognized as an influential person in the town. Arthur could not help but feel a bit emotional at this moment. Mother, father, your son finally has the recognition that you once wished for me. Arthur internally prayed. For a very brief moment the character meaning ordained glowed on Arthur's forehead. This went unnoticed by everyone, and even Shukong the stanzas did not sense it, not to mention Arthur. Arthur talked with a few people and learned that the hunters were already ready for the hunt and would be going for it tomorrow. The acting town head who was Hei Bao had apparently asked the mercenaries to let them hunt and vacate the area for three days. The mercenaries happily accepted and did not mind it as they were going to head deeper in the forest. Anyway, not to mention, after all the help that the Hei Corps provided them, they would be staining their honor if they did not heed his request. Seems like Hei one taking over was a good decision. Arthur muttered to himself. Having learned all this, Arthur reached his house and immediately started setting up the meat to be cooked. While the meat cooked, Arthur pondered more on his plan and decided to ask Senior Shukong the stanzas a few questions. Senior this dual circle ascension fruit, can you tell me more about it? Arthur asked. Of course. Dual circle ascension fruit is a spirit fruit that grows on the dual circle ascension vine. The vine sprouts into two from the ground and forms circles around the tree that it is growing on. Thus the name dual circle ascension. It is a rather rare spirit plant and its fruits are used to raise the aptitude of cultivators. But of course, the increase is not that great, being around 1% at the very most. While the fruits can grow every few months depending on the nutrients available, the vine itself can take decades to grow. Shukong the stanzas answered. But senior, if it can raise the aptitude of cultivators, doesn't that mean it's very valuable? Won't cultivators just keep on eating the fruits to raise their aptitude? Arthur questioned again. While it is indeed quite valuable, its fruits become ineffective after a while. A cultivator won't be able to raise their aptitude for a certain point using them as they will soon develop a resistance to the effects of the dual circle ascension fruit. 
Still, as long as the vine can keep on producing fruits, it will stay valuable, especially for sex. For cultivation sex, such a spirit herb that can keep on producing fruits is immensely valuable, and they would do anything to get their hands on one. But the thing that I am doubtful about is that the dual circle ascension vine cannot grow easily. Not only does it require a strong tree to absorb nutrients from, but it also needs a large amount of spirit chi to grow, an amount which is quite likely not present in the northern forest. That's why I have doubts whether it is a dual circle ascension vine or some other spirit herb. But considering the effect it had on the brown shrubby forest cat, others seem unlikely. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur carefully listened to Senior Shukong the stanzas' words and contemplated on them. He realized that the chances of it being a dual circle ascension vine were getting lower and lower the more he thought. Still, he did not lose hope and wanted to find it. But the thing that would lead Arthur to the dual circle ascension fruit was none other than the brown shrubby forest cat. In order to make it guide him to it, he would first have to find it. For this, you would need to tame the beast. That would give you the best chances of finding the dual circle ascension fruit as just betting on the off chance that the brown shrubby forest would go back there is quite less. On the other hand, this would also allow you to test your aptitude in beast taming. Shukong the stanzas suggested. Arthur's eyes lit up after hearing senior Shukong the stanzas' suggestion, and he started looking forward to it. Chapter 247 how to tame a beast. But senior, how do I go about taming a beast? Arthur asked with curiosity. Well, first of all, you would need to find that beast. The best way would be to use a bait to attract it. You've already seen the actions of the brown shrubby forest cat, so you should have an idea about what to do first. Shukong the stanzas replied. Ah yes, since that beast seems to be interested in food, I just need to cook some to attract it. Then whether it is the food itself that it wants or the fire, it doesn't matter. Arthur answered. Exactly. But beast taming is much more than that. The next step in beast taming is understanding the beast. You would need to use your spirit sense to probe its mind and find out its desires. Then you should try to fulfill those desires. But here comes the problem. Beasts won't really speak to you as they don't understand the human tongue. The difference in beast taming talent lies here. It depends on how well you can understand the beast's emotions and desires without directly talking with them. Then once you know that, you communicate with them using your spirit sense. This is also the most dangerous part, as the cultivator can be quite vulnerable in this stage. Not only would he put all his focus on establishing the connection, but he would also have to be careful about external threats that may attack them. Even the formation of a connection between the beast and the cultivator is a sensitive process, and any mistake during in the stage can result in damage to the cultivator's mind. The most important thing to do before this is to ensure that the cultivator's spirit sense is stronger than that of the beast. This increases the success rate greatly. Finally, if the beast accepts and the connection is established, then the beast can be said to be tamed. Shukong the stanzas explode. Arthur was surprised that the process would be so complex and had not expected there to be such intricacies. But you have an advantage here. The beast in question does not have spirit sense of its own, not to mention that it is much weaker than you, so it shouldn't pose much problem to you. Shukong the stanzas added. I understand, senior. Arthur replied in a grateful one. Having learned the process, Arthur focused back on to the task at hand. The meat was still cooking. Ugh. I forgot that I still need to skin and prepare all these beast carcasses. Arthur thought to himself. He then got to prepping the beasts while alternating between cooking the meat. The reaming part of the day went by and this and midnight had arrived by the time Arthur was finished with everything. Phew. At least I won't have to do this again for a while, and it will also make it much more convenient for me. Arthur stated to himself before having his last meal of the day. Arthur assimilated the vital energy and immediately went to sleep appearing in the sleepscape. There he first refined more liquid spirit chi drops and infused half of them into the tissues of his stomach according to the nameless technique of the lost immortal. After being done with this, he practiced the Thousand Armament Blade scripture till he felt utterly exhausted and left the sleepscape, entering deep sleep. In the morning he woke up with vigor feeling unbearably hungry as always and instantly pulled out the previously cooked beast meat before devouring it. Phew. I wonder if I'll ever get used to this. Arthur muttered to himself with a wry smile. He stood up and looked outside, hearing the sounds of people talking. Hmm. What's going on? Oh right. The hunters should be leaving by now, Arthur realized. I should get going too, Arthur muttered to himself as he left the room. A mild breeze tousled his hair as he looked up at the sky, 
finding it to be much clearer than yesterday. He left the courtyard and headed towards the exit of the town, while hearing the conversations of the town's residents on the way. Ah, finally we can hunt again. I was getting sick of staying in the town. Yeah, but what would we have even done? It's too cold to wander out, anyway. I hope that the hunters have good luck and hunt plenty of beasts. The kids are getting sick of eating the same food now. Arthur could hear a plethora of people from all walks of life talking around him. With his enhanced hearing, he did not even need to stand close to them to listen to their conversations. Most of the conversations were rather mundane and seemed like the usual banter. That was until Arthur's ears picked up something interesting which almost made him stop. What do we do now? We have been laying low for a while now do we just watch as it is or act? We can't even go to the warehouse anymore it's been discovered and is being watched by those guards. A voice spoke around the corner. Arthur could not see who had spoken as they were in the corner of an alley. But he could hear them. Hmm? What's this? Arthur internally questioned before extending his spirit sense. Hidden in the alley, he found three people talking to each other. They were dressed in the clothes of commoners and but were unfamiliar to Arthur. He didn't go further from there and instead went to sit at a stall near the alley so that he wouldn't seem suspicious. The stall was selling some warm buns, so Arthur bought some and ate them while listening to the three men. Don't worry. Master understands that the situation is risky and has not ordered us to do anything yet. The other teams have taken up the workload and now the sacrifices will be coming in from the eastern town instead. As soon as Arthurus heard this, his eyes went wide and the bun in his hand fell. Finally, he muttered. Chapter 248 Fear and Respect Arthur had not expected that after all these weeks, he would finally find a clue to the culprits, and not only that from the looks of it, these men seem to be part of the culprits' organization as well. This will make it much easier. Now I just have to capture them before they kill themselves. Arthur muttered to himself. Arthur had known that the previous ones that were captured had killed themselves after being caught to prevent any information from being revealed. Thus he now had to be quick enough and incapacitate them before they can react or do anything. Arthur stood up from the bench he was sitting on and did a quick sweep of the area with his spirit sense, ensuring that he knew of all the paths that they could run to. I'll have to attack them instantly after I probe them with my spirit sense, as they may get alerted if they have experienced spirit sense before. Arthur thought to himself as he approached the alley. He took a look up and blinked to the top of a house that was attached to the alley. Now he was right on top of the three men and could attack them easily, and that's what he did once he discovered their cultivation to be at the early stage of the chi refining realm. Arthur jumped from there on top of one of the men and punched another when he was down. The two men had no time to react and fell down to the ground unconscious. The third man was dumbstruck as the companions that he was taking with till now had been taken down instantly. But his shock only lasted a moment as he immediately realized the severity of his situation. He did not even look towards Arthur and instantly started running while pulling out something from his sleeves. Arthur had his spirit sense locked on him from the very start, thus knew what he was attempting to do. Oh no, you won't. Arthur spoke before gesturing with his hand. Shing. Splatter. Ah. The third man screamed in pain as blood spilled on the floor of the alley. His scream was extremely loud and attracted the attention of people who were surprised by it. Some of them directly peeked in and saw the bloody scene. Arthur standing over two men whose heads were bleeding, while a third man was lying a little farther, whose right hand was missing and two legs were severed. Arthur had used his short sword to cut off the hand of the man which had the poison in it, and after that he cut the legs of the man as well to prevent him from running. The people that witnessed this horrific scene screamed with terror. Guards! Murder! There is a murderer here! Run! Discube en Avedopla chapt erraesa ena ena zeru e, ela, Burundi, com. Arthur paid no attention to the people's scream and instead went to the legless and handless man. The man was now crying in pain and had his face covered in snot and tears. He saw a shadow looming over him and looked up with difficulty as he was lying on his chest. W-H-Y, the man uttered. Can't have you running away or killing yourself before we get some answers. Arthur answered in a cold tone. By now the guards had reached the alley after listening to the screams of people. Their numbers had already been increased ever since the past incidents. Thus there were some posted at every corner. The guards had their weapons drawn and were ready to act as they approached the alley. Halt! You are under arrest! A guard shouted as he looked at Arthur with a stern gaze. Arthur turned around to face the guards and their expressions fell. Se senor! Senior Arthur! The guards uttered with shock. 
Arthur looked at them with a calm expression before speaking. Gather these three men. They're part of them. Gulp. The guards swallowed their saliva, trying to suppress their fear. Two of the guards were part of the Hay Corps, thus knew exactly what Arthur was talking about. They were also the ones that were the calmest among the group of guards that had arrived at the scene. They saw that the other guards had still not lowered their weapons and had them pointed at Arthur. A horrifying memory reappeared in their mind as they remembered their first meeting with Arthur. What are you all doing? Lower your weapons. One of them shouted while the other approached Arthur. We'll do it right way, senior, don't worry. The send guard spoke. Hmm, you know where to take them. Inform me later when you have obtained something. I'm going out to the forest for a bit. Arthur replied. It shall be done. The man replied. Just as Arthur had taken a step, he stopped and turned back to the man. They were talking about there being more of them at the eastern town and their workload of sacrifices being transferred there. Tell this to Hay Bao. Arthur added before leaving the alley under the gazes of everyone. The people stepped back in fear as Arthur got closer to them and gave way to him. Although Arthur had become an influential figure in the town, he still wasn't known by everybody and even the ones that knew him only knew his name and did not know how he looked like. But seeing him dismember someone and nearly kill them was still terrifying to these people. They were used to beasts killing people but not humans killing other humans, at least not so openly. They were used to hearing bandits killing people, but seeing something with their own two eyes was completely different. Arthur noticed the change in their demeanors and was a little surprised inwardly. Such is the truth of the world. Fear is often more powerful than respect. And for a cultivator, if they have a choice, it's better for them to be feared than respected. Shukong the stanzas suddenly spoke. Chapter 249 first taming attempt. Arthur was sitting below a tree as a fire blazed on his side. A beast was currently being roasted over the fire but Arthur's focus was on something else. His eyes were closed and he was contemplating over the words that Senior Shukong the stanzas had spoken. He couldn't help but feel entranced by them and those few words were stuck in his mind, repeating over and over again. Fear or respect, whatever it may be all stems from power. And that is all I need right now. Arthur muttered. Shukong the stanzas was currently engrossed in his own cultivation and had not paid attention to what Arthur had just said. He was suddenly woken up from his trance as he felt something terrifying. His body shuddered and he recoiled in terror. What was that? Shukong the stanzas uttered as he looked at the ethereal altar in the distance. The terrifying feeling that he felt faded away rather quickly and he could not find its source, but considering previous incidences he had a good guess that the altar was most likely the source. Shukong the stanzas flew towards the ethereal altar and gazed at it deeply, not finding any change in it. Did I imagine it? Or was that a premonition? Shukong the stanzas thought to himself as he closed his eyes and focused on himself for a minute before opening his eyes again. The connection is still the same, so a premonition. Hmm. <clears throat> I need to keep a closer eye now. Discube en Avedopla chapt erraesa ena ena zero e ela burundi com. That feeling. I haven't felt it before. The demonic path? No, this was... much worse. Shukong the stanzas muttered to himself as he got more and more anxious. Arthur was completely oblivious to this and had now opened his eyes. His spirit sense was spread around and he was on the lookout for beasts. He had been in the forest for about two hours now and had lured a couple of beasts to his current location. But it was not the beast he was looking for. Though, Arthur had expected that this would not be easy even though he had taken precautions beforehand and ensured that no blood was spilled when he killed the beasts that approached him. Do I need to try a different location, perhaps? Arthur thought to himself. Russell. Just as Arthur was about to give up, a bush in the distance rustled and he became alert. His spirit sense moved there, and he waited for the beast to reveal itself. He had to be sure that the beast that appeared was the right one, as he did not want to accidentally kill the brown shrubby forest cat. Soon the beast reveled itself and a smile appeared on Arthur's face. Here it is, Arthur thought as he stayed still. He did not want to startle the beast as he had seen how timid it was. Every time he had encountered it before, it had run away and the only time it had approached him closer was when he had cooked and had not moved. Senior, it is here, Arthur spoke in his mind. Shukong the stanzas who was thinking about all the possibilities for that premonition finally snapped out of his mind. He first calmed himself down forcibly and only then did he speak. He knew that it would do no good if he revealed his anxiety and did not want to affect Arthur with it. Oh, 
The brown shrubby forest cat is here. Good, now focus and let it approach you. Once it is sufficiently close, I'll tell you and that's when you will use your spirit sense, understand. Shukong the stanzas replied. Yes, senior. Arthur replied. The brown shrubby forest cat peeked its head out from the bush and looked at Arthur for a moment before retreating. It repeated the same thing it had done yesterday and spied from all different angles before being comfortable enough to approach. It slowly approached, still alert about any movement, and seemed to be tense. It eventually reached the campfire and came to stand in front of it. The brown shrubby forest cat had stopped and was curiously gazing at Arthur, who had his eyes closed so as to not startle the little beast. Still, he was observing everything through his spirit sense and watched every reaction of the beast while waiting for Senior Shukong the stanzas to give him the signal. Now! Shukong the stanzas uttered. Immediately Arthur S. Spirit Sense shot forward and entered the head of the brown shrubby forest cat. The little beast flinched and took a step back, but was unable to move much because of its mind being pressured. Meow. It yelped in pain as it slumped onto the grass, not being able to bear it. Reduce the pressure. It's too much for the beast. Shukong the stanzas ordered. Arthur immediately reduced the force that he was using and became much more gentler. He had been used to probing humans till now and used the full extent of his spirit sense, being unaware of the amount of pressure that it actually exerted on them. Still, humans were much more stronger mentally compared to beasts, thus they were able to recover rather easily. At least that was the case for the weaker beasts such as those in the Qi refining realm and below. Arthur S. Spirit Sense was already much stronger than most Qi refining realm cultivators and was comparable to a core condensation realm cultivator. The brown shrubby forest cat finally stopped trembling in pain and became a bit calmer. Now you need to feel. Sense its mind, its emotions. Feel its desires and fears. Shukong the stanzas instructed. Arthur focused his mind and tried to see if he could do so as he was instructed. But even after a minute, there was no difference. All Arthur felt was emptiness. There is nothing, senior. I can't feel anything. Arthur spoke. Hmm. The beast is too scared and its mind is scattered. Perhaps your first approach was too much for it. You may need to try later again. Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur was a little disappointed after hearing senior Shukong the stanzas s words and did not want to give up so soon. It's no use. Taming a beast in this condition will be nearly impossible for a novice like you. It would be better to try later when it has calmed down. Shukong the stanzas advised. After hearing Shukong the stanzas s words, an idea suddenly appeared in Arthur's head. He gritted his teeth as he thought, May as well give this a try. Hugh. Arthur took a deep breath and let his body relax a bit. He then opened his lips and started chanting something in a low voice. These chants were esoteric and mysterious. One could feel the intent behind them, yet could not understand the meaning behind the words themselves. This was none other than the Calming Heart Sutra. It was the very first sutra that Arthur had obtained, and yet it was the one which he did not fully understand. Arthur had heard the mnemonic behind the Severing Heart Sutra and Burning Heart Sutra right when he obtained them, yet he had not comprehended the same for the Calming Heart Sutra. All Arthur knew about it was its effects, and it was those were effects that he was betting on right now. Chapter 250, A Little Friend A few seconds passed by as Arthur chanted the Calming Heart Sutra. At first, no change could be perceived and the brown shrubby forest cat still seemed to be in the same condition as before. Its eyes were closed and its whiskers were scrunched in distress. Arthur could not feel anything from his spirit sense either. The mind of the brown shrubby forest cat was still empty, and no thoughts arose. But soon he could sense a cry. The cry seemed to have only rung inside his mind and was not audible in the real world. The volume of the cry was slowly getting lower and lower until it completely disappeared and the brown shrubby forest cat also relaxed. Pain and innate feeling appeared in Arthur's mind. Hungry, he heard again. Food, another thought popped into his mind. Huh, are these... its thoughts? Arthur thought to himself. Incredible. It's actually working. Shukong the stanzas exclaimed. Is this how I am supposed to proceed, senior? Arthur questioned. Yes, yes, continue. Focus on its thoughts and try to convince it by offering it what it wants. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur inwardly nodded before focusing completely on the mind of the brown shrubby forest cat. He could hear the same words repeating in his mind, although they were not exactly words but rather an innate understanding of those emotions. So it just wants food, it seems. Like cooked food that senior Shukong the stanzas talked about. 
Arthur thought to himself before trying to communicate. At first, Arthur spoke a sentence but realized that no matter how much he tried, it was not transmitted to the brown shrubby forest cat. Then he realized that he would have to simplify it, making it similar to the thoughts the beast was having. Food Arthur expressed first. The beast seemed to have understood him this time and had stopped its incessant thoughts. Seeing that it seemed to be working, Arthur decided to continue. Give Arthur paused and took a look. Finding the beast to be calm, he went further. Me, he stated. Hot food, Arthur explained. He realized that he could now increase the complexity of the thought by a slight amount as he got more used to this kind of communication. Food give, the beast expressed. Yes, give, Arthur replied. Pain, the beast asked, which actually made Arthur feel its fear. There was something hidden deep inside the beast's mind, but Arthur could not understand what it was. But he could realize that whatever it was, it had made a great impression on the brown shrubby forest cat. No pain, Arthur answered while trying to show a calm state of his mind. As soon as he said this, there was a change in the state and Arthur could feel a strange wave spreading into his mind. A second later, the wave disappeared and Arthur could feel a connection forming between himself and the brown shrubby forest cat. Good, good, very good. You have succeeded. Shukong the stanzas congratulated. I did. Arthur questioned, still being in disbelief. Yes, you did. You should be able to feel it now. Shukong the stanzas said. Arthur focused on his mind and indeed could find something new there. It felt similar to his connection to senior Shukong the stanzas, yet completely different. Arthur felt as if a string was connected between himself and the brown shrubby forest cat. The string was invisible and incorporeal, yet it felt very real. Through this connection, Arthur could feel the mental state of the brown shrubby forest cat. Right now he could sense extreme tiredness and fatigue from the brown shrubby forest cat. Arthur opened his eyes and saw that the brown shrubby forest cat was lying on the ground and seemed to be in a deep sleep. Hmm, it has been quite exhausted due to the process of formation of connection. You should let it recover before you try to obtain the location of the dual circle ascension fruit. Shukong the stanzas suggested. Arthur nodded with approval before approaching the brown shrubby forest cat. He touched its belly and found it to be rather soft due to being coated with fur. He then stroked his hands over the brown shrubby forest cat's back and head. So soft. Arthur muttered to himself as he basked in the feeling. Arthur felt as if his fatigue from earlier attempts was now fading away. This is rather nice. Arthur thought to himself before picking up the beast in his hands. The beast did not squirm in his hands and instead curled up in a more comfortable manner before sleeping again. Seems like it likes you. Shukong the stanzas spoke up. It's a he senior. Arthur chuckled. Ah, so it's a male brown shrubby forest cat. That's fine, it doesn't matter either way. Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur nodded with a slight smile on his face before looking around the area. He knew that he could have been in great danger if he stayed vulnerable like that while trying to tame brown shrubby forest cat thus wanted to be sure that he was still safe in his current area. A quick sweep of spirit sense later, Arthur confirmed that there was no man or beast nearby his location and that he was completely safe. Phew. Now that this is done, time to head back to the town and wait for the brown shrubby forest cat to wake up again. Arthur muttered to himself. You also need to make plenty of food for him as you promised, remember? Shukong the stanzas stated in a teasing tone. Arthur rubbed his head in embarrassment with one of his hands and then stored the meat that had now been cooked into his ring. Let's head back, he thought before leaving the area. Arthur walked through the forest rather calmly and tried not to disturb the brown shrubby forest cat. This resulted in him talking over two hours before he reached the town. But the slow journey did seem like a waste of time to him, and he rather enjoyed stroking the fur of the beast during the journey. Chapter 251 The Goo Legion Before entering the town, Arthur took out a robe from his ring and covered the brown shrubby forest cat in his hand. He did not want people to see the beast and ask questions. While it would not cause him any difficulties, it was just that he did not want to waste time on giving explanations to them. While passing by the alley where he had knocked out the three culprits, Arthur could sense the tense atmosphere. He briefly glanced inside it and saw that there was no blood there on the ground and neither were there any unconscious persons. Hmm. <clears throat> they were rather efficient. Arthur muttered to himself. He looked around and saw that the people nearby seemed to be slightly tense due to the recent incident and seemed to be divided over his actions. Some were impressed by the strength that Arthur had shown while the others were rather shocked and a bit offended by his ruthlessness. 
Arthur passed by these people and did not take offense to their words and easily shrugged them off. Ten minutes later he was in his house and had just laid down the brown shrubby forest cat onto his bed. The beast seemed to have taken a liking to it and quickly curled up against the pillow and slid into the quilt. Here you go, little guy. Arthur muttered with slight joy. He stared at the beast for a bit before deciding to go visit Haybow. He wanted to see what information they had been able to extract from those three culprits. Fifteen minutes later, Arthur was standing at the entrance of the town center and was quickly escorted to a different room that was located in the basement of the town center. The guards that were escorting him were quite respectful to him and quickly guided him to the room. Upon opening the door, Arthur spotted seven people inside the room. Three of them were none other than the culprits, while the rest were members of the Hay Corps, including Haybow. He took a look around and saw that it was rather plain and did not have anything except for some furniture and the metal chair in the center to which the culprit was tied to. Of the three culprits, the one that was dismembered had been chained to the chair and the other two were lying on the ground. Arthur scanned with his spirit sense and found the two that were lying on the ground to be dead. Looks like they fulfilled their purpose. Arthur thought to himself as he moved his gaze back to the man who was currently torturing the culprit. Ark. The culprit's screams spread in the surroundings and rung in Arthur's ears. Please, please, no more. The culprit spoke with great difficulty. The other member of the Hay Corps that was standing beside Hay Bao looked at Hay Bao before speaking. This is all we can get. Any more and we will break his mind anyway. Better to end it right now. The man spoke. Hay Bao seemed to be thinking something, before nodding to the man. All right, end him like the rest. We've already obtained plenty of information. This has been our best one till now. Hey Ba replied in a satisfied tone. The culprit's face fell after hearing Hey Bao's words and knew what was coming. But before he could let out his last scream, a swift blow was delivered to the back of his neck, breaking his spine and ending his life. Vischtenvelbin.cm for new updates. Clean it up. I have other things to do. Hey Bao ordered before gesturing to Arthur to follow him. Arthur nodded in response and followed him back to the privacy of the office upstairs. They sat at the desk and Hay Bao prepared some tea. We obtained a good deal of information thanks to you. They were quite sneaky. Hay Bao spoke as he boiled some water in a teapot. That's good. Though I don't understand, how were we not able to find any of their traces till now? Arthur said in a slightly confused tone. That's because there were actually none of the original culprits left in the town. After the assassination attempt, most of them had already left the town and once the results of the mission were out, the remaining members of their organization left as well. These three were actually hidden members who were never revealed and had not participated in any of the incidents until now. They had cleverly mixed in with the traveling hunters and had been lying low in the town's inns for months. Hey Bao Ek Lai! Arthur was intrigued by this and felt a bit impressed by their intelligence. But then he realized that for them to be able to plan this far along, they must have been prepared. These culprits? Did you find out who's behind them? Arthur questioned in a serious tone. Just as he asked this, the water in the teapot started boiling and the teapot let out a whistling sound. Hey Bao lifted the teapot off the heat and steeped some tea leaves in it before speaking. We did indeed. These men belong to an organization called as the Gu Legion. We have seen their traces before a few times in different places in the past, but this is the very first time we were actually able to find out their name. This is great progress and all of it is because of you. The Lord will be very pleased with this. Hey Bao An Su. Arthur heard the name and nodded in acknowledgement. He then remembered what the men were talking about originally and wanted to know more. When I discovered them, they were talking about the rest of their members being in the eastern town. Did you find out more about it? Arthur asked. Hey Bao shook his head as he poured tea into two cups and placed one of them in front of Arthur. Unfortunately, these men only knew that there were some of their companions there in the eastern town, but not exactly how many or where. Eastern town is much larger in size compared to northern town due to its crop fields, not to mention its proximity to the forest. It will take time for us to find out where they were hiding exactly. We also do not want to let them know that we are coming after them, thus I want to keep this mission limited to a few of our experienced members. Once we have gathered enough intelligence, it will be the time to strike and capture them all in one go. Hey Bao said in a determined voice. Arthur nodded in response and found it to be reasonable. He then picked up the teacup from the desk and took a sip from it. He savored the refreshing flavor of the tea, which made him feel a bit more relaxed. By the way, why did you go to the forest? 
Didn't you already hunt yesterday? Hei Bao questioned with curiosity. Arthur finished his cup of tea and placed it back on the desk before speaking. I went there to make a new friend. FNDD é UPTS ON N OV I L I N ponto com. Chapter 252 More Rewards Hei Bao seemed confused upon hearing Arthur's words. He could not think of anyone that would fit that description and wondered if it was someone that he didn't know of. They had already done their research on Arthur and thought that they knew most of the things about them. In case of friends, Hei Bao knew that Arthur did not have any friends left in the town. Many of his childhood friends had left the town over the years and some had even died in the plague. While there were others who chose to leave the town after their family members died. One of the ones that was still left was Lu Xiao, but even he had become distant over time. Another guess he had that the friend Arthur was talking about was perhaps someone from Jingwei's Emporium. There was little they knew about that shop or its owner. The only information they knew was that it was run by a pair of grandfather and granddaughter with high cultivation bases. They didn't know if there was anyone else with them, but it did seem likely to them. They had come to the conclusion that someone that powerful must have had at least a few servants, even if they were not known of. Suddenly Hei Bao had an idea, and he felt shocked inwardly. Could it be? Is it someone related to his background, perhaps? Maybe even his master? Hei Bao Wunder. Arthur was calmly sitting on the chair and was staring at his empty cup. Thus did not notice the expression of Hei Bao. He pushed the chair back and decided to leave for now, seeing that his work here was done. Hei Bao snapped out of his thoughts upon seeing Arthur stand up and spoke. Wait, what reward do you want? I'll be sending a report to my lord soon and can mention your requirements in it. Hei Bao said. Hei Bao thought that he may as well ask right now as he had a good guess that his lord would want to surely reward Arthur. It was better if he told him what was the need of Arthur. That way there would be no loss of precious time. Arthur halted in his steps and looked at Hei Bao. I would like spirit stones and basic chi pills. As many as you can give me. Arthur replied without hesitation. Arthur had his goals set and knew that the fastest way to reach the next realm would be for him to have resources such as these. He had already gotten some from Jingwei and Duan Ku, but considering his pace of their consumption, Arthur knew that they would not last long. Practicing the nameless technique of the lost immortal also needed a lot of liquid spirit chi, and Arthur had been investing half of his liquid spirit chi that he refined into it. This had slowed his pace of progress into the next realm by half, not to mention that his Dantian had also grown in size, thus he would be needing even more spirit chi to break through to the next realm compared to other cultivators. All right, that's acceptable. Heibao nodded in response to Arthur's words, and knew that this was the most straightforward reward that was easy to prepare. Although he did not know how many spirit stones his lord would be giving, he knew that these were rather precious, and even he only had some with him that were reserved for emergencies. As for the basic chi pills, he had used a few of them before and the cultivators in Haycor got some every month as incentives. Basic chi pills were relatively easy to procure too, and any sect would be able to supply them. Even a few mortal organizations were involved in their production and sold them as well. We should receive a response in a couple of days. I'll inform you when it arrives. Hei Bao said in a calm tone. Arthur nodded in response before leaving the town center and heading back to his house. After entering his room, he checked up on the brown shrubby forest cat and saw that it was still asleep. Its head was curled up against the pillow while its body was half covered with the quilt. It will take him a while to wake up. Mental exhaustion for beasts is much higher than humans and they take longer to recover. Xu Kong the stanzas spoke. I understand, senior. Arthur replied before sitting down to cultivate. Arthur had been using most of his time to cultivate and was conscious of the deadline that was approaching fast. Although he still had a long time left till the great slumber bear woke up, Arthur still wanted to be ready for it beforehand and did not want to take any risks. He took out the box containing the basic chi pills and popped one into his mouth before chanting the Severing Heart Sutra. Hours passed by as evening crept up. Arthur opened his eyes and let out a breath. Hew. He looked at the brown shrubby forest cat and found it to be in deep sleep. Hmm. <clears throat> Guess it'll take even longer. Arthur muttered before heading to the kitchen to cook. Eating the beast meat and assimilating the vital energy had become like a second nature to Arthur at this point, and he did not even need to think much before being able to do it. But when Arthur returned to his bedroom, he found himself in a dilemma. Where was he supposed to sleep? Um, I don't want to disturb him or move him. He looks so comfortable. Arthur said as he looked at the brown shrubby forest cat. But just as he said this, the beast turned in its sleep, 
making space for Arthur. Seems like he understood your thoughts. Xukong the stanzas spoke with a chuckle. Arthur rubbed his head in embarrassment before lying down on the bed and entering the sleepscape. Chapter 253, The Beast's Breakthrough. Chapter 253, The Beast's Breakthrough. The next day, Arthur was preparing more meat when the brown shrubby forest cat finally woke up. Yeah. Arthur looked at the sleepy expression of the brown shrubby forest cat and found it to be quite cute. Looks like you finally woke up, little guy, Arthur said as he stroked its head. Purr. The beast purred in pleasure and enjoyed it. It was now that Arthur suddenly heard a thought in his mind. Food. The thought said. Huh oh, you're hungry. Let's go I've made some food. Arthur spoke before standing up from the bed. The brown shrubby forest cat jumped from the bed and followed behind Arthur. They had already formed a mental connection and could understand each other's intent. Thus it was not that difficult to express such actions. Upon reaching the kitchen, the brown shrubby forest cat saw the meat that was roasting over the stove and the aroma that was occupying the air. Growl. The beast lightly growled as it looked at the meat in desire. Arthur knew what it meant and cut off a portion of the meat before placing it before the brown shrubby forest cat, who was moving his tail sideways in anticipation. As soon as the meat was in front of him, he pounced on it. But just as he was about to take a bite, he suddenly froze and stared at Arthur for a few seconds. No pain Arthur heard in his mind. In the next second, the brown shrubby forest cat started eating the meat with gusto. Arthur too cut off a portion for himself and started to eat. If someone else were to see them eating right now, they would wonder which one was the beast. The speed at which Arthur was eating was rather unnatural, and even the quantity seemed inappropriate for his body size. On the other hand, while the brown shrubby forest cat was also eating fast, it did not seem unusual and the portion size was also appropriate. Arthur was fined eating much before the brown shrubby forest cat and assimilated the vital energy while the beast finished its meal. He actually felt a bit surprised inwardly at his own speed. He had no comparisons till now and seeing the beast eat at a slower speed than him made him feel a bit strange. But he didn't take it to heart and soon got over it. By the time he was done assimilating all the vital energy, the brown shrubby forest cat was also finished with his meal and was now licking its mouth, clearing traces of the meat. Oh, you're done. Arthur said as he then stood up. Seeing him stand up, the brown shrubby forest cat also responded and followed him back to his bedroom. Seeing the brown shrubby forest cat understand his thoughts with such ease made Arthur feel good. He now wondered if he would be able to make the beast show him the way to the dual circle ascension fruit. Although it understands your passive thoughts right now, it would still be a bit difficult to tell it what exactly you want, Shukong the stanza said. I'll try and see if we get any success. Hopefully, it doesn't take much longer for him to understand. Arthur replied. But just as he was about to communicate with the brown shrubby forest cat, he saw that it had already curled up against the pillow and was sleeping. What? Arthur muttered in confusion. He could sense the faint waves of spirit chi coming off from the brown shrubby forest cat and wondered what was happening. It is cultivating. This is the way most beasts cultivate. They absorb a majority of the spirit chi from their food and also absorb some from the air. Do you remember what kind of beast meat you gave it to eat? Shukong the stanzas spoke up. I think it was a spirit beast at the mid-stage of the chi refining realm. Arthur answered as he then realized. He extended his spirit sense and observed the body of the brown shrubby forest cat. He found the waves of spirit chi originating from the spirit core, which was located just above the heart of the brown shrubby forest cat. Arthur closely observed the spirit core and found it to be slate gray in color. Its size was also quite small being the size of Pinky's fingernail. Right now the spirit core was thrumming with energy and wisps of spirit chi continued entering it. The more spirit chi wisps that entered it, the deeper its color became. Fifteen minutes passed after which a large wave of spirit chi appeared and spread from the spirit core. It had now become dark gray in color from its previous slate gray color. It broke through. Arthur muttered in surprise. Of course it did. You fed an early stage chi refining beast that was already close to the next stage, the meat of a beast that was at an even higher stage. It was bound to happen. Shukong the stanzas replied. Actually, this is good for you. The more the beast progresses in cultivation, the more its intelligence will increase. The dual circle ascension fruit merely catalyzes the process and speeds it up. A beast will increase its intelligence and wisdom as it grows. You've already seen the intelligence of a core condensation beast that was the alpha steelback wolf, so you should have an idea of their capabilities. 
I reckon the brown shrubby forest cat will soon reach that level. Shukong the stanzas explained. FNDD é UPTS on N, OV, I, L, I, ponto, com. Arthur felt a bit surprised by this, but then it was soon replaced by elation. Arthur focused on his connection with the brown shrubby forest cat in his mind and sensed that it had indeed become better than before. If it was a string that had the thickness of a hair before, now it had the thickness of a cotton thread. Arthur could also sense the emotions of the brown shrubby forest cat and discovered that there was only one thing there. Happy! Chapter 254, Formation Array in the Forest? Another day passed by in relative peace, which Arthur spent in cultivating. The brown shrubby forest cat had woken up a little while after its breakthrough and had eaten more of the beast meat, after which it fell into a slumber again. Arthur had thought that it would awaken again that night, but it did not happen. He then learned from Senior Shukong the stanzas that the brown shrubby forest cat was now stabilizing its cultivation after having broken through to the mid-stage of the chi refining realm. He told him that the beasts had an innate understanding of their own cultivation thus knew how to do it. Arthur thus let the brown shrubby forest cat rest and focused on his own cultivation. Finally, in the afternoon the brown shrubby forest cat woke up and Arthur could try to get it to guide him towards the location of the dual circle ascension fruit. Upon waking up, the brown shrubby forest cat took a big stretch, raising its tail. It then walked up to Arthur and rubbed against him to show its affection. The beast had developed a liking to its master after having its wish fulfilled, although it wasn't really a difficult thing for Arthur to accomplish. Anyway, Arthur kneeled down and looked at the brown shrubby forest cat while trying to communicate with it. He tried to show the beast the description of the dual circle ascension fruit, but was rather successful. Even after many attempts, it seemed like the idea was perhaps too much for the brown shrubby forest cat. Hmm. Perhaps try asking it something else. Brown shrubby forest cats usually keep to their usual territories and seldom leave them. Perhaps the location of the dual circle ascension fruit is somewhere there or nearby it. Shukong the stanzas suggested. Hmm, that's a good idea, Arthur replied. He then focused on the brown shrubby forest cat, who was curiously gazing at its master. Home, Arthur asked in a very simple thought. Take me, he continued. The brown shrubby forest cat tilted its head in confusion for a bit before it finally understood what Arthur was trying to tell it. Having understood this, it bumped its head against Arthur as if gesturing him to follow him. Wait. Arthur spoke, making the brown shrubby forest cat stop in its tracks. Let me carry you. There are a lot of people out there, Arthur said as he picked the beast up. He then took out a cloth again and covered the brown shrubby forest cat. The beast did not struggle in Arthur's hands and rather sat comfortably as if it knew it was safe with Arthur. Seeing that the brown shrubby forest cat was calm, Arthur left the courtyard and headed towards the northern forest. Along the way, although people saw him and some even looked at him with curious looks, no one really bothered much. The brown shrubby forest cat having been covered with a cloth only made it look like Arthur was carrying a package and not a spirit beast. Both of them reached the northern forest after 15 minutes, and Arthur let the brown shrubby forest cat down onto the ground. The beast looked up at Arthur as if feeling a bit sad that its fun ride had ended, but then Arthur told it again what he wanted. The brown shrubby forest cat then turned in a direction and started running that way. Arthur followed after it and ran. Still, it was getting harder for him to keep up with the beast because of its speed. Although it was already moving slow so as to let Arthur follow it, that speed was still higher than Arthur's top speed. Brown shrubby forest cats are indeed quite fast. I wonder what more can they do? Arthur muttered to himself. Brown shrubby forest cats, although timid, are quite strong. While they are small and look like they can be harmed even by a child, that is not so. Do not forget that it is a mid-tier spirit beast now, that can easily crush the bones of a commoner. Shukong the stanzas added. I understand, senior. Arthur replied while running. He continued following after the brown shrubby forest cat for nearly an hour, after which he realized that they had come quite deep into the northern forest. According to the direction it had taken him in, Arthur realized that it was in the northeastern region of the forest. Arthur had not come to this part ever before, thus was a little confused about the area. But it mattered less to him now as he could directly scan the area with his spirit sense as he passed by. This way not only was he following the brown shrubby forest cat but also memorizing the topography. Another half an hour later, the brown shrubby forest cat had slowed down and came to a thickly forested area. The trees and bushes in this area were densely packed together, and Arthur had a hard time passing through them. 
He eventually had to use his short sword to cut the trees and plants that came in his path and blocked it. The brown shrubby forest cat was able to maneuver through them with relative ease, and it seemed like it had a lot of experience. But suddenly, at a certain point, the brown shrubby forest cat disappeared into thin air. What the? What happened? Where did he go? Arthur uttered with shock as he tried looking around for the brown shrubby forest cat. He checked on his connection and saw that it was still there and was just as strong as before. Arthur communicated with the brown shrubby forest cat, trying to call him back. Arthur's attempt was soon successful as the brown shrubby forest cat returned, appearing out of thin air the same way as before. At least this time Arthur could see where it had gone. Arthur looked at the exact place the brown shrubby forest cat appeared from and observed it curiously. The brown shrubby forest cat walked up to Arthur and bumped its head into him before speaking to him. No home, it asked. Chapter 255 Deciphering the Bewildering Formation Arthur simply told it to wait in his mind, and he tried using the spirit sense to check the area. He was suspicious when he had originally arrived, but soon understood the reason behind the brown shrubby forest cat's disappearance. Huh, there is a formation array here? How? Arthur wondered. Not just any formation array. Look further with your spirit sense. Shukong the stanzas spoke. Arthur did as he asked and discovered that he could not extend it beyond two meters. After two meters, it was as if his spirit sense bent and came out of another part of the formation. What is this? Arthur questioned. This is actually two formations layered together into a formation array. You have seen these two before at the Myriad Armament Canopy abode before, but its level is significantly low. You can use your previous deciphering method to find the nodes. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur then started chanting the Severing Heart Sutra and extended his spirit sense, touching the formation array. The same thing as before happened and his spirit sense bent, coming out of another spot. But Arthur did not mind this and tried again. An entire hour passed and multiple attempts had been done by Arthur, yet every time the same thing happened and his spirit sense came or from another random spot. Shukong the stanzas actually knew how to help Arthur, but he intentionally did not help him. He wanted him to learn through trial and error, wanting to see how much he had improved from before. This formation in front of him, while similar to the one at the Myriad Armament Canopy abode, was not exactly the one that Arthur had solved. The difference lied in the basic characteristic of the Myriad Armament Canopy abode. The Myriad Armament Canopy abode was a spirit tool and did not actually exist in the same plane as the real world, instead existing in a minor one in the lesser void. That was also the reason why Arthur was able to find it raider quickly. The mysterious ring had helped him. But right now these formations had become an obstruction even though they were low-leveled. This kind of formation array was composed of two types of formations. One of them was the common illusory formation that Arthur had seen before. It was similar to the one that was used to Hai Jing Wei's Emporium and the desolate alley it was located in. The second one was the more complex one that was actually causing the bigger problem. This kind of a formation was called a bewildering formation and its only function was to confuse the intruder. It could make the intruder change his direction if they walked into it, making them leave the formation from another direction. Some of the bewildering formations could even trick the spirit sense and would make the cultivator using it feel as if his spirit sense was blocked by something. Another effect it could have on spirit sense was that it could make the cultivator misjudge it. This would cause them to extend and contract their spirit sense randomly. The combined effect of both these formations created this formation array and had become the obstacle in Arthur's path. Hmm. <clears throat> How was the brown shrubby forest cat able to get through it? I already checked the spot from where it entered, yet there was nothing there. What is it that I'm missing? Arthur thought to himself. He then thought about the characteristics of the brown shrubby forest cat and realized that it did not have any spirit sense of its own. Back when the brown shrubby forest cat disappeared, Arthur could still sense the connection between them, telling him that the beast was right there in front of him. Hmm, so if I restrict my spirit sense and walk in directly, would I be able to cross it? Arthur thought out loud. He then looked at the brown shrubby forest cat and told it to continue onward, which it immediately followed. The brown shrubby forest cat walked forward and once again disappeared. This time though, Arthur did not lose focus and concentrated on his connection with the brown shrubby forest cat. Only one way to confirm my theory, Arthur thought with determination as he took a deep breath and took a step forward. As soon as he crossed into the invisible formation, he felt the scene in front of him change for a slight moment. If it were some other cultivator in the Qi refining realm, 
they would not even have been able to notice this kind of a small change as it was very quick and hard to recognize with naked eyes. But Arthur had an advantage in this area, being used to the rapid changes due to him using the skill blink. He understood that something had happened and there was a change. This doubt of his was confirmed when he sensed the location of brown shrubby forest cat suddenly switching. Previously the connection told Arthur that the brown shrubby forest cat was right in front of him. But now it was telling him that it was on the left. He took a few steps forward, and it happened again, this time the location of the brown shrubby forest cat changed to being behind him for some reason. Arthur did not follow his connection and just walked straight forward, wanting to see where it would lead him. Two minutes later, Arthur found himself back to where he had started from. So it will return me back to my original position if I keep on walking straight. My connection with brown shrubby forest cat also told me otherwise. It seems like the formation array is changing the direction I walk without me noticing. Arthur hypothesized. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's try this again. Arthur thought to himself before taking a step into the formation array again. This time though, he did not keep on walking forward and instead changed direction to face the location of the brown shrubby forest cat every time it changed. Before he had crossed the formation array and come out of it in two minutes. But now he had been walking for over five minutes. And yet the end was not in sight. He's close to figuring out. His investigational ability is not bad. Shukong the stanzas thought. Chapter 256 The Dual Circle Ascension Vine Arthur kept on walking and following his connection with the brown shrubby forest cat. Fifteen minutes had passed, after which he finally discovered a pattern. He realized that while the location of the brown shrubby forest cat changed, his own actually stayed the same. He tried marking the ground where he walked and discovered this. He thought that the brown shrubby forest cat was actually moving around that much, but after a few more tests he realized that it wasn't true either. Hmm. I need to start over. Arthur thought to himself as he walked straight ignoring the change and returned to the starting place. Now Arthur had another idea which he wanted to try out. Arthur entered the formation array but did not take another step forward. Instead, he turned back and started walking. It seemed as if he was leaving the formation array, but the opposite happened. The scenery that was in front of him was supposed to move closer as he walked towards it. But what happened was that the more he walked the farther it got. Still, Arthur did not panic as he knew that his idea seemed to be the correct one. His connection with the brown shrubby forest cat told him that it was in front of him and was not changing locations anymore. Arthur kept on walking, and five minutes later appeared in a new area. The scene in front of him suddenly changed from that of the starting area and new trees appeared there. He looked back and saw that the starting area was now behind him, in the distance. Yes, I crossed it. Arthur exclaimed. Good, you figured it out. You found the right method to cross the formation array without even breaking it. Shukong the stanzas praised. Thank you, senior. Arthur said in a grateful tone before continuing. But senior, what do you mean by breaking it? Well, the most common method used by cultivators who are not proficient in formations is to break them with brute force. This involves overwhelming the limits of the formation with spirit chi and destabilizing it. Though this method comes with its risks and can be dangerous. Some formation masters even lay traps that take advantage of this method and harm the cultivators that try to break the formation with brute force. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur thought over Senior Shukong the stanzas' S explanation and wondered if he would have been able to attempt this. Can I do this, Senior? I mean, if the situation so arises? Arthur asked. You've already done it before, actually. When you opened the portal to the Myriad Armament Canopy Abode, that was actually a type of brute force method as you overwhelmed its limitations and opened the gate. Though the formation was able to recover due to being a pseudo-immortal tool. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur nodded in understanding and started looking around the area. The surroundings were pretty much similar to the previous area, except that the concentration of the spirit chi in the area was slightly higher. Hmm. This is strange? Is this due to the formation array? Or something else? Arthur wondered. Arthur sensed his connection with the brown shrubby forest cat and walked towards that direction. He could sense that it was coming from behind a patch of densely packed trees. This patch was blocked by overgrown shrubs and vines that interwove with the trees, creating a natural blockade that made it impossible for Arthur to proceed. This is even more strange. Why are there so many plants grown together here? Arthur said as he then gestured with his hand. The short sword that was on his back flew out and slashed at the trees and the shrubs, butting them apart and making way for him. When the blockade was cleared, Arthur finally saw what was behind it. 
he appeared in a small clearing that had a few trees growing in the center. And among these trees, the brown shrubby forest cat stood. Arthur walked towards it and saw the thing he came for here. The dual circle ascension vine, Arthur exclaimed. On one of the trees, the dual circle ascension vine was growing. It grew from the ground in a pair of vines and wrapped around the trunk as it grew upwards. It had reached the middle part of the trunk and had many large leaves growing from its vines. Arthur could also feel the faint waves of spirit chi arising from the vine. Indeed, this is the dual circle ascension vine, Shukong the stanzas confirmed. Arthur kneeled and stroked the head of the brown shrubby forest cat. Thank you, he expressed through the connection. Yeah. The brown shrubby forest cat purred in pleasure as it enjoyed the act. Arthur stood up and went to inspect the dual circle ascension vine. He extended his spirit sense and scanned it with it. Upon doing so, his eyes lit up as he found his goal. There are some fruits, Arthur said with joy as he lifted the large leaves of the vine. He saw the small fruits of the dual circle ascension vine that looked more like berries. There were about eleven of them growing on the vine and they were hidden because of the leaves of the dual circle ascension vine. The fruits were orange colored and were oval shaped. Thin veins were visible on its surface that spread all around the fruit. This is unusual. Chukong the stanzas suddenly spoke. Huh? What do you mean, senior? Arthur questioned. Hmm. There are far too many fruits growing on the vine considering the environment of this area. The spirit chi in this area is simply not enough for it to be able to grow so many fruits. Another thing is that, if there were so many fruits growing on it, why did the brown shrubby forest cat or any other beast eat them yet? Chukong the stanzas replied. After hearing Senior Shukong the stanzas' s concerns, Arthur too wondered why it was like this. He extended his hand towards the fruits and was just about to touch them when he suddenly heard the brown shrubby forest cat in his mind. Danger. Chapter 257. A trap? 257 A trap? Upon hearing the urgent message in his mind, Arthur became alert and his spirit sense spread around. But in the next moment he was knocked back with great force, as if being hit by a bull. Thud cough. 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 Arthur coughed in pain as he tried to lift himself from the ground. Meow. The brown shrubby forest cat came running towards him to check up on him. Damn it, what was that? Arthur cursed as he rubbed his head. Seems like there was a trap concealed in the dual circle ascension vine, Shukong the stanzas said. Arthur propped himself up and sat down on the ground as he checked on his body. He couldn't find any injuries on his body, and the only pain he had was from being knocked back. He then looked at the dual Circe ascension vine and found it to be glowing with a faint light. Why did I not sense it before? Arthur questioned. It seems to be a trap that can stay concealed from the spirit sense of a cultivator. You're still inexperienced about these matters, so it's no wonder that you couldn't sense it. Though now you know to be more careful. There may be more traps that we don't know of here. Shukong the stanzas answered. I see. Arthur muttered as his spirit sense scanned the entire area deeply. He had been alarmed by this, hence wanted to be extremely sure of everything before continuing. He stood up and walked around, searching a radius of about 200 meters before returning to the dual Circe Ascension Vine with the brown shrubby forest cat following behind him. Seems like there is only that one trap and no more in the area, Arthur stated as he gazed at the dual Circe Ascension Vine. Fortunately, you can destroy this trap rather easily. It is a simple knockback trap that you can break by finding its node. Before, it would have been impossible for you to find it as it was in a concealed state. But now that it's revealed, you should be able to find it. Shukong the stanzas spoke. All right, senior. Arthur replied before focusing on the dual Circe ascension vine. He extended his spirit sense and tried to find the formation node on the trap. It took him about five minutes before he discovered it right below the tree. I found it, senior, Arthur said. Good, now use your spirit sense and pour your spirit chi into the node, keeping on doing it till it destabilizes. Shukong the stanzas taught. Arthur nodded in response before doing as he was instructed. He channeled wisps of spirit chi into his spirit sense tendril and started pouring it into the formation node. Arthur was already proficient in using his spirit sword with the spirit sense thus had no problem doing this, as the concept was pretty much the same. Arthur could see the light of the formation getting stronger and stronger. The more spirit chi he channeled into it, the brighter it got. US Tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. Is this correct, senior? Arthur asked. Yes, just continue what you are doing. 
It should soon be reaching its limits. Xu Kong the stanzas replied. Arthur continued doing so, and two minutes later the effects started to show. He could feel that the formation node was trembling and cracks started to appear on it. Another minute passed by and finally, the cracks covered the entirety of the node. Pop. Then, with a small pop, the glowing formation disappeared leaving the dual Circe Ascension vine unprotected. That was rather anticlimactic, Arthur said as he reached out with his hand. He touched one of the dual Circe Ascension fruits with his index finger and found there to be no reaction. Well, now I can get the fruits. Arthur spoke with a happy tone as he plucked the first dual Circe Ascension fruit. He looked at the small berry like fruit clenched in his fingers for a few seconds before storing it in the ring. Meanwhile, the brown shrubby forest cat was looking at the entire process with interest and waved its tail from side to side. Arthur quickly finished plucking the eleven dual Circe Ascension fruits and stored all of them in the ring. He then turned to look at the brown shrubby forest cat and petted its head. No wonder he didn't eat the fruits. Seems like he too was scared by the knockback trap formation, Arthur said. But then how did it obtain the fruit that it had eaten before? Arthur asked. One of the fruits probably fell from the vine and left the confines of the trap. The dual Circe Ascension fruits stay on the vine for quite a while even after becoming ripe. Thus it is likely that the brown forest shrubby cat probably obtained it after quite some time. Though, looking at these fruits, I can estimate that they should have fallen soon too. Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur nodded, showing that he agreed with Shukong the stanzas and kept on staring at the dual Circe Ascension vine. Hmm. Senior, can we take this vine with us? Arthur asked. No, that is impossible. The dual Circe Ascension vine will wither away when it's plucked from the ground. It's already a miracle that it was able to grow in an environment such as this. Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur hummed in response as his gaze curiously went to the base of the dual Circe Ascension vine. There he spotted something protruding from the ground. It was rather hidden because of the thick grass and the leaves of the dual Circe Ascension vine thus could not see it clearly. Hmm. What's this? Arthur wondered as he kneeled to take a closer look. He moved the leaves and grass aside and saw that there seemed to be a gray crystalline object protruding from the ground. Arthur first carefully probed it with his spirit sense to make sure that it was safe to touch. Finding there to be no problems, he pulled out the object from the soil. This? Another chapter coming in an hour. I also put some starting chapters of the book on Royal Road site and wonder if you all can give some reviews there. I'll put the link in comments. Chapter 258. A skeleton? Upon pulling out the object, Arthur found it to be a crystal. It was about the size of a finger and was dull gray in color. A peak grade spirit stone? Shukong the stanzas muttered. What? This is... A peak grade spirit stone? Arthur exclaimed. It is indeed. But it has been depleted. Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur couldn't begin to imagine how a peak grade spirit stone would end up here albeit a depleted one. The highest grade spirit stone he had seen until now was a defective mid-grade spirit stone that he had previously used. Arthur was now extremely curious. Thus he searched the ground with his spirit sense carefully. This turned out to be effective as he detected more things hidden in the ground. Senior, there is more stuff buried here, Arthur said with excitement. Dig it out then, Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur immediately started digging and soon unearthed a few objects that were buried in the ground. There were about three more depleted peak grade spirit stones that were buried in the ground, and on these spirit stones, the roots of the dual circle ascension vine were wrapped. This makes sense. No wonder the dual circle ascension vine was able to grow in an environment like this. It has been absorbing the spirit chi from these peak grade spirit stones. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur picked one of the depleted peak grade spirit stones out of which led to the roots of the dual circle ascension vine that were wrapped around it to break. The instant those roots broke the dual circle ascension vine started withering. Senior, what's happening? Arthur questioned in a shocked tone. It is as I said before, the dual circle ascension vine cannot be moved from its position once it has grown. Not to mention it has lost its only source of sustenance that was the peak grade spirit stones. The tree it was parasitizing is not sufficient to sustain it either. It seems like it was barely holding on after growing all these dual circle ascension fruits, and this was the last straw. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur watched as the dual circle ascension vine withered and its leaves turned yellow before falling to the ground. The vines that were wrapped around the trunk of the tree too crumbled and the dual circle ascension vine was no more. Sigh. 
At least I was able to get the dual circle ascension fruits, Arthur said in a helpless voice. The dual circle ascension vine was a lost cause already. No need to worry about it, Shukong the stanzas stated. I understand, senior, Arthur replied before turning to the other objects that were buried in the ground. Along with the three depleted peak grade spirit stones, there seemed to be a cloth of some kind buried. Arthur pulled it out and looked at it. The cloth was actually a pouch of some kind that was torn in the middle. This is rather high quality, Arthur said as he felt the texture of the torn pouch. He put it aside for the time being as he then dug the next object from the ground. This object looked like a circular flat stone that had some strange characters engraved on it. Arthur couldn't read the characters. Thus decided to show it to Senior Shukong the stanzas. Hmm, these characters are written in the script of a different world. Not only that, it seems to have an identification formation placed on it, though it looks like it has been damaged as well. Shukong the stanzas stated. Arthur curiously looked at the stone and tried to probe it with his spirit sense, but was unable to observe the formation that was placed in it. You won't be able to read the formation this way. It is a special identification formation that can only be read using the counter formation for it, similar to a lock and key. Such kinds of formations are rather unusual and are used for identification badges, but only for secretive organizations. It is unusual for them to be used by anyone else, as it means that they would rather have it destroyed than others discovering this stone badge. Shukong the stanzas explained. Shukong the stanzas was now quite curious as well and did not know how such a thing could turn up in a world such as this. He had heard about organizations that would use such kinds of identity formations, but nearly all of them were dangerous. FNDD é UPTS on N, OV, I, L, I, ponto, com. While looking at the stone badge, Arthur S. Eyes spotted a small white pointed object sticking out from the ground. He had already known that it was the last object that was rather big. It was also the one that his spirit sense was not able to recognize easily as the object seemed to be repelling it. The repulsion was so strong that Arthur could not even tell the shape of the object. Arthur did not dare to dig this out directly with his hand and instead decided to use a stick to do so. Since he couldn't sense the object properly, he couldn't tell for sure if it had any traps placed on it. Thus he was extra careful and did not want a repeat of before. But just a second after he prodded the white point, he saw what it was and became extremely shocked. A bone! Arthur exclaimed. He then carefully dug the soil around the bone, slowly expanding the dig area. Eventually, he ended up excavating an entire skeleton. What the? How did this skeleton end up here? Arthur wondered. Careful, step back. It's not just any skeleton. Rather, it's the skeleton of a nascent soul realm cultivator. It could have a remnant of a soul on it. Shukong the stanzas warned. Arthur immediately took a few steps back as he contemplated on the revelation. Arthur had learned about the nascent soul realm from senior Shukong the stanzas before. But it was only some surface-level information, thus he did not know what Senior Shukong the stanzas was talking about. What do you mean, Senior? Vistenvelbin.cm for new updates. Chapter 259, The Two Souls of a Cultivator The nascent soul realm cultivators are different than the cultivators in the Qi refining realm and the core condensation realm in that they have two souls. Shukong the stanzas spoke. Two souls? What? Arthur asked with a surprised tone. Yes, two souls, although they are of different kinds. You see, the soul which everyone has and is born with is called as the true soul. This is the soul which forms the very basis of your existence and without it, you cannot live nor reincarnate. The true soul is what undergoes the cycle of reincarnation and is also the soul which accumulates karma. It is the soul whose destiny is dictated by fate. The nascent soul meanwhile is a construct born from the spirit chi core of a core condensation realm cultivator. When a core condensation realm cultivator reaches the peak of the core condensation realm, they undergo a heavenly lightning tribulation which allows them to hatch a nascent soul from their spirit chi core. With the spirit chi core as the egg, the heavenly lightning as the life spark and the dantian as the incubator a nascent soul is born. Shukong the stanzas explained. Shukong the stanzas stopped and let Arthur digest this information first before continuing. He had not told him the actual circumstances behind the creation of a nascent soul realm cultivator before and knew that the information was a bit complex to understand. The difference between the true soul and nascent soul is in that the true soul cannot leave the mortal body under normal conditions. Thus, the nascent soul acts as the secondary vessel for the consciousness and allows the cultivator to leave his body. This can even allow the cultivator to escape death and live on in the form of a soul. And if the cultivator is fortunate enough, 
they will even find a suitable vessel and be able to take over it, allowing them to be reborn. This is the reason I warned you, nascent soul reem cultivators can leave behind remnants of their soul on the remains of their body upon death. These remnants can latch onto the body of an unfortunate person and allow the nascent soul to find that person to take over them. In some cases, the nascent soul may even stay back in the remains of their dead body, waiting to chance upon a passing person to take over. Thus, unless one is strong enough or is sure that there are no soul remnants on a corpse or dead remains, they should avoid all contact with it. Shukong the stanzas continued. Hearing the entire explanation from Senior Shukong the stanzas made Arthur feel a bit fearful of the nascent soul realm cultivators. But he knew that this was inevitable, and one day he would have to fight with one. All he could do right now was to take precautions and be extremely sure of whatever he was to do. He closely looked at the skeleton and spotted something on the other hand of the skeleton. This hand's fingers were slightly covered with dirt and Arthur had not fully uncovered them as Senior Shukong the stanzas had warned him before that. But now that he saw them again, his eyes caught the glint of some kind from there. Senior, there's something on its finger, Arthur spotted. It's a ring of some kind perhaps. Shukong the stanzas focused on the hand and indeed saw the faint outline of a ring there. How do I proceed, senior? Arthur asked, desiring to check out the ring. Hmm, looking at the state of decay, this man has probably died over a year ago. Considering the time frame and the environment, it is impossible for the nascent soul to survive this long. That is, if it was also not destroyed at the time of its death. But seeing that the brown shrubby forest cat was able to approach it before without any problem, it is likely the nascent soul left the skeleton behind or was destroyed. You need to check the skeleton with your spirit sense, use the same method you used to break the trap. That way you should be able to overcome the repelling from that skeleton. Shukong the stanzas instructed. Arthur nodded in response and took a step back before using his spirit sense to probe the skeleton. The result was the same as before, and his spirit sense probe was repelled. But Arthur did not lose hope and tried again, this time with more power than before. The spirit sense tendril came in contact with the repulsion layer of the skeleton and hovered there, unable to proceed. A strange equilibrium had been reached, and Arthur knew that now was the time. He started channeling the spirit chi into his spirit sense tendril and pushed further into the repulsive layer. For the first minute, no change was observed, but after another minute, a small depression seemed to be forming as Arthur as spirit sense pressed on. Ten minutes passed by and Arthur as forehead was covered in sweat by now. He had depleted a good chunk of his spirit chi wisps by now and barely had 400 left. His progress was also evident though as the repulsive layer was nearly gone by now. Pop. Another five minutes later, Arthur finally breached the repulsive layer and it dissipated but in exchange, Arthur was now left with only 50 wisps of spirit chi in his dantion. Of course, there was still the liquid spirit chi there too, he had not touched them yet. Phew. That certainly was exhausting. I didn't expect it to take so much spirit chi from me, Arthur stated as he wiped the sweat off his forehead. His back was covered in sweat too making his clothes stick to it. Rest and recuperate your spirit chi. Only after your stores are back to the top should you proceed. There can be some unexpected surprises, so it's better to be cautious. Shukong the stanzas advised. I understand, senior. Arthur responded before sitting down to recuperate his spirit chi. Chapter 260 a spatial storage ring? While Arthur was doing all this, the brown shrubby forest cat was lying in the grass and was basking in the warm sunlight while taking a nap. It had long since fallen asleep and did not notice Arthur do all this. Arthur opened his eyes after recuperating his spirit chi to the full and looked at the skeleton. No physical change could be observed on the skeleton, and it seemed to be the same as before. Arthur extended his spirit sense and probed it, facing no repulsion like before it easily touched the skeleton. Upon finally touching the skeleton, Arthur could not find anything peculiar on it. That was a bit underwhelming, after all that. Arthur uttered as a sigh escaped his mouth. It is safe to touch now. There are no remnants of a soul on the skeleton. If there were, you would have felt them there. Shukong the stanzas spoke up. Arthur nodded in response before a question popped up in his mind. But senior, what was that repulsion I felt? Arthur questioned. That was the final layer of protection that was left on the skeleton of the cultivator. Usually, when a nascent soul realm cultivator dies, their remaining spirit chi would accumulate onto their skeleton due to its characteristics. This ends up forming the repulsive layer that you felt before. 
It is a kind of precaution that prevents the remains from being disrespected. But this also ends up preserving the remains, as you can see. Although the flesh may wither away, the bones will stay on. Xu Kong the stanzas answered. Arthur was listened on with interest and felt amazed by this new tidbit of information. He then pushed these thoughts aside as he now needed to check what was actually left on the skeleton. Arthur brushed the soil away and revealed the ring that was hidden beneath. On the index finger of the right hand of the skeleton, a plain golden ring was left. It was loosely hanging on the finger as there was no flesh left on it. At the top of the ring, a square surface was formed on which a green gem laid. As soon as Arthur saw it, only one thing appeared in his mind. Is that a spatial storage ring? Arthur exclaimed. Arthur probed the ring with his spirit sense and confirmed his assumption. It was indeed a spatial storage ring. But a moment later, Arthur's brows furrowed as he sensed something else. There are barely any spatial fluctuations coming from it. Is this normal, senior? Arthur asked as he pulled the ring off of the skeleton's finger. No, this ring is damaged and those items that you found before were probably kept in this ring. They were probably ejected out after the ring was damaged. Shukong the stanzas answered. But don't the injects stored in a spatial treasure get lost in the void if they are broken? Arthur questioned. Not always. There are certain modifications that can be made so that the objects in a ring are not lost in the void and are instead ejected out. Though most cultivators prefer having the ability to destroy their spatial treasure so that others cannot obtain its contents. Usually, a modification such as this is only done for specific purposes, as it is rather difficult and expensive to make. Also, it is impossible for any spirit tool refiner below the Immortal Ascension stage to make it. Xu Kong the stanzas answered. But then, senior, doesn't this mean? Arthur replied before he was interrupted. Yes, it is from a higher world, and similarly this skeleton also belongs to a cultivator that came from a higher-leveled world. This also makes sense as the dual Circe Ascension vine is rare in worlds such as this. It is likely that it grew from a seed that the cultivator was carrying, which was ejected upon the spatial storage ring being damaged. The other objects such as the peak grade spirit stones and the stone badge were also ejected along with it, after which the seed sprouted and took support from the peak grade spirit stones. Shukong the stanzas hypothesized. Arthur was lost in his thoughts after hearing Senior Shukong the stanzas' words as things started linking up in his mind. He silently thought for a few minutes before coming up with a theory of his own. Senior, considering all the events that have happened till now, the beast storage treasure, the invader, and now this, they all seem to be linked. Is it possible that this cultivator is the source behind all of them? Arthur said in a serious tone. Shukong the stanzas did not immediately reply to Arthur and did an analysis of his own before responding. I think that you are right, but this brings us to a rather grave question. There is no chance that this cultivator died naturally. There was certainly something that killed him. It was definitely not a beast, as any beast strong enough to kill a nascent soul realm cultivator would have been able to easily eat it whole. It does not seem like the cultivator suffered from any chi deviation of even a tribulation. Otherwise, there would certainly be signs present on the skeleton. FNDD é UPTS on N, OV, I, L, in, ponto, com. This leaves only one option. Another cultivator killed him. Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur realized the graveness of senior Shukong the stanzas' words and wondered who could be the likely culprit. Hmm, if the cultivator was able to kill this man easily then they would have definitely taken his spatial treasure, right? They would have left it behind like this. Also, there doesn't seem to be any damage to the bones which could mean that the cultivator wasn't attacked from by any kind of overwhelming power, rather by someone who was at the same strength level as him. Arthur thought out loud. That's a possibility. The two cultivators probably battled and both must have sustained injuries otherwise the spoils of the battle would have surely berm taken by the victor. This narrows down the list of suspects to all the nascent soul realm cultivators that have been recently injured. The most obvious suspect would be someone from a cultivation sect. Shukong the stanzas added. Chapter 261, Heading Back. Upon hearing Senior Shukong the stanzas' words, Arthur started to think of all the sects that could possibly be involved in this. If they were able to attack this man, then this means that they were probably from this region. It's unlikely that someone from a sect not from this region came to attack that man. Hmm, if it's from this region then the only sect I can think about is the Tricaldron Peony sect. I don't know what other sects are here. Arthur thought to himself. But then he remembered something. Wait, I have the jade slip that Jingwei gave me. 
There is bound to be some information in there about the sex of this region. Arthur muttered to himself and took out the jade slip. He held it in his hand and activated it, browsing through the information that was recorded within in. He soon reached the point where it talked about the sex that existed in the region and discovered that in the region around the Wu Lim city only the Tricaldron Peony sect existed that was a cultivation sect. There existed a few normal sects, but they were merely martial sects that had the body-tempering realm cultivators in them. So whoever it is, they're likely to be from the Tricaldron Peony sect. Arthur guessed. You can't ignore the possibility that it could have been someone else that was following the man. They may have followed him here and attacked so that there would be fewer traces and it would be harder to track them. This would also inadvertently put the blame on the Tricaldron Peony sect. Shukong the stanzas advised. Thar's true senior. We have far too little information to be able to reach an accurate conclusion, Arthur said in a calm tone. At least our work here is done. I was able to accomplish the goal I set. Though it's a shame that the dual circle ascension vine was destroyed, Arthur added. He then stored the skeleton of the dead cultivator in his ring, as he had intended to show this to someone that would perhaps be more knowledgeable, not to mention that the skeleton was an important piece of evidence. Arthur stood up and looked for the brown shrubby forest cat, finding it to be asleep on the side. Huh, so you were enjoying your time? Arthur chuckled as he petted the beast's head. Yawn. The brown shrubby forest cat let out a yawn as it woke up from Arthur's action. It slowly blinked its eyes and licked its paws to rub its face. It stretched as it stood up and then rubbed against Arthur. Let's go, little guy. Arthur spoke, the intention of which the beast understood. Arthur took one last look around the area and realized something which made him stop. Hmm. Senior the bewildering formation array around the area. What will happen to it? Arthur questioned. From what I could gather, that formation array was probably set up by the dead cultivator to protect himself when he was injured, and it has been active since then. The formation array should fade away by itself in a few more months, as I cannot see any other supportive formations that can supply it with spirit chi. Also, the brown shrubby forest cat was able to enter it. That means the flaws are already appearing in it. Looking at the items we found and the lack of spirit stones, it's likely that the dead cultivator used them to set up this bewildering formation. There is no other reason a cultivator that to a nascent soul realm cultivator would have so few resources with him. Xu Kong the stanzas answered. Arthur nodded in response and fiddled with the damaged spatial storage ring he had in his hand. Can this ring be repaired, senior? Arthur asked curiously. Hmm, it is certainly reparable, but I doubt there are many people who can do it. Perhaps, Jingwei can do it. He does seem to have some accomplishments in spirit tool refinement. Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur's eyes lit up upon hearing senior Shukong the stanzas s reply. That's good. If this ring can be repaired, then I can use it. That way, even if I openly store items, I can have a valid excuse. The mysterious ring that I have is not visible to others. Thus, it is suspicious whenever I use it. If I have an actual spatial storage ring, it will be much easier. Arthur state, that will indeed deter some overly curious eyes. Something that's mysterious is more likely to catch attention than something that's in the open. Shukong the stanzas agreed. Having decided what his next course of action would be, Arthur started to head back. This time it was much easier for Arthur to leave the formation array as it only worked in one direction. It prevented people from entering but did not restrict them from leaving. Arthur left the confines of the formation array, with the brown shrubby forest cat following behind him. Upon entering the town, Arthur first went to his house to drop off the brown shrubby forest cat before heading to Jingwei's emporium. This was done according to the advice of Senior Shukong the stanzas, as he did not want them to know of the beast's intelligence, as it could lead them to question him about the dual circle ascension fruit. Upon reaching the area, Arthur saw that the alley the shop was located in was still hidden. But when he approached it, the path automatically appeared for him as the formation array recognized him. He opened the door of the shop and entered it. Oh, did they clean this place up? Arthur muttered with surprise as he saw the clean shop. The dust that usually covered the shop was no longer there, though the items in the shop were still scattered around. Putting this to the back of his mind, Arthur walked to the back room. I'm supposed to blow out this lamp, right? Arthur remembered as he then snuffed it out. The room suddenly became white and then Arthur appeared in the courtyard of the myriad armament canopy abode. The faint fragrance of the spirit flowers and the dense spirit chi in the air calmed Arthur's mind and made him feel relaxed. Ah, this place is so good. Arthur muttered in satisfaction. 
Chapter 262 The Excited Jing Wei While walking towards the mansion at the end, Arthur was wondering where the pair of grandfather and granddaughter would be. The mansion was far too large on the inside and it would talk him a while to find them. But just as he thought of this, he spotted them sitting at a pergola in the garden that was near the mansion. Duan Ku and Jing Wei were sitting at the table in the pergola and were chatting about something when they felt the formation array letting someone inside. Seems like he's back. Duan Keskivi Kospoke. Indeed. I wonder what he's here for this time. It's been a while since we saw him. Jing Wei responded as he turned to look in the distance from where Arthur was walking. Arthur soon reached the two of them and came to stand at the side of the table. Oh? Seems like you've gotten better since the last time. Jing Wei said as he sensed some changes in Arthur. What brings you here today? I thought you were going to stay in seclusion and cultivate for longer. Duan Ku asked. I was indeed in seclusion all this while but had to stop it for a bit as I had some matters to deal with. Li Nm replied as he nodded. What kind of matters? Do they involve the invader? Jing Wei questioned in a more serious tone. Arthur's expression straightened as he nodded gently. Yes, and not only that, I may have even found the source of the invader, perhaps. Arthur revealed much to the shock of the two. What? Then we must hurry. Let's talk further in the mansion. Jing Wei replied. Arthur went with the flow and followed the two of them to the library, which was a bit surprising to him as he had expected them to be heading to the meeting hall. Upon arriving there, Jing Wei waved his hand and the formation array lit up for a few seconds before disappearing. What was that for? Arthur curiously asked. It's an isolating formation. It will prevent the contents of our conversation from being heard. Duan Ku answered first. Arthur tilted his head in confusion as he could not understand why they would require something like that now, as there was no one else other than them in this entire space. Jing Wei saw the confusion on Arthur's face and could guess what he must have been thinking about. There are certain abilities that we need to protect ourselves from. There are a few pesky and meddlesome sects that love to pry in matters that they have no business in. Even with the courtyard being in a different space, some of them can still discover us, though it's unlikely. Jing Wei said, But, I still do not want to take any chances. He added, But you didn't activate this before? We have even more sensitive discussions back then. Arthur asked further. It was activated back then as well. But not just this, all the defensive formations were activated last time, which is why you did not notice it. Jing Wei explained. Ah, I see. Arthur responded. Well then, what did you discover? Jing Wei questioned. Arthur withdrew the skeleton of the dead cultivator and put it on the ground for the two to see. As soon as the pair saw it, their eyes went wide. Is this? Duan Keskivi ko uttered. A nascent soul realm cultivator's remains. There is no doubt. I can sense it. Jing Wei confirmed. The two then lifted their gaze from the skeleton and looked at Arthur. This is the source behind the invader, I estimate. I found a bewildering formation array in the forest, and inside there I found this skeleton. It had some items which I believe do not belong in this world. Linking that with the beast storage treasure and the incidents that happened led me to believe that they were related. Arthur stated his theory. Jing Wei heard his words and stayed silent for a moment before speaking. And what are these items that you found on him? Jing Wei questioned. In response to this, Arthur withdrew the damaged spatial storage ring, the stone badge, and the depleted peak grade spirit stones. Peak grade spirit stones. Duan Keskiviko exclaimed. Jing Wei's attention particularly went towards the ring that Arthur was holding in his hand. US Tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. And a spatial storage ring, that too of an unknown design. Jing Wei added. Arthur handed the ring to Jing Wei on cue and let him observe it. Jing Wei held it in his hand and observed it with his spirit sense. With every minute that he held it in his hand, his expression kept on changing. At the start it was calm, which then turned to surprise, then confused and finally excited. Arthur could understand his emotions but did not know why he had now become so exacted. Ha ha ha! This is a masterpiece. Such craftsmanship. Such innovation. Something like this had never been seen before. Jing Wei shouted in praises. Duan Ku and Arthur both had perplexed faces, seeing the usually calm Jing Wei acting like this. Of course I should have expected this. In a low-leveled world such as this, even a spatial storage treasure such as that ring is of the highest quilt. Xu Kong the stanzas spoke with a sigh. 
Arthur slightly chuckled which Duan Ku heard and her face became a bit red. Grandfather, have some decorum. Duan Kiskivi Kotiaid. This is no time for decorum. Kur. This little ring. It may potentially be the solution to our problems. Jing Wei replied in an excited tone, same as before. Now even Duan Ku's expression turned shocked upon hearing her grandfather's words. Is it really that good? Arthur asked out loud. I mean that spatial storage ring is damaged and broken. Duan Ku's excitement instantly died down after hearing Arthur's revelation, but Jing Wei did not even flinch and acted the same. Sai. Chapter 263. Repair? Seeing that Jing Wei had not changed his expression after telling him about the condition of the spatial storage ring, Arthur was now even more confused. He was wondering whether the old man had finally started to show the effects of his old age. Chuckle. You think I don't know this ring is damaged? I know that of course, I knew the moment I got my hands on it. But that's not all this ring is. Even if it is damaged, I can still analyze and learn a lot of things from it. Merely the techniques and skills used to make this ring are amazing. Even the best spirit tool refiners in the entire Great Zhou Empire cannot match it. Jing Wei spoke in the same excited tone. Arthur finally understood why the old man was happy and saw that Duan Ku's expression also improved after hearing it. Arthur then remembered what he was going to ask him about and thought that he should do it while they were on the topic of the ring. Seeing that you can analyze the ring, can you also perhaps repair it? Arthur questioned. Hearing Arthur's question Jing Wei was a bit stunned and his expression calmed down. Hmm, I definitely cannot restore it to how it was originally, as I neither know the techniques nor have the skill to do it. But, I may be able to restore it to a fraction of its full capabilities. Though I cannot tell how big that fraction would be. Jing Wei answered. Arthur's eyes lit up after hearing Jing Wei's answer. It didn't matter to him how much this ring could store. It only mattered that it was functional. Arthur had the mysterious ring with a massive storage capacity, the limits of which even Senior Shukong the stanzas could not perceive. Thus this ring would only going to be used as a disguise. Can you repair this ring for me then? Arthur asked. Duan Ku looked at Arthur for a moment before turning to her grandfather. She did not know whether her grandfather would be accepting of such a request or not. If it was in the past, even the big sex would have to wait for months before they could even speak to him. But now here they were, hiding in some small town. Jing Wei smirked a bit before replying. Sure, in payment of letting me study this ring, I can repair it for you. Jing Wei spoke in a calm tone. Phew. Arthur took a breath of relief after hearing his response, as this meant that he would be able to cover up for another one of his big flaws. No longer would he have to hide or pretend to do something else whenever he got something. Though, I do not know how long it would take me to repair it. I have simply not seen anything like it. Thus I cannot give you an estimate. How about I contact you with the communication jade when it's done? Jing Wei asked. That would be fine. As long as you can fix it anything is acceptable. Arthur replied while nodding his head. Ahem. Duan Ka coughed lightly, bringing the attention of the two men towards the skeleton in the room. We were speaking about this and you two already forgot it seems. Duan Ku spoke in a chiding tone. Arthur couldn't help but feel a bit embarrassed but Jing Wei had no reaction. He still seemed to be basking in his previous feeling. Ah, of course. Let's get to it shall we? Jing Wei said, trying to nullify the awkwardness. Duan Ku and Arthur both nodded in response and turned their attention to the skeleton. So from what I can gather, this is indeed a nascent soul realm cultivator that came from another world. The ring and the beast storage treasure pretty much confirms that. Jing Wei spoke. Duan Ku had a slightly confused expression hearing her grandfather's words as a doubt appeared in her mind. The beast storage treasure? Isn't it possible that it is not linked to the dead cultivator but rather someone else? Duan Keskivi ko inquired. There is a possibility, of course. But, I've seen the craftsmanship in the ring and the beast storage treasure and there is no doubt that there are certain similarities in them that are definitely not found in this world. I highly doubt there can be another person, that too in this region that came from another world. Jing Wei clarified. Duan Ku had an enlightened expression on her face, as she understood Jing Wei's assumption. Oh, he's good. Much better than I expected. Xu Kong the stanzas suddenly spoke. What do you mean senior? Arthur internally asked as he tilted his head. That old man was able to spot and link the fine similarities in the manufacturing and refinement techniques that were used to make the beast storage treasure and the spatial storage ring, even though the beast storage treasure was pretty much junk at that point. Looks like the standards of this world may be slightly higher than I thought. 
Or perhaps this old man is the better one of the lot. Xukong the stanzas explained. Arthur did not reply and simply hummed in acknowledgement as he focused back on the conversation. What about the peak grade spirit stones? Duanku asked. Hmm. I can't tell much about their source as they are depleted. If they still had a slight amount of spirit chi left in them, then I may have been able to find some traces in them that could have pointed out to the mine that they originated from. Jing Wei answered. They can do that? Arthur spoke in a surprised tone to Shukong the stanzas. Indeed, although all spirit stones are pretty much the same, there are still some fine traces in them that can help to identify which mine they came from. The spirit chi in them is absorbed from the area that mine would be in, thus it would have something like a signature on it. Though this is quite faint and cannot be perceived by most cultivators. Only the Dao shell cultivators and above are able to sense them and that too with special equipment and supportive formations. Shukong the stanzas explained. That's amazing! Arthur muttered in appreciation and awe. Chapter 264 Autumn Valley Sect The conversation continued for a while until it finally came time to discuss the culprits. What other cultivation sects are there in the region apart from the Tri-Cauldron Peony Sect? Arthur questioned. Although Arthur knew that there was only one mentioned in the records, he still asked to confirm. There is another one, a rather new sect. All we know is that it is quite small but we don't have an estimate on its number of cultivators and that it was created about two decades ago. Jing Wei answered. Arthur had not expected for his question to bear fruit, though he wondered why it was not in the records. Why was this not mentioned in the records that you gave me, though? Arthur asked curiously. That's because such sects pop up all the time. Some newly ascended nascent soul realm cultivator thinks they have what it takes and creates a cultivation sect. Though these sects don't last long and soon dissolve due to lack of resources or internal conflicts. Another thing is that such sects prefer to stay hidden for a while as this allows them to stabilize their roots and prevents the other sects from taking advantage of them. This is the reason why such sects are not even recorded in the main records. There may be some recent archives, but we didn't have those as you can guess from our condition. Jing Wei explained with the last part seeming a little wry. I found out about the sect last year, but they haven't really done anything and have not officially revealed themselves to the world. Duan Ku added. Arthur was intrigued by their words and was now starting to wonder if the sect was involved in it or not. You see, the suspicion I had was that someone hurt this cultivator. But seeing that his ring was left intact and the bewildering formation that was set up in the forest, it was likely that the attack could not hold back this cultivator from escaping. We know that he was a nascent soul realm cultivator. Thus the other party must be one too. They should be at about the same strength, or such a thing would not have happened and his ring would have probably been stolen. This led me to believe that there was perhaps a nascent soul realm cultivator from one of the sects involved as it seemed to be the most obvious. Arthur explained. Jing Wei and Duan Ku listened to his theory with rapt attention and indeed found it to be sensible. There were far too few nascent soul realm cultivators in the area, and all of them belonged to either the Tricaldron Peony sect or to the kingdom. Hmm, <clears throat> this does seem likely. But then according to this hypothesis, the attacker must have been injured as well. But I haven't heard of any news about a nascent soul realm cultivator getting injured. There isn't much chance that news such as this can be suppressed. And I can tell for sure that it is not anyone from the Tricaldron Peony sect, as all four of their nascent soul realm experts are fine. They all recently showed up to an event a few months ago, and all of them were fine and dandy as always. Jing Wei spoke. After hearing Jing Wei's explanation, Arthur wondered if it was not the Tricaldron Peony sect. Then could it be the other new sect? Speaking of that, I don't know its name yet. Arthur thought. What is the name of this new sect that was created in the region? Could they perhaps be involved in it? Arthur questioned. That sect is called as the Autumn Valley sect and although they are not a righteous sect, they are definitely not an unorthodox sect. If they were, then the other orthodox sects would have long since exterminated them if they ever got even a little suspicion. But from the very few interactions they had, it can be determined that they are a neutral sect. Considering their age, I cannot say for sure if they would have attacked this cultivator. Not to mention, this would mean that their only nascent soul realm cultivator was injured, which would leave them with a lacking leadership. Thus I cannot say for sure if they could be behind them either. What I think is that it was perhaps a wandering cultivator that discovered him and attacked him. There are actually some wandering nascent soul realm cultivators in the kingdom, although determining their location would be difficult. And if one of them got injured, it will be impossible for news to spread out. Jing Wei answered. Sigh. 
This just keeps on getting more and more complex. Arthur muttered to himself, feeling a bit fatigued. Tell you what, Duan Ku will investigate this and try to find any news about it. Another thing is we are in luck as our supplier is coming here today. We may find something from them. Jing Wei revealed. Arthur had certainly not expected to hear this today and suddenly remembered the state of the shop earlier. Is that why the shop was clean? I thought it was just supposed to stay like that. Arthur asked. An almost invisible vein popped up on Duan Ku's forehead which went unnoticed by Arthur. But Jing Wei felt it rather instantly and knew that his granddaughter was on the edge. Yes, yes, whenever the supplier comes, we make it seem like the shop is still active. The formation automatically cleans the shop. Jing Wei said, trying to suppress the volatility before it could even begin. Oh, that's amazing. Cleaning formations. Now that's something I definitely need. Arthur muttered, remembering the piles of bones and meat scraps that were left behind each morning after his monstrous meal. Vischtenvelbin.cm for new updates. Ah, those are easy to set up. I'll give you one of the pre-made ones. They are easy to set up and quite convenient. Jing Wei spoke upon hearing Arthur's mutterings. Just as Jing Wei finished saying this, they felt the formation array activate. He's here. Chapter 265 Jing Ming Shang. Arthur looked at the duo, waiting for them to respond and see what their next course of action would be. He had no knowledge of this supplier of theirs and wondered what he had brought. From their words, he could also get that this supplier was also someone that provided them with news and intelligence. Let's go, he has entered the alley. Duan Ka spoke, breaking the silence. Jing Wei nodded and started to walk out of the hall. They left the mansion with Arthur following behind them as they soon reached the small building that was the exit of the courtyard. The small lamp hanging on the roof was lit and the scenery changed. The three of them appeared in the back room of the shop and went to take their place in the shop. Jing Wei sat on a chair at the side while Duan Ku sat at the counter. Meanwhile, Arthur was left standing awkwardly. What are you doing standing around dumbly? Go pretend to be a customer. Duan Ku said in a cold tone. Why is she mad? Arthur internally questioned. Human females are confusing and mysterious. A great cultivator once said that among the 8,000 great mysteries of the cosmos, the minds of the females belong in the top 10. Chukong the stanzas suddenly spoke. Hee hee, is that so, senior? Arthur muttered, finding it to be a bit strange. Creak. The sound of the door opening resounded in the shop, as a man dressed in a delicate-looking robe walked in. The man had his hair tucked into his cap and had a short beard with a rather long mustache that hanged down to his chin. He had a jade hanging on his waist and a white fan in his right hand, while his left hand was kept on a pouch that hung from his belt. The man looked to be in his thirties, but looking into the man's eyes one would feel confused. They had an innocent look in one moment and then a shrewd one in the next. Arthur felt the faint waves of spirit chi emanating from him and instantly recognized him as a cultivator. He curiously extended his spirit sense and probed the man. But the instant he did so, the man's eyes turned to him and a smirk appeared on his lips. Core condensation realm. Arthur muttered under his breath. Meanwhile, the man had an interested look on his face after sensing the spirit sense that had just touched him. Oh, a fellow cultivator. Greetings. The man spoke while cupping his hands and displaying a smile. The smile seemed to be fine, yet there was a certain emptiness to it. Arthur hurriedly cupped his hands as well before speaking. Greetings to you too, Arthur said in an awkward tone. The man nodded in response and did not seem to mind Arthur's previous action. He simply went to stand in front of the counter and looked at Duan Ku. Ah, Lady Duan Ku is as beautiful as always. A million flowers shall turn dull before your face. The man praised in a flattering tone that dripped with coyness. Arthur felt shivers on his body after hearing the man's words and subconsciously took a step back. Unknowingly, even the short sword on his waist started trembling and seemed as if it wanted to leave the scabbard. But a few seconds later it calmed down. The faint vein that was on Duan Ku's forehead suddenly became prominent as her expression turned cold. Arthur could suddenly feel the pressure coming from her intensify. Although the pressure was not directed at him, he could still sense her power. Oh my, she's strong. The pressure is not even focused on me, and yet I feel threatened. I wonder what's her cultivation base. Arthur muttered with slight fear. Well, considering the aura she's exuding, there is no doubt that she is at the peak stage of the core condensation realm. Xu Kong the stanzas estimated. 
Arthur had known that Duan Ku was a core condensation realm cultivator and had even fought with her before, but he was still shocked when her full power was revealed, albeit unwittingly. Heavens was I lucky winning against her back then. Arthur thanked his fortune. Arthur then witnessed drops of sweat appearing on the brows of the man who had just tried to flirt with Duan Ku. But even then, the smile on his face did not weaken one bit and instead became more wide. Ha ha ha. Let's get down to business, shall we? The man spoke, trying to defuse the situation he had created. Humph. Duan Ku harumphed in annoyance as she then withdrew her aura. The man wiped his forehead with his sleeve and then looked towards Jing Wei. Oh, Lady Duan Ku's grandfather is here as well? That's good. I have some special herbs that are useful for elderly men in regaining their vigor. The man spoke. Jing Wei, who was calmly sipping his tea, pretending to relax, almost spit it out upon hearing the man's crass words. U.S. Tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. Arthur heard the man's words but did not understand what he meant. Thus did not react. But Duan Ka's expression eased up a little bit after that, which she quickly hid behind her cold facade again. Jing Wei placed his teacup down and spoke. Yes, yes, let's. Well then, what goods have you brought us today, Jing Ming Shang? Oh? So his name is Jing Ming Shang. Arthur repeated, memorizing it in the next second. This man was the third person Arthur had met after Duan Ku and Hei Jia that was a core condensation realm cultivator. Thus he wanted to remember his name in case it was needed in the future somehow. Jing Ming Shang nodded in response to Jing Wei's words and spread his hands apart. Today, I have brought you a wide variety of goods, both material and immaterial. Jing Ming Shang said with a flourish. Chapter 266, Exchange of Goods. Arthur was a bit surprised by the mannerisms of the man called Jing Ming Shang, but it seemed like the pair of grandfather and granddaughter, Jing Wei and Duan Ku were used to it. It was as if they had seen this many times before and were not bothered by it, even if the man did try to flirt with Duan Ku. But from the previous interaction, Arthur could tell that this man Jing Ming Shang was not as strong as Duan Ku, who was at the peak stage of the core condensation realm. But he did seem stronger than Hei Jia, or at least as strong as him. Hmm, so he's at least at the mid-stage of the core condensation realm. I can't tell if that's good or not. Arthur thought to himself. All right, that's enough of your acts. We have a lot to do today. First of all, let us clear out the previous stock. Duan Ku suddenly said, not wanting to see more of Jing Ming Shang's dramatics. If Lady Duan Ku says so. Jing Ming Shang agreed and then took out a bracelet from his wrist. The bracelet had been hidden under his sleeves. Thus Arthur had not seen it. But now that he saw it, he could instantly tell that it was a spatial storage treasure. Duan Ku took the bracelet and went to the back room for a few minutes before returning with it. She handed it back to Jing Ming Shang, who took it and closed his eyes for a minute before opening it. This time he had a new glint in his eyes, as if he had found something that he liked. Ah, the goods this time are quite good. I even see a lot of spirit beast cores. Oh, and what's this? A core condensation realm beast core? That two one that awakened a bloodline ability, excellent. Jing Ming Shang praised. Arthur had not thought that the man was here to buy all the things that he had sold to Duan Ku before. He had thought that perhaps they were using it to make items of their own. But now it seemed to be unlikely. I have more. Give me another spatial storage treasure. Or perhaps you can just carry them out yourself. Duan Ku spoke again. What is it? I hope it's as good as this. Jing Ming Shang asked. It is beast materials. Pelts, bones, and components such as that. Duan Kiskivik or Riplid. Ah, that needs no spatial treasure. I'll get the servants to carry it out. Jing Ming Shang said. All right, tell them to come in through the backyard's door. I'll put them there. There's a large quantity. Duan Ku said. Jing Ming Shang had an intrigued look on his face, but he did not question Duan Ku. He simply went out for a few seconds and came back. They're entering the yard, he said. Good, Duan Ku said and secretly gestured with her hand. The goods have already been put in the yard. She added. Jing Ming Shang raised his brows in response and waited for his servants to report to him. Arthur had seen what Duan Ku had done there. He had felt the formation array activate for a bit, and spatial fluctuations appeared. Another thing was that there was no entrance to a yard before and now that he observed with his spirit sense, there clearly was another door to the side of the building which was not there before. Seems like the work of the myriad armament canopy abodes formation array. Arthur inwardly muttered. 
Five minutes later, a knock was heard on the door of the shop and a middle-aged man dressed in a steward's clothes walked in. The man cupped his hands in greetings to everyone in the room in a servile manner. Arthur could tell that the man was a servant and was a bit surprised as he could even feel spirit chi fluctuation from the man. He curiously probed the man and discovered that the servant was an early-stage chi refining realm cultivator. A cultivator as a servant? Arthur muttered under his breath. This isn't unusual, you will see this a lot in the future. The weak will always be the servitude of the strong. Shukong the stanzas stated. U.S. Tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. Arthur nodded in understanding and looked back at the people. I have recorded all the goods, master. The servant said as he then handed a scroll to Jing Ming Shang. Jing Ming Shang read through it and looked even more satisfied now. These are good. Jing Ming Shang said as he looked at Duan Ku. You've outdone yourself. Jing Ming Shang waved his hand. And the servant left the shop. Now then, what is it that you want to buy from me? Jing Ming Shang questioned. In response to his words, Duan Ku took out a jade slip and handed it to the man who read through it before nodding his head. All right, I can get all of this. Jing Ming Shang replied. Duan Ku then glanced briefly at Arthur before looking back at Jing Ming Shang. We need information on a few matters. She uttered. Oh, what kind of information? Jing Ming Shang asked. And is it fine discussing it with someone else here? He added. Yes, it is fine. He is partaking in the trade as well. Jing Wei was the one who spoke this time. If owner Jing Wei says so, Jing Ming Shang stated. We need the information of any nascent soul realm cultivators that have gotten heavily injured in the past year. And we also need the information of the Autumn Valley sect. Duan Ku said in a calm tone. Jing Ming Shang's expression straightened after hearing the question, and he fiddled with the fan in his hand. Surely Lady Duan Ku knows that information like this cannot be revealed easily? The price will be high for sensitive matters such as those dealing with nascent soul realm cultivators. As for the Autumn Valley sect, hmm, it shouldn't be a problem. Jing Ming Shang replied. The price is not a problem. All we need is the information. Duan Keskivi Koreiterated. The information I'm about to say is highly sensitive. I'm asking you again, are you sure it is fine with a fellow cultivator here? Jing Ming Shang questioned again, this time with a serious face. Chapter 267, Sensitive Information. Yes, it is indeed fine. You can say it. Duan Ku spoke in a cold tone. Sigh. All right, listen carefully. In the past one year, there have been five incidences where nascent soul realm cultivators have gotten injured. Of these five incidences, the first was because of a mistake caused during cultivating by the nascent soul realm elder belonging to the Wind Zither sect. The second and third nascent soul realm cultivation realm experts were injured in a friendly spar and belonged to the Centennial Sword sect. The fourth nascent soul realm expert is a wandering cultivator called the Swan Daoist. He tried to rob one of the convoys of the kingdom and was hunted down by the royal regiment, thus getting injured. We do not know his exact location but know that he was last seen in the southern plains. As for the final incident, this was the hardest one to obtain. An elder of the Sky Precept sect was fatally injured with his current condition unknown. But the rumors are that he has succumbed to his injuries. Jing Ming Shang revealed. During the entire report, neither Jing Wei nor Duan Ku had much reaction, until when the last one was said. What? An elder of the Sky Precept sect got fatally injured? But how? Duan Ku asked in a shocked tone. I do not know. Even this bit of information cost me a lot to obtain. Jing Ming Shang replied. Hmm. Do you know what peak he belonged to? Jing Wei questioned. I do not know for sure, but from the additional information I gathered, it seemed like there was a change in the populace of the sky catching peak. Jing Ming Shang said cryptically. Jing Wei's eyes went wide, but he did not say anything. He had already understood what was to be understood from those words and knew that they were not to be stated outright. The shop became silent for a minute after this as everyone started to comprehend the information that was just revealed. Arthur too was doing the same as he had learned quite a few new names this time. Arthur had already known about the Centennial Sword Sect and had also read up about them in the records he had obtained from Jing Wei before. He knew that the Centennial Sword Sect was a sect full of cultivators that liked to battle and that they cultivated sword techniques. It was common for the disciples to spar with each other and get injured. This time it was just that nascent soul realm cultivators were involved, that's all. Wind Zither sect was a new name that Arthur had heard, and he didn't know who they were. 
He quickly took a look through the records and found out who they were. The Wind Zither sect was a medium-sized sect that was located in the western part of the Great Zhou Empire and was an average sect with nothing particular about them. The Swan Daoist, this was the first wandering cultivator Arthur had heard about. There was no information recorded about him in the records. Thus he couldn't do much about it. But the final bit of informing that was said was also the most shocking one. The Sky Precept sect was the number one top sect of the Great Zhou Empire and was said to be equal if not above the Emperor himself. Anything pertaining to them was taken with great importance, and it was thus quite surprising to hear that one of their elders was injured. As for the Sky Precept sect, there wasn't much information about it in the records, except that it was one of the divisions of the Sky Precept sect. Hmm. This doesn't seem to give me much to go on with. Arthur thought to himself. Clap. Jing Ming Shang lightly clapped his hands to pull the attention and then spoke. Now then, about the Autumn Valley sect. There hasn't been much that has happened with them in the past few years, but recently a few of their disciples got into a scuffle with some disciples of an unknown sect. Nothing serious happened and it was resolved at that time. Though there was a rumor that someone from the Autumn Valley sect was seen in the Wu Lim city. Oh, who was it that was seen? Was it a disciple or an elder? Duan Ku asked. It was a core condensation realm cultivator, so it's likely that it was an elder of the Autumn Valley sect. The sect only has one nascent soul realm cultivator that is the sect head, so it's obvious that the core condensation realm cultivators are the elders. As for their identity, we do not know what their name is, but we do know that it was a woman. Jing Ming Shang replied. Duan Ku nodded in response and then spoke. That's all we needed. Tally the costs against the goods. Jing Ming Shang closed his eyes for a few seconds before opening his eyes. Lady Duan Ku, the cost is slightly higher than the goods, but just for you, I'll give a discount. No need to pay the extra cost. Jing Ming Shang spoke in the same flattering tone as before. Duan Ku did not dignify the response with an expression and simply hummed in agreement. An awkward silence descended after this, which was forcibly broken by Jing Wei's cough. I guess we are done here. Till next time. Lady Duan Ku and owner Jing Wei. Jing Ming Shang hurriedly said before leaving the shop, but not before giving Arthur a slight look. Sigh. A sigh escaped Duan Ku's lips as she rubbed her forehead as if she was about to have a headache. That man. He's strange. Arthur said with a wry smile. Strange is an understatement. If we were not forced because of our condition, I would have long since taught him a lesson. Ugh. I do not want to see him again. You should have never saved him before, grandfather. Duan Ku said with frustration. Chapter 268 Jing Ming Shang's Debt Chapter 268 Jing Ming Shang's Debt Arthur didn't know what Duan Ku was talking about. Thus he looked at her in confusion. It seemed like there was some past relationship between the two of them and the merchant Jing Ming Shang. He wondered what it could be as right now it definitely did not seem like Duan Ku liked the man. US Tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. Jing Wei noticed Arthur S. inquiring look and knew that it didn't matter if he spoke about it. They had already been together in this for a while now and it seemed to him that it would be fine, revealing it to Arthur. Sigh. You know why I had to save him back then. We were in need and at that time he seemed to be the only choice. Plus, with us having saved him made Jing Ming Shang in our debt. Otherwise, our whereabouts would have long since been leaked if we dealt with any other merchants like him. Although the man is a shrewd businessman, he still has a sense of honor and will follow through with his promise. Jing Wei said in a calm tone. If you say so, grandfather. Duan Ku said unwittingly. Jing Wei looked at Arthur and spoke. I know you want to ask something. Go ahead, it's fine. I just wanted to ask about Jing Ming Shang. From your words, it seemed like you saved him. Arthur questioned. I did indeed. It was a few years ago, and we had been lacking a channel to sell and buy goods through. We couldn't use anything openly as that would lead to our identity and location being leaked. Back then we were traveling through the empire and encountered a group of people chasing a man who was none other than Jing Ming Shang. He had apparently angered the wrong kind of people by taking over their profits, which led to them targeting him and hunting him down. We decided to lend him a helping hand and repelled his attackers. This led to him promising us a life debt. Upon finding that he was a merchant, we decided on a deal. He will trade with us while keeping our identity secret. While he does not know who we really are, he still doesn't reveal our location to others. Jing Wei answered. I see. Arthur nodded in response. Seems like I wasn't the first person they've helped until now. Arthur thought to himself. Ahem. Duan Ku lightly coughed. 
bringing their attention back to the matter on hand. It does not seem like we have anything concrete yet, in terms of a suspect, although the most likely one is probably a wandering cultivator like we previously thought. Duan Keskivi Kospoke. Wait a minute, wasn't the elder from the Sky Precept sect also injured? Can it be possible that it was them? Arthur interrupted. No, that elder was from the Star Catching Peak, so it is not possible. Jing Wei replied. Why is it impossible? What's the thing with the start catching peak? Arthur questioned. Hugh. Jing Wei took a deep breath before speaking. The star catching peak is a special existence in the Sky Precept sect. Even in the other top sects, its reputation is known. They are unlike the other peaks and divisions of the sect. All they deal with is the star catching formation array. This is a special formation that can monitor and interact with the world's barrier. It can also sense spatial disturbances and fluctuations that happen all around the Great Joe Continent. All the members of that peak are involved in this and seldom leave the peak, not to mention the sect. There is no chance that they fought with the dead cultivator. Besides, their specialization is in formations and not in combat. Jing Wei explained. Arthur was intrigued by this information, but not for long since Shukong the stanzas suddenly spoke up in Arthur's mind. The star catching formation array? What? In a world such as this too, Shukong the stanzas uttered with surprise. What's the problem, senior? Arthur asked with concern. I'll explain to you later after you leave this place. But know this, we may have to do some changes soon. Shukong the stanzas said mysteriously. Arthur silently hummed in response and did not probe further. He knew that if senior Shukong the stanzas had acted like this, there was bound to be something very important that should not be discussed here. All right then. Seeing that we can't come to a conclusion right now, I guess it's better to leave it. Perhaps you can find out more about it later on. Arthur spoke, wanting to end the conversation. Yes, we will do that. As for the damaged ring, you can leave it with me. I'll inform you on the communication jade, if anything comes up, or if the ring is repaired. Jing Wei replied. Arthur cupped his hand to thank them before leaving the shop and heading towards his house. Once Arthur was gone, Duan Ko looked at her grandfather with a slightly confused look. Is it just me, or does it seem like he wanted to leave rather urgently? He would usually ask a few more questions considering his past behavior. Duan Ko said, Hmm, it does seem like it, but still, we could be wrong. That boy is progressing fast and I do not know how far he can go. There is certainly a great drive in him, and he's bound to have goals of his own. After all, the world's will would not just ordain anyone average. Jing Wei replied in a calm voice. Back at the house, Arthur had just entered the bedroom and was immediately greeted by the brown shrubby forest cat. Yeah. Arthur kneeled down and petted the head of the beast gently. Are you hungry? Arthur asked. Hungry Arthur felt in his mind. All right, let's go make something. It will be time for dinner soon, anyway. Arthur replied before going towards the kitchen. There he set up some meat to cook while he looked at the brown shrubby forest cat. Hmm. I should give you a name now, shouldn't I? Chapter 269 Little Shrubby Arthur thought over a name while eating the meat that he had just cooked. The brown shrubby forest cat was also accompanying him in dinner as it ate his own share. Unsurprisingly, the beast was still eating the same amount as before and there was no change in it like Arthur's appetite, which was still growing. Hmm, that's it. I got it. Arthur exclaimed, surprising the brown shrubby forest cat. Arthur looked at the beast and petted its head while he said, Your name from now on will be Little Shrubby. The beast looked at Arthur with confusion, and he then communicated with it using his connection. Yeah. The beast purred in acknowledgement and accepted the new name that was given to it. Arthur once again felt a bit proud about his naming sense as he saw the beast liking its new name, while Shukong the stanzas simply ignored it and focused on his own cultivation. After being done with his meal, he assimilated the vital energy and checked his progress in the body-tempering realm cultivation, only to find no difference than before. Hmm. <clears throat> the progress is getting slower and slower. The last time I had any major progress was when I ate the meat of the Alpha Steelback Wolf, which was a core condensation realm beast. How long will I need to see more progress, or do I need to get more core condensation realm beast meat? Arthur muttered to himself. He pondered on the possibility of getting Core Condensation Realm Beast and realized that it would be relatively difficult to obtain it. Although he may not have as much problem in finding one, killing it would become a problem if it was at the late stage of the Core Condensation Realm or above. 
Not to mention that he would have to travel quite deep into the forest in order to encounter beasts that strong now that it was springtime. Sigh. Seems like I'll have to just keep on eating the spirit beast meat. My appetite is increasing more and more anyway. I may as well just compensate it quality with quantity. Arthur spoke in a helpless tone. You know, if you want the meat of a core condensation realm creature, the beasts are not the only source. Shukong the stanzas suddenly spoke, seeing Arthur as frustration. Oh, what other option do I have senior? Arthur asked curiously. Technically meat is meat, the only thing that matters is the cultivation base of the creature that the meat belonged to. There is a much closer source of core condensation realm meat near you. You can simply eat the other cultivators. Shukong the stanzas spoke in a disturbingly calm tone. Arthur was shocked silent and did not know how to respond to this. Frankly, the idea had never even come close to what he had thought. On an innate level, Arthur felt an utter revulsion to the idea of eating another human. He was about to protest to Senior Shukong the stanzas when he suddenly remembered, Shukong the stanzas was not a human. He was a beast. What right did he have to tell him that he did not find it correct, when humans ate beasts all the time and beasts did the same to humans? At least in that aspect the beasts ate other beasts and did not think much of it, at least the ones that had a higher capacity for thinking. It was not as if beasts were completely unintelligent either. Most, if not all beasts would start to gain intelligence and wisdom as their cultivation base grew. They would eventually become just as intelligent as humans or even go beyond that. Arthur did not reply to Senior Shukong the stanzas in the end and simply took his words as it is without a comment. Arthur did not know, but today another small thing had changed in him. A change that while small right now, would one day become a mountain. He then stood up and returned to the bedroom to continue cultivating with little shrubby accompanying him. Now he was about to do something that he had been really excited about. The eleven Duan Circle Ascension fruits that he had obtained, he could finally eat them. Arthur withdrew one of them from the ring and looked at it. The fruits were orange-colored and were oval-shaped. Thin veins were visible on its surface that spread all around the fruit, making it look attractive. Though Arthur did not know what they would taste like. He only hoped that this would not be like his past experience when he ate the purple grape-sized spirit fruit. Only one way to find out. Arthur muttered as he then popped the Duan Circle Ascension fruit into his mouth. Nothing happened when the fruit touched his tongue, but when he bit into it a sweet juice burst into his mouth that was quite delicious. Arthur chewed a couple of times while enjoying the taste of the fruit before swallowing it down to his stomach. He now braced himself for any change that may occur as he was still a bit scared from his previous experience. But surprisingly, no such change happened. Instead, Arthur only felt a small wave of energy travel from his stomach to all parts of his body before disappearing. Ha, huh, that's it. Arthur said, feeling confused. He used his spirit sense to observe his body, but he couldn't really see anything different in it. His meridians and dantion also seemed to be the same as before, and there was no change in them. You should check if you've had an improvement in your cultivation speed. Shukong the stanzas suggested. Arthur nodded in response before starting to chant the Severing Heart Sutra. His mind stilled, as the spirit chi in the air around him became visible to him. He circulated the spirit chi within his body as he had always done, and started absorbing the spirit chi from the air. Find ddu up to yes, on n slash ov slash e slash ln dot com. Chapter 270 Eating the Dual Circle Ascension Fruits The spirit chi wisps entered the pores in his skin and then moved to his meridians before being deposited into the dantion. At first, Arthur could not sense anything new, but after a little while, he finally found it. The reason why he had not been able to see the change inside his body was because it was not there at all. Instead, the change was in the pores of his skin from where the spirit chi was absorbed. Arthur could barely tell that they seemed to have expanded more than before. The expansion was small, yet the change was still there. Arthur cultivated for an hour to get a good grasp on how much his pace increased and came to the conclusion that it had increased by about 1%. Hugh. Arthur let out a breath as he stopped cultivating. Hmm. It's a rather small change. But no worries. I still have more dual circle ascension fruits left. Arthur thought to himself. Don't think that this is insufficient. Even a single percent increase that occurs in an instant like this is great. You don't know how much cultivators would sacrifice to have even one-tenth of such an increase. Shukong the stanzas spoke. I understand, senior. Arthur replied before talking out another dual circle ascension fruit. He popped it into his mouth and enjoyed the taste, after which he swallowed it. 
Similar to before, Arthur couldn't observe any change in his body. He tried absorbing the spirit chi again and discovered that his speed had increased by another percent. Arthur observed his pores and saw that they had expanded slightly more than before. Hmm. If all of those fruits work, then my speed will increase by about 11%, hopefully. Arthur said to himself before taking out all of the dual circle ascension fruit and placing them in front of him. But when he did this, Arthur saw that little shrubby had woken up and was looking at them with longing. It was apparent that the beast wanted to eat the fruits too, but Arthur was reluctant to offer them to him. You will soon see the effect of the dual circle ascension fruit decreasing, so you will have a few fruits left over. You can give those to little shrubby, they will be quite useful to him and should increase its intelligence and cultivation speed. Shukong the stanzas said. Arthur nodded in response and ate another dual circle ascension fruit. After eating it, he tried to see how much of an increase there was and discovered that it was less than before. Unlike the last two times when his speed had increased by 1%, this time it was less than that. Looks like it's already happening. No matter. I'll continue. Arthur stated to himself with determination. He ate the fourth fruit and finally saw his speed increase by another percent, reaching a total of 3% since the start. Finally, so the effect is there, but it's a fraction of what it was before. Arthur muttered with a little satisfaction. He then ate the fifth fruit and in a little surprise to him, his speed jumped a little more to about 4% of the original. Alright, that's good. Arthur muttered as he picked up the next fruit. Upon eating it, there was a minute increase as expected. Sigh. Arthur sighed a little in disappointment before eating the sixth fruit. This time he didn't sense an increase right away, but after a minute it slowly seemed to increase and finally reached to about 5% of the original speed. Damn. Seems like this is the most it can get. Still, I want to try one more time. If it doesn't have any increase, then I'll stop. Arthur spoke. He then picked up the seventh fruit and stared at it for a few seconds. Each and every dual circle ascension fruit was quite precious, and if Arthur ever sold them, they would probably fetch a great price. Thus, every dual circle ascension fruit that he ate that had no effect on him was a wasted one. Arthur gritted his teeth and threw the seventh dual circle ascension fruit into his mouth and chewed it quickly before swallowing it. He held his breath in anticipation and waited for any effects. Unfortunately, even after a while no effects were seen, and it looked like he had reached his limit. Sigh. Seems like this is it. Still, I guess a 5% increase should still help me quite a bit. Arthur said, trying to perk himself up. Little Shrubby was looking at Arthur as he ate every dual circle ascension fruit and slight drool had started to drip from the corner of its mouth. It licked it away every few seconds, but it only kept on coming. Chuckle. Arthur lightly laughed as he saw the funny situation of Little Shrubby. Here you go, you eat this. Arthur said, as he offered Little Shrubby a dual circle ascension fruit. Arthur didn't know how many fruits it would take for Little Shrubby to reach its limits. Thus he wanted to be a bit prudent. The fruits should be a bit more effective on Little Shrubby, as it is at a lower cultivation base than you. Not to mention that it will still have an effect on its intelligence even if it stops increasing its aptitude. Shukong the stanzas explained. FNDD é UPTS on N OV I L I N ponto com. I understand, senior. Arthur replied before watching Little Shrubby eat the small fruit. Unlike him, who was able to eat the entire dual circle ascension fruit in one go, it took Little Shrubby a few bites to finish it. But after eating it, the effect was much more pronounced than it was with Arthur. While the change was invisible to the naked eyes, Arthur could still sense the spirit chi in the air moving towards Little Shrubby. The dual circle ascension fruit had already taken effect. Chapter 271 Little Shrubby's Improvement Chapter 271 Little Shrubby's Improvement Arthur extended his spirit sense and observed the spirit chi wisps in the air being absorbed into Little Shrubby's body. The process didn't last that long and concluded after two minutes. Meow. A growl escaped Little Shrubby's mouth as it felt the effects of the Duan Circle Ascension fruit. It was at that moment that Arthur could sense the connection between himself and Little Shrubby strengthening. Is this the effect of its intelligence increasing? Arthur wondered. Not exactly. His intelligence would not increase this fast it will be an eventual increase. What you're seeing is simply the connection strengthening due to Little Shrubby's potential for intelligence increase. Once it reaches its potential, it will increase even more. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur nodded in response and thought over it. Although he did not know what the effects will be like later on, he at least knew that there were some effects.
Here you go, Arthur said as he offered the rest of the Duan Circle Ascension fruits to Little Shrubby. The beast ate them one by one, and soon the effects intensified. Arthur could sense the spirit chi in the air stirring again as it moved towards Little Shrubby. This time the process lasted much longer, for about ten minutes. Little Shrubby was a bit overwhelmed and laid down on the ground with his eyes closed. It absorbed the spirit chi that was swirling around it, and its cultivation started to rapidly increase. Arthur estimated that the increase was much more than his own. It took Arthur about six fruits to obtain an increase of about 5%, while Little Shrubby was able to obtain an increase of about 15% with just four fruits. Not only that, but the connection between Arthur and Little Shrubby was also strengthening visibly. This is rather big. The benefits that it obtained are much more than me. Arthur muttered. It was bound to happen. You are not only at a higher cultivation base, but you also have been practicing the nameless technique of the lost immortal. In addition to that, I believe the mysterious ring also had a hand in improving your aptitude perhaps. That's why the increase was lesser. You are already at a higher level. Shukong the stanzas explained. I understand, senior. Arthur replied before returning to his cultivation. Time passed by and night arrived. Arthur slept and appeared in the sleepscape. There he plucked the five spirit apples that were hanging on the tree before starting his daily practice. After a sufficient time, he paused and used the nameless technique of the lost immortal to infuse half of the drops of liquid spirit chi that he had obtained today. Phew! Arthur let out a breath as he opened his eyes. He still could not feel much of a difference and was now wondering if he could find anything in the memoirs of the lost immortal that could perhaps give him a clue about the technique. The thing that he had discovered about the wooden slip was that he could not actually browse through it as he did with the communication jade slip that had the records that Jingwei gave him. If Arthur wanted to see the latter contents, he had no choice but to read through it one by one. The next part of the memoir would only appear if he completed the previous one and but he could still go back and check the previous one. In the past few weeks, Arthur had lightly glanced through the memoirs, but did not really focus on it much as he had been busy cultivating for most of the time. Right now, since he felt like he nearing a dead end, he thought of reading it once again. Arthur took out the wooden slip and opened it, making the text appear on it. A year had passed by since the lost immortal had become the old man's disciple. During this time they were still living in the mines and were working as a slave. They had not escaped yet due to a few changes that had occurred after the mine collapse. The kingdom had a conflict in the royal family, which led to one of the princes being assigned to take over the working of the mines. While they did not know the specifics behind it, the rumors that went around in the guards was that the prince in question had offended some influential cultivator that was invited by the king as a guest. The king, intending to punish the prince assigned him to take care of the mines which was something that most royals and nobles did not want to do. Not only did it take up too much time, but they would have to stay away from the luxuries they were so used to. It wasn't like it brought much profit anyway, which led to everyone avoiding it like the plague. Still, upon being assigned to the mines the prince actually improved the functioning. He applied certain policies which were better for the slaves and also increased the productivity. The first of the policies was to make a roster of each and every slave that worked in the mine. He wanted to know how many workers were currently there after the mine collapse. They had still not done a proper headcount as it was common for some slaves to simply die in the mines and disappear. The guards were less than pleased, to say the least after being told about this. Still under the pressure of authority, they carried out their duty and finished the roster after a month. This became the main reason why it became difficult for the lost immortal and the old man to escape. Before, they were relatively unknown and if they went missing, people would have just assumed that they had died in the mines. But now that the roster was made, and it was confirmed that they were alive, it would be much harder. Chapter 272, The Memoirs of the Lost Immortal 2 Although it was easy to for the guard to miss the count before, it was still impossible for the slaves to escape because there was only one entrance and exit of the mine which was heavily guarded. If they were assumed missing, they would have been able to escape with the help of their cultivation base. But now, there would be an investigation that would be launched. The king was keeping a close tab on the prince and was looking out for each mistake that he made. Thus the prince was rather paranoid and did everything to prevent that. This led to him keeping a close eye on the workings of the mine. Just like this another year passed by and it had been two years total since the lost immortal had become a cultivator. Because of the terrible conditions and lack of resources, the lost immortal was barely able to reach the early stage of the chi refining realm. The old man had also discovered that the cultivation technique he practiced was rather unsuitable for the physique of the lost immortal. 
This left him with no choice but to give him another cultivation technique that was inferior to his own. Still, the lost immortal did not mind this and cultivated wholeheartedly. He never let go of any free time that he got and used every second to the fullest. At first, it was quite difficult for him to balance cultivating and mining as he had to fulfill a certain quota. If that quota was not fulfilled, he would not get food and thus would not be able to gain vital energy. Vital energy was essential in the body-tempering realm and without it, he would never be able to progress. Thus, at the start, he focused on fulfilling his quota as much as he could with the old man chipping in. In terms of the old man, his cultivation was also quite slow and he had barely reached the mid-stage of the Qi refining realm. A year after becoming the old man's disciple, the lost immortal finally reached the eighth stage of the body tempering realm and decided to enter the Qi refining realm and become a cultivator officially. Still, this was no easy task, and it took him nearly three months before he was able to sense the spirit Qi and another three months before he was able to absorb it. The old man did not say this to him at that time as he did not want to demotivate him, but the lost immortal perhaps had the lowest talent he had ever seen. The old man knew that without proper resources and a suitable cultivation technique, it would be quite hard for him to progress. Six months passed by like this, and the resolve of the lost immortal was only getting stronger. Eventually, a day arrived when another collapse happened. This time too a lot of slaves died, but the lost immortal and the old man were able to escape it successfully. This lead to another head count to be initiated. The lost immortal and the old man knew that this was the right opportunity to escape. Thus they started to plan. Going out of the entrance was rather impossible, as there were some cultivators that were guarding it. These cultivators were none other than the prince's own personal guards who had taken up the job. The old man was not confident that he or the lost immortal would be able to fight against them, when they were still so weak, thus they tried to find an alternate route. The head count would take a month to complete during which they could delay their turn rather easily by hiding inside the tunnels. The problem with food was solved as they were able to steal the leftover stock of food during the collapse. The aim of the lost immortal and the old man was to find a secondary tunnel that led up to the surface. Even if they did not lead all the way to the surface, as long as they came close the old man was confident that they would be able to dig their way up. Both the old man and the lost immortal were now strong enough that digging through some rocks was easy for them. It took them three months before they were able to find a suitable tunnel. It took them a lot of trial and error, along with hiding from the search parties that were sent down. In the final week, they started their digging and their journey began. During this, they experienced a setback due to another collapse that happened. This led to the floor below them collapsing into a cave. This cave was closed off before and was undiscovered thus they had not expected to have a fortunate encounter there. Within the cave, there was a pool of water that was about two meters wide in radius and a meter deep. This pool of water glowed with a faint light, which attracted the attention of the old man. Upon taking it he was excited as he knew that they had found a treasure. The pool of water was actually a primitive spirit spring. A spirit spring can be considered as the embryonic form of spirit stone mines. The water that was present in the pool contained dissolved spirit chi that would eventually condense to form the core of a spirit stone mine. This core was also the point from where the spirit stone mine would start to grow and accumulate more spirit chi. But looking at the size and condition of the spirit spring, the old man knew that it would take hundreds of years before the spirit spring would be able to turn into a spirit stone mine. The old man instructed the lost immortal to absorb the spirit chi in the pool, due to which his cultivation started increasing at a rapid pace. Still, due to the low talent of the lost immortal, his benefits were not as great as they would have been for a normal cultivator. The lost immortal was able to reach the mid-stage of the chi refining realm and was even able to break through to the late stage of the chi refining realm barely. In the process, the spirit spring was completely depleted and with it, the possible fortune of the kingdom was also lost. If the spirit spring would have become a spirit stone mine, the kingdom would have definitely sensed it and would have become incredibly rich and powerful with its support. They would have been able to create n right generations of cultivators with it, and their status would have skyrocketed. But alas, fate was not in their favor and instead befitted the lost immortal. This was his second big fortune after having multitudes of misfortunes. Now with his newfound strength, the old man and the lost immortal began their journey back to the surface. They broke through rock after rock, shattered one boulder after the other, and eventually reached a new tunnel. But it was here that the fortune of the lost immortal came to an end, as they were discovered by a search party. Chapter 273 Learning from His Resolve Arthur closed the wooden slip after he realized that he had been reading it for a long time and it was already the time for him to leave the sleep's cape. 
but it seemed like his quest for information about the nameless technique of the lost immortal was unsuccessful. Although it was not completely fruitless, rather he had still learned a few new things, the biggest of which was none other than the poor talent of the lost immortal and his perseverance. Arthur could not imagine how a man who had lived through such despair and misfortune could have a firm resolve like that. Sigh. And here I am getting impatient about not progressing fast enough. Arthur muttered to himself. Arthur wanted to read further and was curious about what happened next but the time restraints were telling him otherwise. He had established a routine that he was flowing with discipline and he did not want to break it. Ever since he got into the routine, his cultivation was progressing steadily. Arthur then thought back the minds that the lost immortal was trapped in and finally came to the topic of the spirit spring. He wondered if there were any of those in this region. He had already seen caves and knew that there were plenty of them in the northern lands. Arthur wondered what kind of benefits he would obtain if he obtained a spirit spring like that. Senior, the memoir mentioned that the lost immortal talent was low and thus his progress was slow. But if it were someone else that came upon the spirit spring and used it, how much would they gain? Arthur questioned. Shukong the stanzas who had been accompanying Arthur had also been reading the memoirs along with him, or rather had been reading it from Arthur's mind. He too was getting interested in the lost immortal story and could sense a strange desire for which he could not find a reason. Hmm, considering the size of the spirit spiring that was described in the memoir, if a cultivator with an average talent were to absorb it, they would directly be able to reach the core condensation realm from the very bottom. As long as they were at the eighth stage of the body tempering realm, they would be able to absorb the spirit chi in the water even without needing to sense it. Once they started it, they would be able to absorb the entirety of the spirit chi within three days and break through to the early stage of the core condensation realm. The main obstacle that usually restricts cultivators, which is the refinement of liquid spirit chi, is easily solved with the help of the spirit spring as it already has dissolved spirit chi in the water. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur was astounded by Senior Shukong the stanzas' words and wondered if he would have the luck of finding a spirit spring like that, or perhaps even a spirit stone mine. The spirit spring should be present in this region, actually, Shukong the stanzas said. Oh, really, Senior? Arthur asked with excitement. Yes, the northern forest has all the conditions that satisfy the creation of a spirit spring. Though the main problem that stands is, the spirit spring is found either in caves or deep underground. Even if we know with a 100% guarantee that there is a spirit spring in the region, you would still not be able to find it. Not to mention, a spirit spring is easily hidden because of rocks and other things. Unlike a spirit stone mine which would attract everyone's attention, the chi signature of a spirit spring is also very faint, and finding one would be no less of a grueling task than finding a needle in a haystack. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur was a bit disappointed after hearing his words, but realized that he was obsessing over something that did not even exist right now. Hugh. Arthur took a deep breath and reorganized his thoughts, which were gating a bit haywire. I should just focus on my aim. If the lost immortal can do it in the worst of conditions, then I can definitely do it in conditions that are a hundred times as better than his. Arthur thought with determination. FNDD é UPTS on N, OV, I, L, in, ponto, com. He stored the wooden slip away and disappeared from the sleep's cape, appearing in the real world. There he found little shrubby sleeping beside him, snuggled into him. Arthur gently stroked its head as he heard the gentle purrs. It was strange. The purrs seemed to be calming his heart and when he sensed the connection Arthur discovered that it had become twice as strong as before. This is good. The dual circle ascension fruits seemed to be still having their effects on little shrubby. Arthur muttered. He sensed the cultivation base of Little Shrubby and found out that it was already a quarter of the way through the mid-stage of the Chi refining realm, just like that. Seeing that the beast did not seem to awaken still, Arthur decided to begin his own routine. Back to it then, Arthur said as he took out the meat before eating it and then assimilating the vital energy. He then withdrew the box that contained the basic Chi pills and popped one in his mouth. Chance started coming out of Arthur's mouth, and he was thus lost in his cultivation. While Arthur was engrossed in cultivation, the mayor of the Wu Lim city, Wu Sun was pacing in his office. Looking at his face, one could tell that he was troubled about something and could not calm down. He stayed like this for nearly an hour, after which he suddenly stopped. He withdrew a communication jade slip from his belt and held it in his hand for a few seconds. Ah ha 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 ha! A peal of laughter came out of his lips as his mood instantly lifted. Zhou Di, your end is coming closer and closer. 
Soon your entire domain shall pay for what your clan did. Chapter 274, three months later. Time passed by and unknowingly Arthur turned 16. He had not paid attention to his birthday and did not bother celebrating it after his parents died. Thus did not really remember it well. Still, it was not all for vain as Arthur was at a big turning point in his cultivation. If one were to look inside his Dantion, they would see that there was a shimmering lake within it. Faint wisps of spirit chi floated above it as the shimmering lake water, which was none other than liquid spirit chi rippled. Another drop of liquid spirit chi had just been added to it. Arthur opened his eyes as he reached this juncture. He knew he needed to take a pause as the next step was crucial, and he did not want to make a mistake. Phew. Arthur let out a breath as he stretched his body. He had been cultivating for the past three days straight, thus needed to relax for a bit. It had been three months since he had eaten the dual circle ascension fruits and his progress had been raider good. With his strength and resolve, Arthur was able to greatly increase his pace of refining spirit chi and was at the very cusp of reaching the next stage. He looked at the empty boxes of basic chi pills that were lying to the side and side. He had depleted all of them about two weeks ago, which was earlier than he had accepted. Still, this meant that his own speed of cultivation had greatly increased. When he finished the last basic chi pill, he had used the third and final toxin cleansing pill to clear all the pill toxins that he had accumulated. The day after he did that, his speed had increased again. His progress with the nameless technique of the lost immortal also seemed to have progressed by a minute amount, as he could sense the hunger that he used to have decreased, although his overall appetite was still massive. Even if the hunger was no longer as painful as before, Arthur still ate a massive amount of beast meat. And along with him, little shrubby progressed as well. The beast had already reached the end of the mid-stage of the chi refining realm and would break through to the late stage as soon as it was able to refine its first drop of liquid spirit chi. Arthur had asked Senior Shukong the stanzas if he could help little shrubby with it, but was advised to let the beast progress on its own. Every beast comprehended its own method of progression, thus it was better to let it figure out how to do it on its own. Little Shrubby also did not mind it, and all Arthur could feel from its thoughts was happiness. This not only helped his mood, but actually allowed him to better focus on his own cultivation. Another thing Arthur had greatly progressed in was his body-tempering realm cultivation. It was also at the very edge of breaking through, and Arthur knew that he would be breaking through to the next stage at any moment. All he needed was a little push. The vital energy was already saturated within his bones and was now starting to penetrate into his marrows. Once it fully penetrated through, he would enter the thirteenth and final stage of the body-tempering realm. Arthur silently meditate for a while before taking out a large amount of beast meat that he had prepared beforehand. Today he was determined to reach the thirteenth stage of the body-tempering realm and was thus going to eat till he was at his wit's end. His appetite had already reached a point where even if he didn't feel hungry anymore, he could still keep on eating. Now's the time. Arthur state before starting to stuff his belly with the meat. He kept on eating and did not mind the mess that happened as it soon disappeared on its own. About two months back he had received the cleaning formation from Jing Wei, which he had placed in the house. Because of that, his routine had become even more efficient and he did not have to spend time cleaning his room. Arthur had also inquired about the damaged spatial storage ring from Jing Wei and wondered how far he was in fixing it. He had received the answer that while Jing Wei had been able to decipher a lot of techniques and skills that were used to refine the spirit tool, it would still take him a while to fix it. A big obstacle that was hampering this was actually the lack of a special material. This material was none other than a source of spatial attribute chi. Any material that contained spatial attribute chi was used to make a spatial storage tool. Arthur had asked Senior Shukong the stanzas if it would be possible to use some of the spatial energy from the ring, but was told that it wasn't exactly the thing that Jing Wei was seeking. The spatial energy within the ring and the spatial attribute chi while similar were different. The explanation that Arthur got from Senior Shukong the stanzas was that the spatial energy within the ring was a much higher quality form of chi. He told him that an energy like this was currently beyond the scope of his control. Thus Arthur could not use it. At least not for the time being. Thus having no option left, Arthur could only let it go and let Jing Wei find the materials on his own. Apparently, Jing Ming Shang was going to deliver the materials as soon as he could. Thus Jing Wei told him not to worry. In fact, Jing Wei seemed to be even more anxious than Arthur and wanted to fix the ring more than anyone. Thirty minutes passed like this, and Arthur had finally finished all the meat that he had prepared. Within these thirty minutes, he had eaten an entirety of five mid-stage qi refining beasts. 
The wisps of vital energy within his stomach were seething, as if unable to endure. Arthur sat down cross-legged and started chanting the Calming Heart Sutra, assimilating all the vital energy wisps. Chapter 275 Close to Death A serene silence was spread around in the room, but slowly a faint sound was appearing. This sound was none other than that of heartbeats and was increasing bit by bit every minute. Arthur was silently assimilating the vital energy from the meat that he had eaten and was assaulting the next stage of the body-tempering realm. He was slowly eroding the barrier which prevented him from entering the next stage with each wisp of vital energy that he assimilated. The vital energy would be absorbed into his body from the stomach and then assimilated into the tissues. As Arthur's skin and muscles were already saturated, the only place left was his bones and marrows. His bones were also on the verge of being completely saturated and the vital energy was slowly penetrating into the marrows. Arthur's heartbeats kept on getting louder and louder until eventually, they resounded in the room. Pop. Then, an almost audible pop was heard and a massive wave of vital energy was released from his body. Arthur started trembling as the barrier which was acting like a dam was broken through and the vital energy rushed in like an unyielding river. But the moment the vital energy entered Arthur S. Marrows, a sharp pain assaulted his senses. He felt as if boiling water was being poured into his bones and scalding them. Arthur gritted his teeth and held on. He had already learned that the thirteenth stage of the body-tempering realm was different than the previous stages, and the process would be much more harsh. The vital energy kept on pouring and seemed as if it was coming out of nothing. It seemed as if something strange was happening, as Arthur should have broken through at this point. The vital energy. It is much more than I expected. Is this the effect of the nameless technique of the lost immortal? Shukong the stanzas muttered in surprise. Shukong the stanzas kept on observing, and by now thirty minutes had passed since Arthur started the process. Shukong the stanzas was now getting anxious, as he could not think of a reason behind this. If this was any other cultivator they would have broken through the moment the barrier was broken, but why is it not stopping? The vital energy should stabilize. If this keeps on going on he will kill himself. Shukong the stanzas thought to himself. Another thirty minutes passed and by this point Shukong the stanzas wanted to interfere. He tried to communicate with Arthur, asking him to stop, but his words fell on deaf ears. Arthur had subconsciously entered a state of trance to stop the pain from affecting him. But inadvertently this also meant that he had sealed his other sense too. No matter how much Shukong the stanzas tried to communicate with Arthur, there was no response. Do I really need to take that step? Shukong the stanzas thought with apprehension. Groan. A pain-filled grunt escaped Arthur's mouth as he started bleeding from his seven apertures. His eyelids trembled as streaks of blood escaped from its corners. His ears too had trickles of blood which then dripped down onto the bed, staining the sheets red. The bleeding from his nose and mouth was the most intense. Though, the blood flowed down and dyed his pristine white robes a deep shade of red. Observing the scene in front of Shukong the stanzas was barely able to hold on. He flew over to the lateral altar that was in the center of the mysterious ring and stopped at the barrier at its edge. Will you not interfere this time? Shukong the stanzas spoke. I know you can hear me. Shukong the stanzas did not know what he was doing. He didn't know for sure whether his words were true or not, but he still wanted to give it a try. He had his guesses after seeing all the techniques and skills that Arthur received. All of them seemed to complement Arthur somehow and were filling in for the flaws that were presented. You've been modifying his physique and then you also gave him skills which would help him get attuned to manipulating space even with his low talent. An artifact of your level is definitely sentient. Answer me. This time Shukong the stanzas shouted. But even then there was no response. The altar that was dimly glowing stayed the same. In the real world, Arthur's heartbeats that were once strong and loud were getting fainter and fainter. His skin was also getting paler by the minute as more blood was shed. Are you really going to let him die? Shukong the stanzas said with anger. Shukong the stanzas gritted his teeth as he still received no answer. He took one last look at Arthur before making up his mind. Fine. I'll do it myself. Shukong the stanzas declared. And with these words, the spatial energy within the ring started seething. The silvery gray stakes that flickered in the sky started revolving around Shukong the stanzas as small palm-sized body. His ten golden yellow eyes glowed with power as a massive surge of chi escaped the ring. But just as Shukong the stanzas was about to take the next step, he froze. 
The obscure pattern that was created because of the wooden slip appeared on Arthur S. abdomen. A net composed of obscure characters formed around Arthur S. stomach. With each passing second, the net was increasing in density and more and more threads were being added to it. Each thread was formed by linking multiple characters and they interwove. Suddenly the net started shrinking and covered the entirety of Arthur S. stomach. Soon the net merged in its entirety with the stomach changing its color to a graying blue, making it seem unnatural. But this did not stop here, and soon more characters appeared and started linking up, forming new threads. These threads interwove again and formed another layer of net above the stomach. But unlike the previous one, this one was not as dense and the holes in it were rather large. A blue glow appeared from Arthur's stomach as an extremely intense wave of energy spread. Chapter 276 Xiantian Physique The energy that was currently emanating could not be identified and was different from spirit chi and vital energy. Its source seemed to be the numerous characters that made up the net that was covering the stomach. With each passing second, the energy seemed to be increasing and with it, the net was slowly fading away. As the energy spread around in Arthur S. body, it healed every injury that was within it. The injuries that were caused by the raging vital energy were repaired and the hidden sequelae were also being healed. The bleeding apertures of Arthur stopped, and the blood that was staining his face also seemingly dried up. The blood dried and flaked away before turning to a fine powder in the air. Arthur's expression eased up, and the pain dispersed. Inside his bones, the vital energy that was pouring in like a raging river smoothed up and the barrier had completely disappeared. Now it was as if the bones and marrows were linked through the reservoir of vital energy. All the layers of Arthur S. body that contained the vital energy were merging. The vital energy within his skin, muscles, blood, bones and finally the marrows joined and became a single complete entity. Also due to the massive amount of vital energy that had appeared, Arthur had directly shot to the peak of the thirteenth stage of the body tempering realm. Normally the vital energy should have only been enough to break the barrier to the thirteenth stage and would have started tempering his marrows. But now the vital energy had completely soaked his marrows in it and was fully saturated. Arthur had gained an entire stage's worth of vital energy in one go. This energy, what is it? Shukong the stanzas questioned, feeling confused. He looked back at the ethereal altar, having calmed down with no chi fluctuations around him. Did you already know this was going to happen? Or perhaps, you planned this from the very start. Xukong the stanzas questioned the nearly non-existent altar. But as expected, he received no response and sighed with helplessness. At least he's gotten through this ordeal. I just hope there are no more surprises. Xukong the stanzas thought, feeling a bit relieved. Back in the real world, Arthur S. heartbeats had returned to normal and his breathing was rhythmic as well. He slowly opened his eyes as they faintly glimmered. The graying blue net that was composed of the obscure characters had completely faded away by now and Arthur's stomach had returned to its normal look. Cough, 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 cough. Arthur's face turned a bit red as he started coughing. At first, the coughs were low, but they soon increased in loudness and became like the hacking coughs that a chronic smoker would have. Splat. Then at the end with a loud cough, Arthur spat out a large glob of thick liquid that looked like black tar. It fell to the ground, but upon touching the ground it did not spread around but rather clumped together like a blob of mercury would look like. FNDD é UPTS on N, OV, I, L, I, ponto, com. Arthur controlled his breaths and looked at the black tar-like blob with apprehension. Unlike the previous times where he had expelled impurities, this time they did not seem corrosive. Although they definitely did look quite bad. Phew. Arthur let out a breath of relief as he checked his body. The vital energy within his body had reached an equilibrium and was circulating within itself. It would move from the uppermost layer that was the skin to the bottommost layer that was the marrows and then go back up. This cycle continued endlessly, and no loss of vital energy could be perceived. His vital energy had become even more hidden than before and from the outside, it looked like he was a common teenage boy that had no body tempering realm cultivation. Sigh. Arthur took a look at his soiled clothes and sheets before letting out a sigh. Seems like I escaped by the very edge of my life. Arthur muttered to himself. That's very accurate. Shukong the stanzas suddenly spoke. Ha, huh, ah, yes. This break though was rather dangerous. Seems like I was still a bit unprepared. Arthur agreed. No, it is not that. Shukong the stanzas said as he briefly thought and then continued. 
Rather, no amount of preparation would have helped you with what you just went through. This was no common breakthrough. I have no doubt the nameless technique of the lost immortal was the cause behind it. Arthur was a bit surprised and did not say anything. Instead, he used his spirit sense and closely observed his body. His dantian was the same as before and there was no change, but the other parts of his body that had undergone tempering had become strengthened. He observed his marrows and could feel a strange activity within them. He could feel as if something was growing in them. Arthur continued observing the activity and after a little while felt the growing matter move into his blood. Then in the blood, the matter started circulating. It moved to all parts of his body and changed to resemble that part of his body. Arthur finally identified this matter as some kind of cells. These cells that changed to become part of his different organs and tissues were much more active than his pre-existing cells. With the growth of these cells, Arthur could feel his strength increasing bit by bit in tiny fractions. Unlike the previous stages of the body tempering realm, where Arthur had directly gained a large increase in his strength, this time the growth seemed to be slow and eventual. What is happening, senior? Arthur questioned knowing that Shukong the stanzas had most likely seen his memories. Your body is replacing its cells. Usually, this should have happened much later, but since you have directly reached the peak of the thirteenth stage of the body tempering realm, your marrows are making new cells that are improving the rest of your tissues and organs. Eventually, they will replace all the cells of your body and you would have practically obtained a new physique, the Sientian physique. Xu Kong the stanzas answered. Chapter 277 The Different Physiques Arthur was a bit confused about this Sientian physique that Senior Xu Kong the stanzas was talking about. While he knew about physiques and had learned about them from Senior Xu Kong the stanzas, he still did not know how he would be getting it. He thought that physiques were something that people were born with and were not something that could be gained. Besides, the only other physiques he knew of right now were the Broken Fate physique, that belonged to the Lost Immortal and the Garden of Karma, which could be considered as a physique as well. Senior. But didn't you tell me that physiques are something that a person is born with? Arthur questioned. Indeed, that's true. But, that's just one of the categories of the physiques. In total, there are three categories. Innate physiques that a person is born with, acquired physiques that a cultivator can gain after fulfilling certain conditions, and then finally the unique physiques which contain the ones which cannot be put into the other two categories. The broken fate physique that belonged to the lost immortal is a type of an innate physique. The Sientian physique is a type of an acquired physique that can be gained by a cultivator once they reach the peak of the body tempering realm and cross all 13 stages of it. The final type, which is the unique physique, is harder to define. But the best example of it is none other than the Garden of Karma. We do not exactly know if it is even a physique or something else, thus it is placed into the unique physique category. Of course, these categories are not fully fixed and certain exceptions can arise. For example, certain acquired physiques can also be naturally present in a person upon their birth, thus becoming an innate physique. But on the other hand, none of the innate physiques can be acquired. Shukong the stanzas explained. After listening to senior Shukong the stanzas' explanation, Arthur felt enlightened and his doubts cleared up. But soon he wondered about the characteristics of this Sientian physique. Senior. What is the benefit of the Sientian physique? Arthur further questioned. Sientian physique is also known as the congenital physique. It returns your body to the original state that it was born in. You see, after a human is born, they start accumulating impurities within their bodies. These impurities would have no impact on common humans, and they would be able to live out the rest of their lives with relative ease. But for cultivators, this is entirely different. These very impurities become a hidden obstacle in the progress of their cultivation. While these impurities may seem similar to the ones you acquire from the pills or even food, they are vastly different. Because these impurities are accumulated over a long time, they change the very structures of the cells of a cultivator, making them weaker. Most cultivators do not have the Sientian physique and thus compensate for these hurdles by simply increasing the resources that they use and also the effort. Even the requirement to enter the Qi refining realm that is the eighth stage of the body tempering realm is because of this reason. The eighth stage of the body tempering realm is just enough so that a person can handle spirit Qi in their bodies. But the higher they go in their body tempering realm cultivation, the better their cultivation becomes. This is another reason why better cultivation techniques have a higher requirement for cultivators to practice them. Still, the Sientian physique is not something that just anyone that reaches the 13th stage of the body tempering realm can acquire. There is also a certain aspect of luck involved in this. There are chances that a cultivator, even after putting great effort and reaching the peak of the body tempering realm, 
may not begin their transition to acquiring a Xientian physique and may simply be stuck with their normal body. Shukong the stanzas explained in depth. Arthur paid full attention to Senior Shukong the stanzas s explanation and ensured that he comprehended it properly. I understand now, Senior. Then this means that my aptitude had increased once more and my pace of cultivation should increase as well. Arthur said, feeling motivated. Yes, you are correct. Shukong the stanzas affirmed. Arthur stood up, wanting to test out his newly increased cultivation. But upon standing up, his attention went to the glob of black tar that was now lying in the corner of the wall. In all this time, it had somehow rolled off to the side. Senior, what exactly is this? I mean, I can tell that they are the impurities expelled by my body, but they seem different. They are not corrosive, Arthur asked with furrowed brows. To be honest, I can't exactly tell what it is either, except for that it is the impurities. It is not the normal impurities as they would have been rather liquid and would not have stayed in a globule like that. And it does not seem to be the usual impurities from your body either, as those were corrosive. Shukong the stanzas replied. I see. Arthur said, before bending down to get closer to the glob of black tar. He then removed a small vial from his ring and pushed the globule into that vial. He then closed the vial and stored it back into the ring. The vial that he had used was none other than the vial that was used to store the toxin cleansing pills. Arthur didn't know why he was doing this, but he just felt like this was better than simply throwing the glob away. Shukong the stanzas meanwhile watched Arthur do this, but did not question his reason behind it. He had already seen Arthur do far more weird and some outright stupid things before. Thus this was nothing out of the ordinary for him. At this point, he just attributed everything strange Arthur did to his unnatural curiosity about things. Shukong the stanzas didn't know whether this was a curse or a boon. But at least until now, everything had been fine. Chapter 278 Assessing His Situation Arthur was now at a point where he had to review his position according to the goals that he had set up. He had satisfied the first minimum condition that was required for him to assimilate the bloodline of the Great Slumber Bear. Since he was at the thirteenth stage of the body tempering realm, that too at the very peak, Arthur should relatively not have many problems in assimilating it. But there were still two requirements that were needed for him to survive the process. He still needed to make sure that the nameless technique of the lost immortal was working and that he had understood its effects. His current close call with death had only made him more worried as the nameless technique seemed to have a hand in that. But it was also that very technique that had allowed him to directly reach the peak of the body tempering realm in one go. Then came another requirement that could change depending on the condition of the Great Slumber Beast. If the Great Slumber Beast was sufficiently weakened, Arthur would be able to kill it even with his current strength. But if it was not so then, he would have to reach the peak stage of the Qi refining realm to be on the safe side. Hmm. I'm already close to the breakthrough. Just a few more drops and I'll directly break through. My foundation is already stable and Senior Shukong the stanzas had already said the transition between late stage and peak stage of the Qi refining realm is relatively milder, similar to the early and mid stages. Arthur thought to himself. Shukong the stanzas could already guess what was going through Arthur's mind and was a bit happy that he was able to handle himself after nearly escaping death. But he was still doubtful about the ring. He didn't know if it was deliberate on its part or perhaps it would have really let Arthur die. Whatever it was, Shukong the stanzas knew that Arthur needed to get stronger quickly. The duty that comes with being the world's ordained is not easy, and it needs to be fulfilled satisfactorily. Are you going to attempt to break through right now? Shukong the stanzas questioned. No, at least not now. I want to check up on a few things first. Seeing that I had that close call, I want to review my situation for a bit. Arthur answered after thinking for a bit. Shukong the stanzas hummed in agreement as he could see the wisdom in Arthur's decision. It was better to be cautious than to jump in face first into a situation. Arthur meanwhile looked around for Little Shrubby as he could not see him in the bedroom. He sensed his connection with Little Shrubby and found himself to be in the kitchen. Upon walking into the kitchen, Arthur spotted the small beast attempting to cook. Again, Little Shrubby had apparently not given up on cooking, even after getting cooked food to eat. Especially after its intelligence started increasing, it had become even more determined to cook. Arthur found it strange, but just attributed it to the beast's uniqueness. Arthur saw it turning the skewer of meat around on the stove, although the meat was badly charred. In order to make it easier for the beast to cook, Arthur had made a few modifications. He had lowered the stove and made it broader so that little shrubby could stand at the side and control the food. 
While for fire, Arthur had simply set up a long burning lamp which was always lit and he would simply add oil to it whenever it started to go out. The lamp had enough fuel that it could burn for about two days straight, and since the oil used was none other than the melted fat from beast meat, it was even easier for Arthur to do it. Vischdenvelbin.cm for new updates. Little Shrubby merely needed to take a stick and light it using the lamp before putting it into the base of the stove to ignite it. As for the wood for the stove, there were plenty of wood logs that were placed in the storage. Little Shrubby had no problem lifting them as his strength was quite enough, being at the mid-stage of the chi refining realm. Arthur had set this up about a month ago and Little Shrubby would attempt to cook there every day with only failures to present. All of the meat that it cooked was charred and burned. But thankfully the beast did not mind this and ate the meat that he burned. Little Shrubby saw Arthur and stopped what it was doing before jumping down from the platform and nuzzling against Arthur's legs. Yeah. Little Shrubby purred in pleasure as he rubbed his face again and again upon Arthur. He had not been able to interact with Arthur that much these few weeks because of him being engrossed in cultivation fully. He could also sense the increase in his master's strength from the connection that they had. Little Shrubby was perhaps the only one that would be able to tell the true cultivation level of Arthur because of their connection. All others would simply think of Arthur as having no body-tempering realm cultivation, while his chi refining realm cultivation would also be a bit of a mystery because of his ability to use the spirit sense. Though this was soon about to change as Arthur would be entering the peak stage of the chi refining realm soon, and thus this advantage would disappear. But the others would still not expect for Arthur's spirit sense range to be as long as 80 meters, as most peak stage chi refining realm cultivators only had a max range of 10 meters. Arthur now took out the jade slip that was given to him by Jing Wei and contacted him. He held it in his hand for about a minute before opening his eyes. Perfect. Chapter 279 crazed Jing Wei. Oh, good news, I presume. Xu Kong the stanzas asked curiously. Arthur nodded in response before speaking. Indeed, senior. Jing Ming Shang delivered the material required to repair the ring about two weeks ago, and he has just been finishing up. Old man Jing Wei told me that he was just about to contact me when I did it first instead. Arthur replied. That's good, another thing off your mind, Xu Kong the stanzas said. Arthur hummed in agreement before leaving the room and heading out to the streets. He had already gotten used to leaving Little Shrubby at home and did not worry much. No matter where he was in the town, Arthur could sense him through his connection, especially after it has strengthened even more. And it was not like Little Shrubby would get into trouble either. There were not really many people that were as strong as it was, and the ones that were actually stronger than him would not be able to catch him anyway. Even now Arthur was unable to match the speed of the small beast. Arthur made his way to the desolate alley where the Jing Wei's Emporium was located in and triggered the formation to make it reveal itself. He then walked into the shop only to find it empty. Hmm. <clears throat> Looks like Duan Ku is in the courtyard. Arthur muttered to himself. He took a look around and found everything to be the same except for a few things that had been added. These things were sacks and large packages that were yet to be opened. The packages were wrapped in canvas and the contents of it could not be perceived from outside. Arthur curiously scanned it with his spirit sense and got the shock of his life. There were about three large packages kept in the room, and all of them looked common. But its contents were anything but simple. Gold. So much gold. Arthur uttered with shock. All of the packages were filled with solid bars of gold which had no stamp or engravings on them. Usually, the gold issued by the kingdom or any other organization had some markings on it which proved its authenticity. But there did not seem to be anything on these gold bars, and they actually seemed to be a bit crudely made as they had dense and unequal edges. Why is this gold lying here? Arthur wondered. He knew that there was no chance of the gold ever getting stolen, but it still seemed unusual for it to be kept here. Just as he was thinking about that, the door behind the shop opened, and out walked Duan Ku. Oh, you're here just in time. Grandfather is nearly done, and now we have the final ingredient as well. Duan Ku said. Let's get to him then, Arthur said in an impatient tone. Wait, we have to get the final material, Duan Ku said before walking to the three large packages. Arthur was a bit surprised at first before understanding what she meant. Vischdenvelbin.cm for new updates. That gold is the final material? Arthur asked, feeling a bit overwhelmed. You'll see. Grandfather can explain it better, he's the expert here. I didn't inherit grandfather's skill. I specialize in investigational skills. Duan Ku replied in a nonchalant tone. 
Arthur nodded before following behind Duan Ku into the back room, where she blew out the lamp making the scenery shift. They were now standing in the courtyard, but its look had drastically changed. WH what? What happened here? Why is there smoke everywhere? And is that a tear in the barrier? Arthur shot a string of questions. In front of Arthur, the courtyard had changed by a lot. The grass in the ground had become brown and wilted. There was smoke everywhere and a strange smell of charcoal and metal was spread in the air. There was even a small tear present in the barrier that protected the myriad armament canopy abode. Sigh. Duan Ku let out a sigh as she rubbed her head in frustration and fatigue. This is what happens when Grandfather gets too obsessed with his work. He hasn't had a challenge like this in years. Thus he is giving it his all. Duan Keskivi ko explained. Ha ha ha. Shukong the stanzas laughed in Arthur's mind. As I expected, that man is a league above others. Ha! Arthur felt confused after hearing Senior Shukong the stanzas as sudden laughter. Don't mind me. You'll see it yourself. Shukong the stanzas said, mysteriously. Arthur could only hold his curiosity in for the time being and followed behind Duan Ku to the mansion. Unlike the outside though, the mansion was the same as before and impeccably clean. Arthur and Duan Ku went downstairs into the workshop he had visited before. The door of the workshop was already open when they got there and thus Arthur could get a direct sight of what was happening inside. The entire room was covered in a black layer, which seemed like soot. There were formations glowing everywhere, and Arthur could even see a stream of sparks flowing in the air. Then, at the end of the room was the forge he had seen before. The last time Arthur had seen it, the forge looked abandoned and cold. But right now it was glowing with heat and an entire formation array was circling around it. The stream of sparks would enter into its top end from time to time, and the fire would rage at the bottom part. There were scraps of metal fallen all around the room, and when Arthur got closer, he could see that all of them were emitting faint waves of spirit chi. Looking at the shapes of the scraps, Arthur could tell that they had been forcefully damaged, and they looked quite similar to the fragments of his weapons from back when he sparred with Duan Ku. Then, at the side of the forge was none other than old man Jing Wei himself. His clothes burned in places with his hair and beard all messy, covered in the same soot as the rest of the room. But the thing that garnered the attention most was his face. Jing Wei had a crazed expression on his face that looked no less than insane. Ah ha 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 ha! Chapter 280 Refining the Gold Arthur almost recoiled in shock after seeing the current look of Jing Wei. He had doubts whether he was really seeing this or if he was hallucinating. Jing Wei finally noticed the two of them enter the workshop and turned to look at them. Excellent time. I finally got the right methodology. This is going so well. Jing Wei uttered with joy. Arthur felt creeped out by his current behaviors and felt like he needed to stay a meter away from the old man. Duan Ku was unfazed by this though and walked forward with ease. She came to stand at a short distance from the forge and then placed the three packages there. She had stored them into her spatial treasure and was now simply depositing them here. Arthur felt a bit strange as to why she had stepped away from the forge instead of directly giving it to Jing Wei. But then he soon witnessed the reason. After placing the packages down, Duan Ku went four meters back and came to stand beside Arthur. Then a barrier appeared just ahead of the packages and expanded to engulf them. Ignite! Jing Wei shouted. Crackle US tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. Whoosh! A stream of fire came out from the furnace looking like a flowing river. The fire was extremely hot and Arthur could feel its heat from his position. The temperature of the workshop had just increased by at least 10 degrees. If it were any other commoner here, they would have already gotten burns on their skin and they would have fainted due to the heat. When Arthur originally entered the workshop, it was already hot being at around 50 degrees, but now it had reached 60 degrees where a normal human would not survive for long. Although Arthur felt the heat, it was not painful for him and it seemed the same as normal for him. He did not feel as if his body was under any kind of distress. The vital energy circulating within him was protecting him and isolated him from the heat in a unique manner. Arthur observed the stream of fire touch the packages, instantly burning away the canvas coverings and revealing the gold hidden beneath. The crudely manufactured gold glutted under the orange flames and looked dazzling to the eyes. Its deformed look did not hamper its appeal, but rather highlighted its beauty. Engulf! Jing Wei shouted next as he gestured with his hands. His left hand was gesturing towards the gold and the stream of fire, while his right hand was towards the forge. The stream of fire surrounded the bars of gold, 
which had now melted slightly to become one large block of gold instead. The fire lifted the gold block and pulled them towards each other. The three blocks of gold collided with each other and became softer and softer. Merge, commanded Jing Wei. The block of gold melted together and formed a sphere of liquid gold, which glowed with a golden shine. Arthur was watching the entire process with rapt attention and did not miss even one second of it. He even slowed the blinking of his eyes so that there were lesser chances of missing something that was quick. Refine! Jing Wei shouted with fervor, and along with his shout, his hands started to move in different styles. They formed multiple gestures, the meaning of which Arthur could not perceive. The golden ball of molten gold was quite large and had the diameter of almost a meter. If such a large amount of gold was ever revealed outside, there would definitely be a myriad of greedy eyes gazing at it, if not outright fighting for it. The gold ball started turning and spun around. The spinning got faster and faster until a change occurred. The gold ball started reducing in size and the heat emanating from the fire increased. More! 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 Jing Wei kept on urging. About five minutes passed at the end of which the gold ball was spinning at a blinding speed and a sharp whirring sound could be heard. The gold ball had now reduced to the size of a football and was still floating in the air while being surrounded by flames. Not enough! I need more! Jing Wei declared before gesturing with both his hands. Tuan Keskivico. Restrict the forge. He ordered. A serious expression appeared on Duan Ka's face as she flourished her hands and took control over the forge. The formations that were previously glowing around Jing Wei were now surrounding her. But unlike Jing Wei, she seemed to be greatly troubled by this. Beads of sweat rolled down her forehead and her breathing became heavier. Do you need help? Arthur asked with concern. No. You just keep on looking and don't disturb us. Duan Ka spoke in a curt tone which immediately made Arthur shut up. Duan Ka then gritted her teeth and focused on the task at her hands. It was evident that controlling the forge was much harder for her than it was for Jing Wei, who seemed to have been doing it effortlessly. Arthur tenured back to look at Jing Wei and saw the football-sized mass of gold float to in front of Jing Wei. The old man then extended his rough and calloused hands before placing them around the gold ball. They were not touching the ball and were simply hovering around it. Condense for me. Jing Wei ordered in an authoritative tone and making the gold ball spin even faster. Jing Wei started moving his hands closer, which now made the gold ball shrink even further, until it reached the size of a cantaloupe. Ha! The old man yelled with vigor as he forced his hands together, this time touching the gold ball. Sizzle. A sizzling sound was heard as Jing Wei's hands made contact with the fiery hot gold ball. But strangely enough, no burning smell appeared from it as one would expect. Shing. Suddenly a green glow burst from the gold ball. Chapter 281 Void Star Metal? WH what is that? Arthur muttered in amazement. The entire process that had happened in front of him was nothing short of world changing to him. This was the first time he was witnessing another aspect of cultivators which was the refinement of materials. The process was obviously very complex, and Arthur could not even begin to imagine how much effort it would take to learn it all. It was obvious that the experience the old man had was nothing short of world-shaking. If Arthur knew that what he was witnessing was desired by countless other cultivators, he would be astounded. There would be tens of thousands of cultivators who would start a war just to have the chance of witnessing this and learning from this. Old man Jing Wei had comprehended a refinement technique that had never existed in this world ever before. If the knowledge of this ever went out, the sex and the empire would pay no small price to acquire it. But to Arthur, it was his first experience and thus could not grasp the true value of it. That Arthur is a man who is perhaps one of the smartest refiners in this world. What he just accomplished would take even immortal tool refiners decades to learn. Not only that, but he did it without any guidance by simply observing a broken spatial storage ring. Xu Kong the stanzas answered. Arthur was amazed at Senior Xu Kong the stanzas s words and knew how much it meant if the praise was coming from Senior Xu Kong the stanzas s mouth. He did not simply praise others that easily as he deemed them to be lower than him. Senior Xu Kong the stanzas had seen countless things in his life, and Arthur could not even imagine how old he was. Arthur had once asked Xu Kong the stanzas that very question, but the answer that he received was rather disappointing. Xu Kong the stanzas himself did not know how old he truly was. All he knew that a time arrived when he gained self-awareness and understood who he was. Before that, he was more of a mindless beast who simply lived to fulfill its instincts. 
Arthur continued looking at the gold ball, which now had a green light bursting from it. Refine! Jingwei shouted, with his entire body covered in sweat. By now Arthur could see the exhaustion on Jingwei's face. It was evident that he had exerted a lot in order to complete the refining process, and even now he was not stopping. Even Duan Ku, who was merely restricting the forge, was sweating profusely. In this all, perhaps Arthur was the only one who was comfortable watching the entire thing and was the least affected. Jing Wei let out another shout and started pressing down on the gold ball, making it shrink even more. The more it shrunk, the brighter the green light was getting. The stream of fire that was floating around the room also circled around Jing Wei, extending multiple small tendrils that touched the gold ball from the top and bottom while avoiding the old man's hands. The gold ball kept on shrinking and Jing Wei pressed his hands together and eventually, his two palms met. Blinding green light was leaking from the gaps between his fingers and palms, while the gold ball had shrunk to become the size of a small marble. Hugh. Jing Wei let out a breath of relief as he saw that this task had succeeded. He looked at Duan Ku without moving his hands and spoke. Return the control to me and activate the barrier. Do it at the right moment or you know what will happen. Jing Wei said before turning his focus back to the tiny gold ball in his hand. He slowly opened his hands and the gold ball was revealed, except it was not golden anymore. Instead it had turned a pale green in color that had tinges of yellow in it. The green light had also stopped emanating from the marble and was now contained within it. But when the marble was fully revealed it saturated to shake, and it looked like it was getting unstable. Now! Jing Wei shouted. Duan Ku passed her control of the forge to Jing Wei and erected a multi-layered barrier. There were about ten layers to it, with each subsequent one thicker than the first. Jing Wei freed one of his hands and extended it towards the forge, taking back control over it, while with his other empty hand he held onto the green marble. He gestured with his hand and brought forth flames that transformed into strings and floated around the marble. He let go of the marble and freed that hand, but before the marble could fall it was held onto by the strings of fire. Jing Wei gave Duan Ku and Arthur a look before taking a deep breath. He waved his empty hand and an object came flying out of the forge. The item was lit and flames were blazing off its surface. Looking at it closely, one could tell that it was a small anvil that was about the size of a palm. Oh? He actually found some impure void star metal? Shukong the stanzas suddenly spoke upon seeing the small flaming anvil. FNDD é UPTS ON N OV I L I N PONTO COM You know what that is, senior? Arthur questioned. Yes, indeed. That is one of the materials that contains spatial elemental chi and can be used to make spatial storage tools. Though void star metal is definitely an uncommon material. They can be found in the void surrounding the worlds and occasionally crash into the worlds along with meteorites. Xu Kong the stanzas answered. Arthur memorized the information in his mind as he kept on watching Jing Wei. The old man floated the small flaming anvil in front of him and then flipped his hand making the broken spatial storage ring appear in his palm. The spatial storage ring physically looked the same as before when Arthur had last seen it, but the fluctuations coming off it told him that something was different about it now. Chapter 282, The Repaired Ring What's changed with the ring? Hmm, seems like it is the stuff he did to it before we arrived. Arthur muttered to himself. Yes, that is exactly it. Fixing a spatial treasure like this is quite difficult if not impossible for most spirit tool refiners. To be honest, I was not fully sure whether he would be able to do it or not. Even if he was able to fix just a little bit, I would have been impressed. But he exceeded my expectations and has nearly completely fixed it. Of course, its capacity would definitely not be as much as it should originally have been. Shukong the stanzas explained. Arthur silently nodded in response as he then watched Jing Wei continue fixing the ring. A lot of things were happening all at once right now, and it would seem overwhelming to most people. The flaming anvil came to a stop in front of Jing Wei, and on top of it, he placed the ring. Then he controlled the green gold marble to float over the ring and let it fall onto it. Dang. As soon as the marble touched, the ring thought it made a loud sound. Although the marble was rather small in size, its weight certainly was not. There were at least a few tons of gold refined to make that marble, and even if most of it was lost in refinement, the small amount was still quite dense. Vistgenvelbin.cm for new updates. The green gold marble struck the ring, which then struck the flaming anvil which was made from void star metal. The three objects hummed in response and a faint cracking sound was heard. Crack. 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 
Arthur could see faint cracks forming on the ring now. What is he doing? Won't that destroy the ring? Arthur uttered with shock. That is exactly what he's doing. He's found a method to repair the ring without the materials which would have usually been needed. He's making do with what he has right now. Just watch and you will understand. Shukong the stanzas spoke. Arthur focused his attention onto the anvil and saw the fine cracks in the ring releasing something from them. He couldn't identify what it was at first, but soon sensed it. It seemed to like spirit chi but of a higher quality, although it also felt impure to him. The energy seemed like a corrupted form of a higher versions of spirit chi. Wait, could it be? Immortal chi, Arthur guessed. Arthur had already known that in order to break through to the higher realm after the immortal ascension realm, a cultivator had to refine the spirit chi into immortal chi. Thus Arthur guessed that it was that very immortal chi that was released from the ring. But if it's immortal chi then why does it seem corrupted and impure? Arthur muttered in confusion. Your guess is half correct. Shukong the stanzas suddenly spoke. Oh, what do you mean senior? Arthur questioned while Jing Wei controlling the flames to revolve around the anvil and the ring. While that is indeed a higher quality chi than spirit chi, it is not immortal chi. Rather, this is the impure spatial energy. The one that you've seen in the ring is perhaps the purest form you can find anywhere in this cosmos. The most common type you will find is the impure spatial energy like this. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur did not respond to this, as his attention was captured by the next step that Jing Wei was talking. He had now heated the green gold marble enough that it has started melting again. The glittering drops of the green gold dripped onto the ring and started coating it. Soon the ring was hidden under the green gold drops and Jing Wei took out a hammer. The hammer was octagonal in shape and seemed to have some characters engraved on its sides. Jing Wei grabbed it with his right hand and firmly grasped it. The grip of Jing Wei was so hard that his muscles tensed up ripping his sleeves apart exposing his bare arm which was now filled with tight muscles. Arthur could sense that although the muscles were not gained from body-tempering realm cultivation, the strength within them was no less. Jing Wei raised the hammer high and slammed it onto the ring, which had been coated with the green gold. Dang. The sound of metal hitting metal echoed in a room for a moment before Arthur suddenly felt spatial fluctuations. The anvil that was made up of void star metal had now cracked as well, along with leaking something from it. But unlike the ring, this energy was slate gray in color and was entering the places that had the cracks on the ring. While the energy entered the ring, it also took the green fold drops that were coating the ring with it. The amount of liquid green gold that was covering the ring started to reduce and soon disappeared completely having been absorbed by the ring. Still, Jing Wei did not stop there and raised his hammer again before slamming it back down. The blow this time was softer than before, but it was still enough to completely destroy the anvil that been made by the Void Star Metal. The chunks of Void Star Metal fell to the ground and turned to ashes because of the heat. The ring was now floating in Jing Wei's hand as he took fatigued breaths. Hu, 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 hu. Jing Wei let out a breath of relief as he saw the newly repaired ring floating in front of him. The ring didn't have any more cracks and seemed to have been fully fixed. But along with this, he could see the difference in the look of the ring. The cracks that were once preset on the ring had been filled by the green gold and the spatial fluctuations could also be felt coming from it. Success! Jing Wei yelled as he saw the precious artifact. Chapter 283 The Repaired Ring 2 Jing Wei himself had not expected that he would fully succeed and that too up to an extent like this. The techniques that he had devised were mostly guesswork and he had used incomplete theories that had been present in his clan's records for a while now. Jing Wei even had used something which he had thought was wrong and would have been laughed at if it was ever revealed to the world. Even he himself had laughed at the technique when it was theorized and had rejected the person who had made it. Seems like you were way ahead of me, Luor. I regret the day I let you go. If I ever got the chance to go back in time, I would rebel against the very heavens to save you. Jing Wei thought with a little sorrow. Jing Wei pushed his thoughts back as he focused on the treasure in front of him. He knew that this was the start of a new era of spirit tool refinement. The spatial storage ring in front of him was for sure the highest quality spatial storage treasure in the entire Great Zhou Empire. But this put him in a bit of a shock, as he knew that what he had made was still an inferior product. Jing Wei knew that even with all the skills he had used, the ring was barely at 5% of its full potential since he was still restricted by the materials. He had already tried many materials, but barely any of them were suitable and even less were available. Jing Wei held the ring in his hand and probed it with his spirit sense, 
wanting to get a true gauge of its capacity. Gasp. A. Thousand. Jingwei muttered. Duan Ku and Arthur had already come close by now and heard what Jingwei had said. Even if he had just muttered it, both of them had high enough cultivation to listen to. Teach slash e most up-to-date envels are published on n0 velbsh n dot co slash m. A thousand what? Arthur asked. Although Arthur did not know what Jingwei was getting at, Duan Ku knew exactly what he was talking about. Really, grandfather? A thousand meters? Duan Ku asked with apprehension. Yes. Take a look, Jingwei said as he handed the ring to her. Jingwei, meanwhile, was lost in his own thoughts as he pondered over the entire process of refining. He was learning from the mistakes he had made during the refinement as well as the new insights he had gained. Duan Ku held the ring and checked it with her own spirit sense and found it to be true as Jingwei had said. A size of more than a thousand cubic meters. Truly a masterpiece. Duan Ku muttered in amazement. Wait, the ring has a storage size of a thousand cubic meters? But mine! Just as he was about to continue that sentence, he held his tongue. Arthur remembered what he should and should not say. One of the biggest things being the truth of the ring. If the size of the ring Jingwei had repaired was just that much size, then his own ring was incomparable. The size of it was incomprehensible to even senior Shukong the stanzas. Duanka's hand was trembling slightly after having confirmed her grandfather's words. She looked at the ring with a longing for a bit before handing it to Arthur. Here, take it, Duanka said. Huh, oh yeah, Arthur said awkwardly as he took the ring. He could sense the spatial energy from the ring better than anyone here. He actually felt it the moment the ring was completed and even the mysterious ring had reciprocated in response. Arthur knew that if he wanted to, he could rip the ring from their hands or perhaps even destroy it if he wanted to. He couldn't exactly tell why, but these were the innate feeling he was getting in his mind. He slid on the ring to his index finger of his right hand, next to the mysterious ring. The ring was slightly bigger than his finger's size, but Arthur didn't worry as he now knew how it functioned now. Arthur branded the ring with his spirit sense, and the ring automatically shrunk to fit his finger snugly. The contrast between the two rings was a bit appealing. The mysterious ring was sliver with five spurs, while the new spatial storage ring was golden with irregular green patterns that looked like cracks with a flat top and a green gem on top. Arthur peered into the ring and saw its capacity for himself. He actually felt a bit uncomfortable seeing the space inside the ring as it was much more smaller than the mysterious ring and neither was there any free spatial energy shimmering around. But while Arthur was appreciating the two rings, the pair of grandfather and granddaughter could only see a single ring on his hand that was the new ring with the green gem and green patterns. Arthur looked back at Jing Wei with a grateful expression. Thank you for repairing it. I can see that you had to spend a lot of effort and resources and fixing it. I am truly thankful for it. Arthur spoke. No, thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this. I've learned more from this than I've done in the past few centuries. You don't know what this means for us? For our clan. Jing Wei spoke and trailed off. Arthur saw that Jing Wei was moving to a more emotional state thus decided to change the topic a little bit. Um, will the courtyard be fine? I mean, there is a pretty big tear in the barrier, Arthur said with concern. Ha ha ha. Oh that? You don't have to worry about that. It will fix itself after a couple of days. Though it was definitely worth it. Jing Wei said in a jovial manner as his state of mind shifted. Chapter 284 Rewarding Jing Wei and Duan Ku FNDD é UPTS on N, OV, E, L, N, ponto, com. How did the tear appear though? Isn't the courtyard quite strong? What was it that could cause damage like this? Arthur questioned. Oh, it was one of the materials needed for the ring. More specifically, the one that contained spatial attribute chi. The one that we got previously while useful was not really compatible and the technique I used wasn't perfect either. Thus, s as a result of that a great amount of it escaped my control and tore a hole in the barrier. Jing Wei answered. Arthur was a bit surprised as he had not expected for it to be something like that. Did you know this senior? Arthur asked in his mind. Yes, I did. I recognize the damage caused by it as it is how spatial chi does it. You should learn from this and know how dangerous it can be if you aren't able to control it one day or perhaps lose control. Shukong the stanzas explained. I understand, senior. Arthur answered. Also, I have a reward for the man. I believe one is in order. Shukong the stanzas added. Arthur's expression lit up as he instantly agreed with it. Yes, senior, that would be good. They have helped me a lot. 
and even now repairing this ring was quite an effort. Arthur replied, But what kind of rewards did you have in mind? He asked. Just listen to my instructions and do as I saw. Shukong the stanzas stated before telling him what to do. A minute later Arthur S. Focus returned to the real world, and he looked at Jing Wei and Duan Ku. The two were doing something with the formations as they were glowing all around the room. The soot that covered the room was also disappearing now, so it seemed like they were using the cleaning formations. Old man Jing Wei, Arthur called out. Yes, Jing Wei said as he looked at Arthur. Right now Jing Wei wanted nothing more than to finish fixing all the damage that had been caused due to the refining, before recording all the things that he had learned today. He then wanted to go and check the other incomplete theories that were in the clan records and test them out with his new insights. Perhaps I'll be able to find a new solution, Jing Wei thought to himself. Arthur took a couple of steps towards Jing Wei and said, My master has something for you. Jing Wei immediately became alert, and so did Duan Ku. She stared at Arthur intently, and ideas started to go through her mind. She was trying to guess what Arthur S. Master wanted with her grandfather. She certainly did not want the repeat of last time and did not want to experience that terror again. Jing Wei composed himself and aligned his thoughts before speaking. And what does he have for me? Jing Wei asked carefully. Jing Wei saw Arthur extended his hand in response and then it happened. A presence that was as heavy as a mountain descended in the room, making him choke for a moment. Jing Wei and Duan Ku both felt it and their hearts fell and they imagined the worst. But then the pressure lifted or more like it wasn't as heavy to them. They could still sense the power in it, but it wasn't targeting them in a malevolent manner. Then the two of them saw an illusion. For a moment there, they could see a massive silhouette of something behind Arthur. They realized that the room had somehow disappeared, and they were in a space where there were only two things, darkness and ten golden eyes. The gaze of the golden eyes shook their minds and they felt inferior in front of it. They felt as if they were mere ants. But then something else happened. They felt something entering their minds, it was similar to the presence in front of them but was much more milder in nature. Then finally, as if a bolt of lightning had struck, information started pouring into their brains. They couldn't do much other than just hold on and wish that it ended quickly. While the process wasn't painful, it was still quite uncomfortable. Duan Ku and Jing Wei felt as if a few hours had passed by before the information finally stopped and they were able to open their eyes. They then realized that in reality, not even a minute had passed while they went through all that. What Dash Duan Ku was about to ask when she paused. The information that was added to her brain finally kicked in and she was able to understand what it meant. The same happened to Jing Wei, but his reaction was of absolute shock. Marvelous? Absolutely marvelous. This, this knowledge. Jing Wei uttered with sheer awe. Thousands of years of my clan's experience cannot even compare to 1% of this, Jing Wei proclaimed. No. That's not it. Thousands of years of experience combined of each and every spirit tool refiner cannot compare to this. Arthur just patiently watched the two's reactions. Senior Shukong the stanzas had already told him to expect something like this and had warned him that this will happen. What Shukong the stanzas had just done was use the ward he had placed on Arthur along with Arthur a spirit sense and transfer information to the pair of grandfather and granddaughter duo. Originally he only wanted to give it to Jing Wei, but then Arthur told him that he should give something to Duan Ku as well. What Shukong the stanzas had given Jing Wei was a bare smidgen of knowledge of refining from the immortal realm. He had already seen his talent and knew that the old man was even better than some refiners of the immortal realm. He reckoned that this would be a good reward and would help him a lot more in the future. As for Duan Ku, he had merely given her a few tips about cultivation. These were rather common ones in the immortal realm but would be priceless for someone from a low-leveled world like this. Chapter 285, A Fortune of Pills Arthur looked at the two of them, who were in a state that was a mixture of excitement, shock, amazement, and utter awe. It was obvious that whatever senior Shukong the stanzas had given them was enough to shake their world forever. I need to consolidate this. Jing Wei muttered suddenly. He then looked at Arthur and thought for a moment before speaking. I need to go into seclusion and fully comprehend the knowledge that was just given. I believe Duan Ku needs to do the same. The effects will be the best if we do it right away. Thus before we go is there something you need? Anything? Jing Wei asked with fervor. The reward that he had obtained was probably a hundred times more valuable than what he had provided Arthur with. It didn't matter to him if he even had to give away the courtyard itself. He had so much new knowledge that he would be able to refine a better one, all on his own. Arthur didn't even have to think before asking, 
I want more basic chi pills. Duan Ku. Take him to the pill repository. Give him any and all the pills that he wants. You know what this is worth. Jing Wei immediately turned and said to Duan Ku. Gulp. Duan Ku silently gulped before nodding and gesturing to Arthur to follow. Meanwhile, Jing Wei increased his pace of fixing the damage to the formations. Arthur followed behind Duan Ku and was guided to the same place where he had received the pills before. FNDD é UPTS ON N OV I L I N ponto com. The doors of the pill repository opened automatically, and Duan Ku immediately waved her hands, summoning a large number of pill containers. There were so many that there was no space on the tables that were kept there, and most of the larger containers had to be kept on the ground. The ones that were kept on the table were the more important and valuable pills and also the eons with the smaller bottles or vials. Duan Ku walked to the table and pointed with her hands towards the boxes that were kept on the ground. These are all basic chi pills that we have. There should be about a million low-grade basic chi pills, 5,000 mid-tier basic chi pills, 150 high-grade basic chi pills, and three peak-grade basic chi pills. Duan Ku stated. Arthur S. Jaw almost fell in shock, but he was able to control it at the last moment. He had certainly not expected that there would be so many basic chi pills that would be present here. Last time he had barely gotten 2,000 basic chi pills that were of low grade, but now there were a million of them. Not only that, but the higher grade versions were also here, some of which he could not even use currently at his cultivation base. The most he would be able to use was the mid-grade pills as the high-grade and peak-grade ones were not intended for chi refining realm cultivators and would only end up harming them instead. Seeing that Arthur had gotten an idea of the number of pills, Duan Ku shifted her hand over to the other pills on the table. These are the toxin cleansing pills, they are similarly of low, mid, high grade. There are 1,500 low grade ones, 50 mid grade ones, and one high grade one. As for the peak grade toxin cleansing pills, we do not have them. Duan Keskivi ko ansvered. Why are there no peak grade ones though? Arthur curiously answered. Removing pill toxins from a cultivator's body gets more difficult the higher their cultivation base gets. You should know the grades how they are intended for different cultivation realms, right? That's the reason. It is simply too difficult to make a toxin cleansing pill that can work on even Dao treading realm cultivators. There aren't many alchemists that can make them in the empire either. According to what I know, there are only three alchemists of that level in the entire Great Show Empire, with one belonging to the Emperor's court, one being the supreme elder of the Rainbow Pill sect, and the third alchemist is one of the head elders of Sky Precepts sect. Duan Keskiviko explained. If it was before, Duan Ku would have never had given such a detailed explanation and would have only told him the most basic of information. But now that Arthur or rather his master had given them such a huge reward, this was the least she could do. Duan Ku knew that if Arthur were to offer the knowledge to any of the sects or even the empire, he would immediately ascend to their top ranks and would be taken care of. It was their fortune that they were able to meet Arthur. Duan Ku then went on to tell Arthur about the rest of the pills that were present on the desk. There were a lot of healing pills of different qualities, and pills that were just useful in general. Overall, Arthur ended up receiving over 50 types of different kinds of pills. He was a bit overwhelmed by them and thus had difficulty remembering their names, effects, when not to take them, and all those conditions. But Duan Ku was helpful and made him a list. The list was conveniently put in the communication jade that he previously got from Jing Wei. Thus Arthur didn't have much problem. Seems like I'll be going into seclusion again, and you too will be as well. Arthur lightly joked. Hmm. Duanka hummed in response, clearly thinking about the things that were newly added to her mind. Jing Wei wasn't the only one who was impatient about getting to comprehend the knowledge. Duanku was too. Arthur thus took this cue and bid her farewell before leaving the pill repository and after that the mansion. He looked up at the sky and saw that the tear in the barrier was already repairing, although very slowly. Chapter 286, Fixing the Tear in the Barrier. Please read the author note at end. Arthur felt a bit curious about the tear in the barrier as he peered at the void that was behind it. He realized that he could faintly sense something moving around the tear. He had not felt this before and could only sense it for the first time now. What Arthur was sensing was different from using the spirit sense, as whatever it was near the tear, it was too far away for his spirit sense to reach. Huh? How am I able to sense that? Is it because my cultivation recently increased? Arthur thought to himself. Why don't you try to focus on it more? See what happens? Shukong the stanzas suggested in an encouraging tone. Arthur closed his eyes and tried to focus on whatever that was moving around the tear. 
he realized that he was feeling it through a different kind of a sense. A sense he had for a while, but it was not as strong. He had been using this sense for a while now, unconsciously. The thing moving around the tear, its spatial attribute chi, Arthur uttered upon realization. Of course, Jing Wei said that the tear was caused by the spatial attribute chi that was accidentally released because he lost control. So it's still around the tear and that's what's stopping it from repairing fast enough. Arthur concluded. You are correct, that's exactly what's happening. The spatial chi that escaped from the material that Jing Wei previously used is trying to escape the confines of the barrier but is being restricted by it. The more it leaks out into the lesser void, the faster the barrier heals. Xu Kong the stanzas explained. Arthur S. Browse furrowed as he felt some counterproductive points in Senior Xu Kong the stanzas s words. But Senior, if the barrier restricting the spatial chi is what's preventing it from repairing, doesn't that mean it is actually a flaw? Arthur asked. Absolutely correct. Xu Kong the stanzas said in a pleased tone. Seems like his talent in formations is indeed good and his spatial sense is also improving. Hmm, let's see if he can do that. Xu Kong the stanzas thought. Arthur was still thinking about the flaw as he walked forward and then suddenly stopped. An idea had just appeared in his mind. Senior, if the spatial chi is removed somehow, won't the formation repair faster? Arthur questioned. Maybe it will. Why? Do you want to try something? Shukong the stanzas replied with a slight chuckle as Arthur asked what he had thought of before he could even do it. I feel like since I can sense it, perhaps with the help of the ring I can make it leave the barrier faster? or perhaps something else like absorbing it? Arthur said in a slightly unsure tone. Well, go ahead then. Try it. Find R for yourself. Xu Kong the stanzas encouraged. Hmm. Arthur hummed in response before closing his eyes and focusing on the spatial chi swilling around the barrier. It took him a little while to fully get a measure of how much spatial chi there actually was, but after five minutes Arthur got it. Arthur then extended his right hand and pointed it towards the tear. At first, nothing happened, but a minute later the air in the courtyard started swirling, turning into the wind. The invisible spatial chi that was near the tear started to move from its position. A part of it moved out from the tear into the lesser void outside, while the remaining part instead descended. The part that descended started clumping together and soon formed into a translucent cloud. This cloud moved towards Arthur's hand and then turned into a stream, entering the mysterious ring on Arthur's middle finger. A few seconds later, all the spatial chi was absorbed and the tear in the barrier started repairing at a rapid pace. Thirty seconds later, it was completely gone, and the barrier was repaired to its original state. U.S. Tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. View. Arthur opened his eyes and let out a breath of relief. While the entire process looked relatively easy, it was not. The process had been taking on Arthur's mind and he felt fatigued now. Excellent. That was flawlessly done. Xu Kong the stanzas praised in an elated tone. Xu Kong the stanzas had not expected that Arthur would actually be able to do it this well. Originally he had thought it may take him a few tries to do it, but he had done it in a single try. And not only that, but he was also able to absorb a small part of that spatial chi into the ring. That final thing in itself was a complex thing that would trouble a lot of experienced cultivators that specialized in using the spatial chi techniques or had cultivation techniques that focused on that aspect. Thank you, senior. Arthur replied before peering into the ring. There he saw the translucent cloud of the spatial chi floating in a corner. Unlike the silvery gray streaks of spatial energy that floated in the sky, Arthur realized that this cloud was fully in his control. He could move it wherever he liked and could even change its shape. Um, senior. What do I do with it? Arthur asked, feeling confused. While he had obtained this cloud of spatial chi, he had no use for it. He had not planned to really get something like this, thus was confused. Well, there are many uses for it, of course, that I want you to find them out yourself. But, I can still give you one use which is rather obvious. Try using that spatial chi to power the skills that you obtained from the ring. Xu Kong the stanzas answered. Arthur tilted his head as he thought over the other possible uses, but then decided to try the one that senior Xu Kong the stanzas had suggested him. Arthur decided to use it with the first skill flicker, as it was the easiest one to use and took the least amount of chi. He controlled the cloud of spatial chi and broke out a small part of it before using that to activate the skill. Flicker. Chapter 287 Alternate Method of Using the Ring Skills Chapter 287 Alternate Method of Using the Ring Skills Arthur's vision suddenly changed. 
and he felt as if everything had turned black and white. He looked around and could see that all the things were in different shapes. Some things were blurry while others were distorted. He could also see some black dots that he knew were flaws in the fabric of space and that they lead to the lesser void. While it seemed like a while had passed to Arthur, in reality only a mere second had passed. In the next instant, everything turned back to normal and Arthur could see in color again. Huh, what was that? Arthur said. So, what did you experience? Shukong the stanzas asked. Shukong the stanzas himself didn't know what kind of effect Arthur using spatial attribute chi directly would have on the skills. But he could guess a few things and wondered if that was actually what Arthur experienced. It was strange. Everything turned black and white. The time also seemed to be slow for some reason. The objects were not exactly correct either. Arthur recalled. Seems like you were able to get spatial perception when you used the skill with the spatial attribute chi. That black and white color was due to your proficiency in it being less. Also, that feeling of time slowing down that was an illusion or rather a misperception. That happens when a cultivator newly starts using spatial perception. If you actually tried to move, you would realize that you would be moving at the same speed as before and that time wasn't actually slowed down. And as for the objects not being correct, I believe that was because of them being occluded by spatial distortions or the flowing space. Shukong the stanzas explained. I understand, senior. Arthur said before thinking of using another skill. Arthur took another small part of the spirit chi cloud and this time used it to power the second skill, blink. He already had an intention of where he wanted to move, thus had no problems. The moment he used it, his vision turned black and white again, but this time he realized that he could still use his spirit sense unlike the during the first skill flicker, where it just didn't work or rather felt like it was frozen. Usually when Arthur wanted to teleport using blink his spirit sense could only extend up to the maximum range of the skill which was 10 meters. But now he realized that he was not limited by that. He sensed that he could actually teleport freely up to the maximum length of his spirit sense. This, this is amazing, Arthur inwardly exclaimed. In the next moment, he triggered the skill and disappeared from his location, appearing at the place he had chosen. Phew. Arthur let out a breath even he had not known he was holding in. It was obvious that he had been a bit nervous and had thus held his breath back. But now that he was successful, he finally relaxed. The effect this time is rather obvious I see, Shukong the stanzas said, appreciating the effects. The range of the second skill blink is no longer limited to 10 meters, it seems senior. I can use it to teleport up to the maximum range of my spirit sense now. Arthur explained. That's good. You can use it in times of emergency. Shukong the stanzas agreed. Arthur nodded and checked the cloud of spatial chi he had in the ring. In the two times he had used it, the amount used reached 6% of its total volume. 1% was used to activate the first skill flicker, and 5% was needed for blink. Arthur realized that using spatial chi to power these skills was best limited to when he truly needed them. Until now he had been relatively safe and had escaped danger effortlessly. But he knew that there may be times in the future when his skills may not be enough and this could come in handy. Arthur contemplated on the idea of using the spatial chi for the third skill phase. It was the skill that had the highest consumption and would continue consuming his chi the longer he used it. Better to test and know the effects now rather than to experiment in times of danger. Arthur muttered to himself. Phew. He took a deep breath and calmed his mind. He then moved near some trees as the main effect of the skill was to allow him to walk through the physical objects, or rather pass through them. He activated the skill and saw his vision change again. Arthur immediately walked through the trees and did not feel much of a difference. He immediately stopped the skill and checked the usage. Sigh. As I expected, it was rather large. The size of the cloud had been reduced by a further 20% when he used phase. While it was not exactly equivalent to that of the spirit chi wisps, it was still quite a lot considering that he had a limited amount of spatial attribute chi. In total, he had used up about 26% of the spatial chi cloud, reducing its size to slightly less than three quarters of its original volume. Senior, how can I obtain more spatial chi? I know that I can get it from the materials that contain it, but that would be quite difficult no. Arthur asked. Well, spatial chi is actually one of the most abundant types of chis in the cosmos. It is everywhere, it's just that most people or rather cultivators cannot sense it. Controlling it is even more difficult which leads to them thinking that it is hard to find. It is just that there are quite limited materials that naturally contain spatial chi. Shukong the stanzas explained. 
Arthur thought over his words for a bit before realizing something. Then doesn't this mean that as long as one can sense and control the spatial chi they can directly imbue it into materials? Arthur asked. Exactly. How else do you think spatial storage tools are made in the higher leveled worlds? Chapter 288 worried for nothing. Arthur felt enlightened at the revelation and felt a bit silly as to how he did not realize it himself. But after understanding this, many other ideas popped up in his mind. Though he did not know how many of them were actually valid. Arthur then remembered that while Senior Shukong the stanzas had told him about the abundance of spatial chi, he hadn't told him how to get it exactly. Still, he could guess that perhaps he wanted him to find out on his own and perhaps wanted to test him. Arthur didn't mind this and took it up with confidence. He actually felt more satisfied when he accomplished and completed something on his own. But he put these thoughts aside for the moment as he needed to head back to his house. He was at the very edge of progressing into the next stage of the chi refining realm and thus wanted to go bask as soon as possible. Not to mention with all the basic chi pills he now had, it would take him quite a while to finish them. Arthur finally left the courtyard and appeared in the shop. But upon leaving the back room, he saw that there was actually someone in the shop. At first, he was taken aback and thought that someone had either mistakenly wandered in or had just come to buy things. It wasn't like there were no customers other than Arthur that came to Jingwei's Emporium. There were actually some random people that came here a couple of times a month. Still, the shop was relatively unknown to most people. But then Arthur suddenly remembered something. The illusory formations are still active, he thought and immediately became alert. Arthur's spirit sense spread around and he immediately observed the person, trying to find out their cultivation base. He inferred that if they had been able to enter the shop despite the illusory formations, they must definitely be a cultivator and that too a strong one. The person in front of Arthur was a man that seemed to be in his early thirties and was wearing the clothes of a commoner. This only made Arthur more alert as he thought that perhaps the man was hiding his identity while disguising like this. But after Arthur probed the man's body, he was a little surprised. He's… a commoner? Arthur muttered. Still feeling unsure of it, Arthur sensed the body-tempering realm cultivation of the man, finding it to be at the fifth stage of the body-tempering realm. That confirms that he's not a cultivator. But then how did he get in? Arthur thought, feeling perplexed. During this entire thing, the man had not noticed Arthur as barely five seconds had passed. Everything had happened quite fast, and Arthur's enhanced reflexes only helped this. The man turned around and saw Arthur, who was standing behind the counter. Ah, are you the shopkeeper here? I was looking for you. I wanted to buy something. The man said, FNDD é UPTS on N, OV, E, L, N, ponto, com. Arthur took a look and saw that the man was standing near a shelf that had some miscellaneous objects placed on it. He wanted to tell him that he was not the shopkeeper but before he could do that the man spoke again. I wanted to buy this, the man said as he pointed towards what looked like a set of maintenance and polishing kit that was used for tools and weapons. Arthur walked forwards and looked at the kit, ensuring that it was something normal and nothing precious. He couldn't help but feel suspicious that perhaps this person was sent by someone else to get this or something like that. But after observing the maintenance and polishing kit, Arthur found it to be as mundane as it could be. Is he genuinely a normal customer? Arthur thought and then extended his spirit sense towards the door of the shop. His spirit sense easily pierced the door and went outside. There he saw that the illusory formation was not working, and the shop was fully revealed to the outside, and even the alley was visible. Huh. The formation stopped? Arthur wondered. He then discreetly withdrew the communication jade and contacted Jing Wei, who thankfully had not entered seclusion yet. Jing Wei simply told him to sell the kit and that the formation was stopped because he was repairing the other ones. Phew. I was worried for nothing, Arthur thought as he took a breath of relief. Um, excuse me? How much is it for? The man asked Arthur, seeing that he had not responded yet. Oh yes, it's worth about one silver and ten copper coins. Arthur answered telling him the price that Jing Wei had quoted. Though Arthur doubted the high price and was pretty sure that Jing Wei had just said it from the top of his head. The man was a bit surprised after hearing the cost, and his expression turned serious. He stroked his forehead while thinking and it looked like he was having a hard time deciding. I'll take it, the man said while gritting his teeth. Uh, okay. Arthur replied and took the money from the man's hands. The entire time the man seemed quite hesitant about handing him the coins. If you don't mind me asking, why do you need this kit? Arthur asked curiously. 
It's a good quality kit and has proper tools. Even if it's expensive, I think it's worth it if I can get the job at the army camp. The man replied, Oh, what kind of job? Arthur questioned. You don't know? A lot of people are looking to apply for the new jobs that are opening up temporarily at the southern town. The man answered. Arthur was confused by this as from what he knew, while the southern town was mostly an army base, they had their own workers and blacksmiths. If this man was buying a maintenance and polishing kit that too an expensive one like this then it meant that it was something major. How are their jobs opening up there? The soldiers there don't need much as they don't really fight. Arthur asked. You don't know? The son of Wu Lim City's mayor is coming soon. Chapter 289 Lieutenant Wu Tung Please read the author note at end. Arthur was a bit confused upon hearing that the son of the Wu Lim City's mayor was coming back. According to what he knew, the mayor had two sons. The eldest son was part of the Shuang Chen Kingdom's army and was a lieutenant, while the youngest one was rather unknown. All that was known about him was that he lived in the Wu Lim City as well and did not leave it usual. Most people did not even know about the identity of the youngest son of the mayor. This led Arthur to believe that it was obviously the eldest son that was coming back the city. But then he wondered why were jobs being issued. Why are there jobs though? Even if the son of the mayor is coming back? Arthur questioned. The mayor's son is not only coming back, but is also bringing back his personal battalion of soldiers that he commands. These soldiers number in the thousands and unlike the ones at the southern town's army camp, actually practice and spar all the time. They need people to maintain their equipment in tip-top condition. And this maintenance job is not the only job being issued. Other jobs like common servants, stable boys, cleaners, cooks, and blacksmiths are also being issued. There are people from all four towns as well as the nearby villages applying for it. While the mayor's son will be living in the city during this entire time, his battalion will be left behind in the southern town according to the rules of the empire. The man explained, Arthur finally understood the entirety of the situation but still felt that something didn't add up. Even if the son of the mayor was a lieutenant in the Shuang Chen Kingdom's army, it didn't make sense for him to make an entire battalion move here. Arthur could help but be suspicious of the entire thing. Did the mayor find out about something and called his son to help? Arthur thought. He then remembered the four vessels restoration pills that originally supposed to go to the mayor. At that time Arthur had thought that they were perhaps intended for the mayor's son as he may have gotten injured. But now seeing him return perhaps it was not that either. Or the mayor could have also found an alternative method to help his son. There were far too many possibilities that could not be confirmed. And this only made Arthur a bit more anxious. Perhaps the Hay Corps will know more about this. Arthur muttered to himself. Um, I'll take my leave then? The customer spoke, seeing that Arthur seemed to be lost in his thoughts. Ah yes, everything is fine you can take it now. Arthur handed the kit to the man and let him leave. Arthur then put the coins he had gotten into a drawer that was built into the counter and left the shop. US Tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. Is it really fine leaving the door unlocked like this? What if someone else walks in and there is no one to attend to them? Arthur wondered. But just as Arthur thought this, he felt the fluctuation of spirit chi. The shop's door in front of him disappeared and the shop eventually disappeared too. Arthur found the ground beneath him shrinking as he was moved out of the alley automatically. A few seconds later the alley shrunk and the two walls to its sides closed up, making the entire alley disappeared. Ha, huh, just in time. Looks like Jing Wei was waiting for me to leave. Arthur realized. Arthur started walking in the direction of his house and listened to the conversations along the way. He could hear some of the people discussing about the arrival of the mayor's son, and also the jobs that were opening up in the southern town. Is your husband also going to the southern town for the jobs? A woman spoke to another woman. Yes, and my son will be joining him too. There are a lot of jobs, and they can be safe too instead of going to hunt in the forest. The other woman replied. Arthur then passed by a tea stall where a young man and a guard were sitting. Do you know when the mayor's son will be arriving in the city? A man spoke to the guard who seemed like his friend. You should call him with his proper title or you may get in trouble. His status is quite above us and is already comparable to that of the mayor himself. The guard warned the man. His title? I don't even know his name though, we town folks don't really get that much news you know. The man replied in a joking manner. That's true, but it will be better if you know it. The official title of the mayor's son is Lieutenant Wu Tang of the Tang Battalion. The guard explained. Arthur was intrigued by this, 
as this was perhaps the first time he had heard the man's name. So it's Lieutenant Wu Tang and Tang Battalion. Hmm. Did he name the battalion after himself? Usually the kingdom officials decided the names from what I've heard before. Arthur thought to himself. Soon Arthur reached his house and opened the gate to enter the courtyard. Phew. He took a deep breath, calming himself down and prepared for what he was about to do. Arthur as low wanted to know more about the lieutenant's visit to the city, but decided to leave it for later. Right now his sole concern was to reach the peak stage of the Qi refining realm as fast as possible. But before he could begin his session, Arthur ensured that everything was ready. He knew that anything could happen, and the ring was bound to do something. There was also the problem with the nameless technique of the lost immortal. Although it had come under a bit of control, Arthur was still apprehensive. Phew. Let's get to it. Chapter 290-1800 Drops Tate slash e most up-to-date envels are published on n 0 velbj n dot co slash m. It took Arthur about an hour to prepare everything and in the end, he simply checked up on little shrubby before entering his bedroom and sitting down cross-legged. He withdrew one of the many boxes of basic chi pills he had and placed it in front of him. He then opened the box and popped a basic chi pill into his mouth before starting to chant the Severing Heart Sutra. The spirit chi from the pill entered his meridians and arrived into his dantian. If one looked at Arthur's dantian right now, they could see that half of it was filled with shimmering liquid spirit chi while the other half was filled with floating wisps of spirit chi. Now with the arrival of the extra spirit chi from the basic chi pill, the dantian was getting saturated. But this is exactly what Arthur wanted. He willed the spirit chi wisps in the dantian to enter his meridians and circulate. The concentration of spirit chi in his meridians suddenly increased, and so did the pressure on them. But for Arthur this was barely anything, and he increased the amount again. He steadily kept on drawing from the dantian and the spirit chi from the basic chi pill kept on replenishing it. This kept a positive outflow of spirit chi into his meridians, which allowed him to refine it faster. The concentration of spirit chi in his meridians kept on increasing more and more until finally a single drop of liquid spirit chi was condensed. Usually, Arthur would have simply guided this drop of spirit chi into the dantian, but that was not what he wanted to do now. His current goal was to break through to the peak stage of the chi refining realm and for that, he knew it would be best to jump in one go. The more pressure he generated, the easier it would be to overcome the bottleneck. Although the bottleneck between the late stage and peak stage of the Qi refining realm wasn't too tough, it still existed. But this bottleneck was more of a passive one, in that the spirit Qi had a higher chance of dissipating instead of being restricted from condensing. Arthur wanted to refine a sufficient amount of liquid spirit Qi in his meridians and then directly depositing it in his dantian all at once. He focused on this drop of liquid spirit chi and circulated it faster through the circuit of his meridians while drawing upon the spirit chi wisps from the dantian. With each cycle, the drop of liquid spirit chi was growing in size. At first, it was only a single drop in size, but then it doubled, then tripled, and so on and so forth. Eventually, it reached a point where it was nearly 30 times the size of a normal drop and was looking more of like a stream. By now, 12 hours had passed by and Arthur was still continuing on tirelessly. His newly enhanced body tempering cultivation was only making it much easier for him. In fact, Arthur could also feel that the conversion of his body cells was getting faster as well, which brought him closer to achieving Sientian physique. Arthur extended his hand in an almost mechanical manner and picked up a basic chi pill from the box in front of him and popped it in his mouth. During these past 12 hours, he had eaten about a hundred pills. This would have been very shocking before, but now it was but a drop in the ocean. While Arthur was refining the liquid spirit chi, he was also losing a fraction of the spirit chi. Right now he was overcoming the time factor with quantity instead of quality and overpowering the routine. The nameless technique of the lost immortal was also helping Arthur, as without it he would have not been able to consume this many pills. Another thing that was happening which Arthur did not know was that with each circulation of spirit chi, a minute amount was also being infused into his stomach tissues. This amount was small enough that Arthur had no capacity to focus on it. Seconds turned into minutes and minute turned into hours. It had been over 24 hours since Arthur started his session. The number of basic chi pills he had consumed reached nearly 200, and the size of the liquid spirit chi stream had reached 80 times the initial size. Now's the time, Arthur internally shouted. To be honest, Arthur had never expected to last this long. The amount of liquid spirit chi he had refined this time was the largest amount he had refined in a single session. Not only that, but simply the volume of liquid spirit chi circulating in his meridians was exuding a pressure. 
Arthur had thought that he would keep on refining it till he would not be able to handle the pressure, and now the time had finally come. He had also exceeded the amount that was actually needed for him to break through the bottleneck a long time ago. But he still kept on going, as this had now become a way for him to challenge himself and his will. He didn't know how he was compared to other cultivators, but he was proud of himself for reaching this level. Arthur S. Focus reached peak, and he immediately guided the stream of liquid spirit chi into the Dantian. Usually, the spirit chi would enter the Dantian drop by drop, but this time it was as if someone had opened a tap as the stream came rushing in. Gush! The volume of liquid spirit chi within his Dantian started rising visibly. 1,500 drops. 1,510 drops. 1,550 drops. 1,600 drops. 1,700 drops. 1,800 drops. Finally, all the liquid spirit chi that he had refined entered his Dantian and with that, a wave was emitted from his body. As soon as the wave reached the mysterious ring on Arthur S. right hand, it started humming too. Chapter 291, The Fourth Skill. Please read author note at end. Arthur opened his eyes and found himself in front of the ethereal altar within the mysterious ring. The last thing he remembered was the stream of liquid spirit chi filling into his dantian and his total stores reaching about 1,800 drops of liquid spirit chi. He knew that he had refined a lot of drops of liquid spirit chi but had never expected that it had reached such a large amount. This was completely incomprehensible to him, and he did not know how he had even done this. When he was looking at the stream of liquid spirit chi before it looked much smaller to him, being only 80 times bigger than a normal drop in size. But when that very stream had been added to his Dantian, it turned out to be 300 drops in total instead. This had instantly pushed him through the bottleneck between the late stage and peak stage of the Qi refining realm. Arthur had expected that the mysterious ring would do something the moment broke through the late stage of the Qi refining realm into the peak stage, and now that he was in the mysterious ring his expectations were fully confirmed. Hugh. Arthur took a deep breath and relaxed his tense body. While he could finally perceive the changes in his body, he knew that it was not the right time to explore them. Right now he needed to see what the mysterious ring had called him here for. He looked around but could not see Senior Shukong the stanzas nearby. But he could also see a faintly glowing barrier in the distance that surrounded him and the altar completely. So this is the barrier Senior Shukong the stanzas was speaking about before. Looks like it separates the altar from the rest of the ring and has a special function. Arthur muttered to himself as he walked to the altar in the very middle. He reached there in a minute and saw that it was thrumming with waves of energy. He found them to be similar to before and now knew what he was going to receive. Arthur placed his hand on the altar as it was beckoning to him and closed his eyes. A flurry of runes appeared out of the altar, turning into streaks of light entering into Arthur's head. Soon information started etching itself in Arthur's memories. What Arthur was receiving right now was none other than the next skill. Arthur had received the first skill flicker, and the second skill blink, when he first became a chi cultivator. He then obtained the third skill phase, when he broke through the late stage of the chi refining realm. From the consumption of spirit chi that these skills required, Arthur could estimate that every new skill was only granted to him when he satisfied a certain condition. For the first two skills, all he needed was spirit chi wisps, thus they were directly granted to him at the very start when he became a cultivator. Arthur then received the third skill phase, when he satisfied the condition which was none other than liquid spirit chi. Once that condition was fulfilled, he obtained the third skill. But according to this logic, it didn't seem right that he was getting a fourth skill now. If liquid spirit chi was a requirement, he should have received it a long time ago. There was perhaps another condition that was needed. Arthur didn't have to think for long before he realized what it was. It was a very recent thing and he would have easily missed out on obtaining the skill had it not been for what he had done. The hidden condition needed for the fourth skill was none other than the spatial attribute chi that he had absorbed from the tear in the barrier. Arthur sensed that the cloud of spatial attribute chi was nowhere in the ring, thus came to the conclusion that perhaps it was used up by the ring to give him the fourth skill. After the process was done, he opened his eyes that momentarily shined with a silvery glow. So it's like this, Arthur muttered to himself. He then started walking towards the barrier of the altar and left its confines. The ethereal altar behind him dimmed down to its previous brightness and settled down. Upon leaving the barrier, Arthur soon noticed a gray orb of light flying towards him with great speed. This orb came to a stop in front of him and was none other than Senior Shukong the stanzas. It was evident that he had been waiting for Arthur to finish the process and come out of the barrier. 
Seems like you succeeded, Xu Kong the stanzas said in a content tone. Indeed, senior. I even exceeded what I had expected of myself. Arthur replied. Good. Very good. Cultivation is going against the very heavens. If you can't even exceed your own expectations, how can you exceed the will of the heaves? Xu Kong the stanzas spoke in a sagely tone. Arthur nodded confidently, as he had fully realized this fact by now. He also knew that as long as he pushed himself, exceeding his limits was nothing. He wanted to even beyond that and keep on going till he reached another limit. Then he would find a method to overcome that limit and keep on going. So, what did you receive this time? Xu Kong the stanzas asked. I received the fourth skill from the ethereal altar. It is called as Fade, Arthur revealed. Hmm. Fade, that's a rather unique name. Do you know what it does? Or do you still need to test it out? Xu Kong the stanzas questioned. I already have a certain idea of what it can do, but to properly confirm it I would still need to test it. Though I can tell that this skill is quite different than the other three skills. Arthur answered. Oh? Why do you say so? Xu Kong the stanzas asked curiously. This skill has more information than all the other three skills combined. I believe that I'll still need to comprehend it a bit. I am... have a headache. Chapter 292 Strange Effect Arthur soon appeared in the real world after his time was up in the mysteries ring. While there he had discussed something with Senior Shukong the stanzas and had also figured out a few characteristics of the space inside the ring. The first thing that he learned was that the time he could stay in the ring after being summoned there was about 15 minutes now. He had also taken a look around the nearby areas of the ring and found the items that he had stored lying around. Because of the sheer size of the ring, most of the items were spread around in a rather massive expanse of an area. Another thing he found that was a bit surprising and disgusting was that there was a copious amount of blood spread around in the ring. This blood was none other than the blood from all the beasts he had killed. Unlike the past when he used to clean and drain the blood, Arthur often had to keep the beasts as it is till he got the chance to clean them. This led to the blood getting accumulated there bit by bit, till it had reached a rather large amount. Also, because the things aged slowly in the ring, the blood was still liquid and had not dried out yet. Arthur discovered this unfortunate fact, when he inadvertently ended up stepping on it while taking a walk. Ugh! I need to get rid of this all. It should make good fertilizer for the yard. Arthur muttered to himself. Arthur looked at his body and found it to be the same as before, but when he sensed the spirit chi in his body, he found it to be extremely active. It was circulating in his meridians and emanated faint waves of spirit chi that bathed the rest of his body. These waves of spirit chi were then released from his skin at a very slow pace. But it was this very thing that showed his status as a peak stage chi refining realm cultivator. Arthur clenched his fists and found his spirit chi to automatically focus on them. His control over the spirit chi had become almost instinctual now. Arthur looked into his dantian and saw the abundance of liquid spirit chi. FNDD é UPTS ON N OV I L I N ponto com. Ah, this is rather nice. Arthur muttered to himself. He then did a simple routine of some moves he had learned over the months and felt the minute changes in the behaviors of his spirit chi. He practiced the thousand armament blade scripture and found the coordination to have improved greatly. Arthur felt that certain things that were difficult for him and were occluding his progress were suddenly not there. Hmm, so the difficulty I was having in progressing was because of spirit chi itself rather than the lack of training. Arthur realized. Arthur then controlled the short sword with his spirit sense and found his connection with it had improved by almost twice. He felt as if he could use even more spirit chi with his short sword while he was controlling it with his spirit chi. Finally came the turn of the new skill that Arthur had obtained. The headache that he previously had was now gone after he relaxed by practicing some of his moves. He also felt like the new information was more clear to him now and he could use it with the same ease as that of the previous three skills. Hugh. Arthur took a deep breath and then triggered the fourth skill, Fade. As soon as he used it though, about ten drops of liquid spirit chi was instantly used up. And with that, Arthur disappeared from the courtyard. Huh? What is this? Arthur said as he looked around. The place was colored in gray and looked rather bare. There was nothing here, and Arthur could only sense faint fluctuations of spirit chi here. Arthur walked around and could not find anything particular there. A minute passed, after which he suddenly felt his vision change again. Ouch! Damn it! Watch where you walk, kid! Person shouted. Arthur was currently standing at the corner of the road and had bumped into a man who looked like a hunter. The hunter had recoiled and fallen on the ground. 
while Arthur himself was standing unmoved. The impact had no effect on him, and he was rather confused instead. What happened? How am I here? Arthur thought. Hey, didn't you hear me, kid? Are you not gonna apologize? The hunter said as he stood up from the ground. But even now Arthur had not responded to the hunter and was rather engrossed in his own thoughts. Look at me, kid. Don't you know ignoring is extremely rude? The hunter said as put his hand on Arthur's shoulder. The way Arthur and the hunter had collided was at a perpendicular angle. This meant that while the hunter was looking at him, Arthur himself was looking in the other direction. Because of this, the hunter had to touch him to turn him. But as soon as he did that, Arthur swatted his hand away in reflex, making the hunter fall back to the ground again. Arg! The hunter groaned in pain. The hunter was now a bit shocked. It was fine when he fell back before as he reckoned it happened because he was the one who lost balance. But now it was clear that he was knocked back by a light blow of Arthur's hand. He looked up to see Arthur staring at him. The shock that was in his mind turned to fear as it leaked into his eyes and was then shown on his face. Eek, the hunter flinched back as Arthur extended his hand towards him. Oh sorry. I didn't see you. I was thinking over something. Arthur apologized. No no problem, it's fine. The hunter said before running away rather fast. Strange. Chapter 293, Fade. Chapter 293, Fade. Arthur couldn't tell why the hunter had reacted like this and had run away, but he wasn't worried about that much. What he was the most worried about was the fourth skill fade. The effect that it had was much different than he had expected and not only that, but he had also somehow left his courtyard and appeared here. From looking around, Arthur could tell that he was about two streets away from his house. Looks like the fourth skill fade is much more powerful than your other skills. Shukong the stanzas suddenly said. Oh, senior. You have a guess of what it is? Arthur questioned. I do, indeed. The space that you saw which was gray in color was the parallel's void that exists along with this world. Your fourth skill allows you to enter that space and move around in there. And finally, when the effect of that skill ends, you will reappear in the real world at the location that would match with that of the parallel void. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur thought over senior Shukong the stanzas' s words and correlated them with his own findings and found them to be correct. Then, in the next moment, numerous possibilities popped up in his mind. The fourth skill was quite powerful, but Arthur still did not know what its limitations exactly were. All of his skills had certain limitations and flaws which Arthur knew of. The first skill flicker was of a very short duration but its advantage was that it could virtually allow him to dodge nearly anything as long as it was during that period. The second skill, Blink, allowed him to teleport to any location that was within the range of his spirit sense. The limitation of the skill was that it could only work in a radius of 10 meters regardless of if Arthur has spirit sense range unless if he used the spatial attribute chi to power the skill. The third skill phase allowed him to dissociate his body, which allowed him to pass through objects with ease. The limitation of this was that spirit chi or objects containing spirit chi could restrict him. This meant that he would not be able to pass through formations and barriers. From his short encounter with that hunter, Arthur could tell this much that he had not noticed him appear in front of him. This meant that the fourth skill, Fade, fully made him disappear from this world. Arthur could see the obvious advantages and disadvantages of the skill. The advantage was that he could get into areas or locations without anyone noticing or could even escape from a location if he was confined. It did not seem like a wall or barrier could restrict it either as Arthur was pretty sure he had walked through at least ten walls while coming here. He could guess that it would be the same for the things such as barriers and formations too. But then came the biggest disadvantage, or rather flaw of the skill. Arthur couldn't actually tell where he was going while he was in the parallel's void. Everything was the same there, and it was fully bare with not an object in sight. This meant that Arthur had no reference to use and that even if he had his spirit sense, it was rather useless there as there was literally nothing there. All of this meant that while Arthur had this powerful skill, it was a wild card for him unless of course he figured out a method of navigation while he was inside there. While the skill could allow him to disappear and escape from a location, it also meant that it could get him into trouble. He could very easily get lost in the parallel's void and end up right in the center of an enemy's stronghold. The fourth skill was now more of a double-edged sword for him and unless he could figure out a better way to use it and navigate, he would not be using it as much. A smaller disadvantage was the amount of spirit chi that it consumed for a single use was rather large, being at 10 drops of liquid spirit chi and not even wisps that too for only a duration of one minute. 
though Arthur guessed that there might be a way to extend the duration for which he could use the skill loft. Sigh. So many things to consider. This will take me a while to figure it out. Li Mu muttered to himself as he made his way back to his home. Arthur entered his bedroom and sat down to meditate on the skill. After a few minutes later, he came upon a potential solution to the flaw of the skill. I can perhaps use the spatial perception to navigate better in the parallel's void. Spatial perception depends on space itself along with the spatial chi, which was also present in the parallel void. If I can learn to use it better, I should have no problem using the skill and its flaw may even become an advantage itself. Arthur analyzed. While Arthur was thinking this, Shukong the stanzas was also taking a look at his memories and thoughts. Seeing that Arthur had actually come close to finding a potential solution only made Shukong the stanzas feel proud of his disciple. He had a good head on his shoulders and although he was disadvantaged from his peers due to his starting circumstances, Shukong the stanzas had no doubt the boy was a hidden genius. His comprehension ability was rather astounding for someone of his age. He didn't know whether to attribute it to his curiosity or his incessant thirst for knowledge, but whatever it was, it had made him smarter and smarter. Shukong the stanzas had a bit more idea of how the fourth skill worked, but he had not told Arthur and wanted for him to figure it out himself, as he knew that the things that he learned on his own would be better for him than the ones that he taught him. Chapter 294 Overcoming the Flaw of Fade Chapter 294 Overcoming the Flaw of Fade Shukong the stanzas knew that Arthur wanted to learn how to better use spatial perception and he had just the method for him or rather method was always with Arthur and he had even used it a few times before. Senior, how would I go about enhancing my spatial perception? Arthur questioned Shukong the stanzas at the very right moment. It would not be much difficult for you as you already know what it feels like. You even have an advantage in this over any average cultivator, as you can simply use your ring. You can already see those black dots which are the flaws in the fabric of space right, that is also you using spatial perception. Except in that case, it is only seeing the things that are causing the most disturbance and cannot see the more milder spatial fluctuations. What you need to learn is to how to simply expand that scope of sensation. While you can focus on the very strong points such as those black dots, if you sensitize yourself, you will sense even more things. Now the method to train this is simple, you just need to keep on observing the flaws in the spatial fabric. You should also focus on sensing the minute fluctuations in space that happen every so often naturally. Shukong the stanzas answered. Arthur nodded his head and immediately got to it. He willed the ring to show its effects and he opened his eyes to see the black dots, only to realize that there were none of them in his house right now. He then expanded his spirit sense and tried to sense his surroundings, examining them for any small changes. Arthur did this for an hour, after which he stopped it as he realized that he was not having much of a progress, though he did not falter there and was merely thinking of making better preparations. While he was doing this, he suddenly remembered something. When he had used the fourth skill fade before and walked around, he had changed his direction multiple times as he had no reference. He also remembered that he could use his spirit sense rather freely in the parallel void as well. These two factors amalgamated together in Arthur's mind, and a new idea formulated itself. Ha ha ha! Why did I not think of this before? Arthur suddenly exclaimed. Shukong the stanzas was surprised out of his trance as he looked at Arthur, who had a slightly disturbing smile on his face. What is it? What did you think? Shukong the stanzas asked curiously. Ha ha ha. Senior if figured out a way to use the fourth skill fade, even without spatial perception. I still don't know if it will work, but that can be confirmed quickly. Arthur replied in an excited tone. Really? Show me then, try it out. Shukong the stanzas said. Arthur nodded and took a deep breath before extending his spirit sense. He kept it in a straight line and made sure that it did not bend anywhere. He then checked the direction he was looking at and oriented the spirit sense there. Then Arthur triggered the fourth skill fade, and ten drops of liquid spirit chi drops were immediately consumed. Arthur's body disappeared from the real world, and he appeared in the parallel void. He looked around and found everything to be the same as before, empty and gray. Let's see if it works or not. Arthur muttered to himself. He then started walking in the direction of the spirit sense as it was still in the same position that it was before. As Arthur took step after step, his spirit sense would simultaneously shorten. Eventually, he reached the end of the spirit sense and all of it was retracted into his body. Just a couple of seconds later the skill's duration ended and Arthur reappeared in the real world. Except this time he was not in his room, 
but rather in the street outside his house. Arthur looked around and made sure of where he was. Yes, it worked. It really worked. Arthur exclaimed in joy. Shukong the stanzas too realized what Arthur had done by observing his actions. Arthur had realized that he would be transported in the same position as he was in the real world. This also meant that his spirit sense would stay in the same position, too. FNDD é UPTS on N, OV, I, L, I, ponto, com. Using this technicality, what Arthur did was mark the location he wanted to go by using his spirit sense and then use the skill fade. This way, when he appeared in the parallel void, he was able to go to his intended location by simply following his own spirit sense. Right now he had only walked in a straight path, but he knew that he could do this in any direction he wanted as long as he kept his spirit sense in the same position. But the benefit that the parallel void had was that there was nothing there. It didn't matter if there was something blocking it, Arthur could simply walk there in a straight path. Amazing! Excellent thinking Arthur. Shukong the stanzas praised. Shukong the stanzas had not expected that such a method would be possible, but Arthur had done it. Although the flaws of this method were also apparent in that the maximum distance Arthur would be able to travel is the maximum range of his spirit sense, which was about 80 meters. Another flaw was that he would have to chart the path with his spirit sense beforehand. This meant that if there was something that blocked his spirit sense or if there was someone in the path who could detect it, that could be problematic. But still, this was better than nothing, and at least Arthur would be able to use the skill up to a certain limit. Though there was a very big advantage that Arthur had if he was ever in a wide and open area. He could simply activate the skill and run at the maximum speed he could muster and leave the enemies behind. He would have no need to chart a plot. Chapter 295 Marriage Alliance? Please read the author note at end. Now that Arthur had figured out a method to alleviate some of the flaws of the fourth skill fade, he felt a lot better. He then thought of what to do next, as there were quite a few things on his list. He had nearly fulfilled the conditions he needed in order to be able to assimilate the bloodline of the Great Slumber Bear and the only thing left was the nameless technique of the lost immortal. For that technique, the main problem Arthur was having was actually seeing his progress. He couldn't tell if it was good or bad, and whether it would be enough for him to counter the effects of the bloodline ability, Well of Slumber. The consequences of the ability could be fatal, thus Arthur wanted to be extremely sure of it before he attempted it. Arthur already knew that he could possibly be asleep for about a year if he assimilated the bloodline. Thus, by taking that time period as a rule of thumb, he estimated that he would have reached the necessary level in the nameless technique if he was able to eat a year's worth of food. Arthur could already eat a week's worth of food in one day which was around two beasts, which meant he needed eight beasts for a month and eighty-four beasts for a year. And since he didn't know if his requirements may change, he just decided to increase the number to about one hundred beasts. The day he was able to eat the meat of about one hundred beasts would be the day he was ready. But even now Arthur didn't know his current limit. Even if he felt satiated, he realized that he could still keep on eating more and more. Vistgenvelbin.cm for new updates. I need to check my current limit for eating. But for that I'll need to hunt again, I'm about to run out of the meat again. Arthur thought to himself. Another thing he had on his list was to check what was going on with the visit of the Lieutenant Wu Tung. Arthur was a bit suspicious about it. Thus wanted to know more. Hmm. I can do this right now and visit the Hay Core. Hay Bao should be at the town center hopefully and I'm already out of the house, anyway. Arthur decided. He then changed his path and walked towards the town center. While on his way Arthur realized that the number of people had reduced for some reason, it was almost the same as back when winter was here. About a day had passed since he had come from Jingwei's Emporium and had learned about the arrival of the Tang Battalion. But in just 24 hours, the look of the town had changed. This was also the reason why Arthur was able to practice the fourth skill fade without much problem. There simply wasn't anyone nearby, and even in the houses in his neighborhood, there was barely anyone. Are they out working or something else? Arthur wondered. He soon reached the town center and was greeted by the guards at the entrance. Is Hei Bao here? Arthur inquired. No, Senior Arthur. Caption Hei Bao has gone out on a task and is currently not in the town. But Leader Hei when herself is there in the office. The guard who was also a member of the Hei Corps answered. Ah, that's even better. Arthur replied before entering the building and walking up to the office. Upon reaching there, he saw that the doors of the office were closed. Thus he knocked on it. Who is it? Oh, it is you, Arthur. Come in, Haywin said, changing her question in the middle. It was evident that she had used her spirit sense to check who was behind the door, 
and Arthur had felt it as well. He opened the door and found Hay when standing on the balcony looking over the town. She was in a long blue dress and had her signature veil covering her face. Greeting. I haven't seen you for a while, Arthur said in a friendly manner. Indeed, I've been occupied with certain matters. Haywin replied, When did you come back? I had Hay Bao is out on a mission, Arthur asked curiously. I just returned a day back and Hay Bao left that time too. I came to replace him for the time being. Haywin answered, I see. Arthur spoke before walking to the chair and sitting down on it. Haywin took walk to the table and sat at the opposite side. So what are you here for? Haywin questioned. I heard the mayor's son, Lieutenant Wu Tang, is coming soon. Arthur spoke. Ah, so you heard. Yes, he is coming here this week at the very least. Haywin answered with a slightly unnerved tone. Arthur sensed the difference in her voice and curiously observed the fluctuations of her vital energy and spirit chi. Is she troubled by something? Arthur wondered as he sensed the irregular waves. He could now tell that her heart was beating in a slightly higher speed and even the waves of chi coming off of her body were sporadic. Arthur's progress in cultivation had also enhanced his sensitivity to these characteristics. You don't seem to be liking it. Is there more to it than people know? Arthur questioned in a slightly more serious tone. Sigh. Yes. There is something more to it. Haywin answered reluctantly. Of course there should be more, or it wouldn't make sense for Wu Tang to bring his entire battalion here. That would be too inefficient and also a waste of resources. Arthur added. The mayor Wu Sun apparently struck a deal with the disciples of the tri cauldron Peony sect. The exact details of it are unknown, but one of the conditions is a marriage alliance. Chapter 296. Representing the Lord? Arthur was not expecting for there to be something like this behind the visit of Wu Tung. This turned out to be a much bigger thing than people knew of. The commoners only knew that Lieutenant Wu Tang was coming to meet his father. What truly? But isn't it a bit suddenly? Aren't affairs such as these rather high profile? At least in case of high officials like Wu Tang and the mayor. Arthur questioned further. Sigh. Another sigh escaped Hei Wen's lips as she rubbed her head. We were completely in the dark about it and only found out about it because the Lord attended the banquet where it was decided. It was rather abrupt too and the people there were all shocked. Hei Wen answered in a tired tone. So then, what does this mean for us? Like to me, it doesn't seem important. Arthur stated. Till now Arthur was suspicious that something serious was happening. But now that he heard that it was as a relatively simple affair such as this, he didn't care about it much. Of course, there isn't anything for you to do. But for us, we have a lot of things that now need to be changed, plans that need to be modified. Haywin replied. Phew. Arthur took a breath of relief after hearing that he had no need to get involved in it and that it was an internal matter of the Haycor. I'll take my leave then. That's all I needed to ask pretty much. Arthur said and was about to stand up when Haywin spoke. Wait, she said. Arthur stopped and sat back down on the chair and waited for her to say what she wanted to say. Although you are not involved right now, you may need to in the future. Haywin stated. Oh, how so? Arthur asked. Even if Arthur was reluctant to get involved in the matter right now, it didn't mean that he would do it if he was asked by Haycor. He was still grateful to them and didn't mind helping them out. Actually, the Lord wanted to invite you to the very banquet that happened a month ago. But the circumstances changed, and then there was no need. Still, I'm sure the Lord would probably be inviting you in the future. He also wanted to meet you in person. Haywin explained. Arthur was now curious too. He too had been wanting to meet the Lord for a while now, and even Senior Shukong the Stanzas had praised him before. He was one of the few people that Shukong the Stanzas had praised, including Jing Wei. Sure. It shouldn't be a problem as long as you inform me beforehand. Arthur answered. All right. We should know a bit more of what's going to happen in the upcoming days. Thus I will inform you according to that. Haywin replied. Arthur nodded his head. And then a thought appeared in his mind. Um, what does the Lord want with me exactly? Except for of course meeting me formally. Arthur asked curiously. The Lord will want you to fight. Or more accurately demonstrate your strength. Hey, when answered hesitatingly, Arthur S. Browse furrowed upon hearing this. While he was not afraid of fighting, he was no fool to rush into a fight randomly. If there was no proper reason for it, he would never accept something like this. And why would I need to fight? Arthur questioned in a serious tone. When the before the marriage, certain ceremonies are held. 
One of these involves the demonstration of each attending party's strength. Since the Lord is one of the influential persons attending it, he needs someone to represent him. Although he has us the Hay Corps with him, we cannot fight for him. Most of our members are not strong enough to qualify for a competition of that level, and the ones that are cannot be revealed. The Lord cannot recruit a mercenary either as that would lead to a loss of face for him. This leaves him with one choice, you. Hey, when answered in detail. Tate slash e most up-to-date envels are published on n 0 velbsh n dot co slash m. Arthur did not speak anything after Hey one was done and simply thought it over. Hey when two did not interrupt him as she knew that this decision was in his hands and if he really wanted to reject it, there wasn't anything she could do. The Lord and she were already a bit apprehensive about Arthur's master and were careful about him. The Lord had done an investigation of his own and all of them had come back empty. This only made them more and more scared about the master behind Arthur. As they did not want to offend the master behind Arthur, they could not force him to do anything that he did not want to. Haywen was getting nervous as five minutes had passed by and Arthur had still not responded. All right, I accept. Arthur answered in a determined tone. Phew. Haywen silently let out a breath of relief. Although her lord had not yet asked her to tell Arthur this, she had taken the risk to preemptively ask him. She had been apprehensive about being rejected, but now that Arthur had said yes, she was happy with it. Though I have some conditions, Arthur added at the end. Gulp. Haywen calmed down upon hearing his words and did not mind them. She did not think the Lord would ask Arthur to do this for free either. Having some kind of reward or payment was fine, though the question stood what is it that he wanted. Please go ahead and state it. Haywen said. I need beast meat. Lots of it. Enough for a person to last for an entire year and I want it fresh. Arthur said in a straight tone. Hey one was completely thrown off by this. What? Chapter 297 Arthur S. Condition Chapter 297 Arthur S. Condition Hey when soon collected her wits and composed herself. She immediately thought of the possibilities that arose from Arthur S. Question. Even if he had asked for beast meat, it still depended on the type that he would ask for. For example, if Arthur asked for just normal beast meat, then it was no problem even if he asked for ten years worth of it, not to mention just a year. But if it was something like nascent soul realm beast meant, then it would be a problem coming up with even a single beast. Um, what kind of beast meat do you want though? Awen asked. Optimally I would like spirit beast meat, but if it is just normal beasts that would work too. But the quantity would need to be increased. I would need four normal beasts in the equivalent of a single spirit beast's meat. Arthur answered. Phew. Haywen got relieved after hearing this. They should be able to get plenty of spirit beast meat even if it would not be a year's worth. They could compensate the reaming with the normal beast meat. Anyway. That is acceptable. I'll inform the Lord. Haywen replied. Though. Why do you need so much meat? Haywen curiously asked. I'll be going in seclusion for about a year. Away from here. So I just want to be prepared. Arthur answered. He had already discussed this with Senior Shukong the stanzas in his mind. Thus knew what to say if he was asked this. A year of seclusion? When? Haywen asked, feeling a bit worried. She was worried about the timing of Arthur's seclusion because if it came at the item of the event it would not work out for them. Oh, you don't have to worry about it. I'll only do it after the event is done. I need to do quite a bit of a preparation before that anyway. Arthur answered. That's all good then. We should be able to procure the meat relatively fast. I'll get the reply from Lord by the end of this week and then inform you. Oh, and the event may be in this month any time depending on how well their negotiations go. Haywen replied. Arthur nodded in response and was about to leave the room when he suddenly realized something. He halted in the doorway while holding onto the door handle and spoke. By the way, who is Lieutenant Wu Tang getting married to anyway? Arthur questioned. Oh, the bride-to-be is the daughter of one of the elders of the Tri-Cauldron Peony sect. Haywen answered. I see. Well, goodbye then. Arthur replied before leaving the office. He quickly left the town center and headed back to the courtyard. Even on the way back, he couldn't see many people, and the streets were still relatively empty. To him, it seemed like the people had already headed to the southern town. Arthur guessed that with the increased presence of the mercenaries in the forest, the hunters must be having a bit harder time hunting beasts. This opportunity was probably a godsend to most people, as it was safe and steady pay, even if it was only for a few months. After the time period for the jobs was over the people should be able to go back to their normal jobs without much problem. 
Even the mercenaries should leave by that time most likely, and thus the hunters will have plenty of prey too. The time for sowing the core was already close by and people would soon be preparing the fields in the eastern town. Arthur wondered if the peasants there had chosen to go to the southern town or not. If they really did, then the harvest this year may be less which meant that the cost of crops may go up. Just like this, Arthur thought of some trivial things and reached his house. Upon entering, he could smell something burning and could even see smoke coming out from one of the windows. Sigh. Seems like little shrubby burned something again. Arthur muttered as he went to the kitchen. His guess turned out to be true as the meat that little shrubby was cooking was fully charred. There was fire lit on the other meat that was kept to the side as well. Evidently little shrubby had lost control there, and the fire had spread to the other things. Still, Arthur was not worried about it much. Unlike the rest of the buildings in the courtyard, the kitchen was made fully from stone and brick. The kitchen was also separate from the house, and there was enough gap between the buildings so that the fire could not spread there. A lot of the courtyards in the town were made with a similar design in mind as this helped prevent fires from burning down homes. Arthur saw little shrubby panicking and not knowing what to do. While the beast was smart enough to know how to light something, it had still not learned how to put it out. Arthur had even put buckets of water nearby so that little shrubby could use them. But the beast seemed to have a dislike of water and refused to go near it unless it was thirsty. Arthur picked up the bucket of water and splashed the water onto the fire, dousing it instantly. Sizzle. The sound of embers dying out and the hot stones sizzling due to the water was heard. You really need to get over your dislike of water, little shrubby. Arthur chided. Mewo. The beast acted coy and pretend to be innocent. It rubbed against Arthur's legs and showed its affection while purring lightly. Sigh. Arthur petted its head and began to clean the mess that had been made. While doing this, a thought came to his mind. Hmm. What will I do with him? When I'm in seclusion, Tate slash e most up to date envels are published on n 0 velbsh n dot co slash m. Chapter 298, Planning Ahead. Arthur was sitting cross-legged on his bed while Little Shrubby snuggled against his back. He was currently replenishing the liquid spirit chi he had exhausted while using the fourth skill fade, and was also thinking of what to do next. He had expended 20 drops of spirit chi in two uses of the skill. Thus he wanted to regain them as soon as possible so that he could continue his normal cultivation. Arthur popped the basic chi pills into his mouth one after the other as he refined the spirit chi wisps into liquid drops. He then remembered how he had refined a large amount of liquid spirit chi all at once yesterday and was wondering if he should do that. It seemed to him that it was a more efficient method of refining liquid spirit chi but it was also quite taxing on his mind and took up a lot of his focus. Doing that had also made him aware of the fact that the longer he refined the liquid spirit chi without storing it in the dantian, the higher his speed would rise. It was obvious that if not for something like that he would certainly not have been able to refine 300 drops of liquid spirit chi all at once that too in mere 36 hours. If it were his usual session, he would have only been able to refine a maximum of 50 drops of liquid spirit chi. The consumption of basic chi pills in addition to his increase in body tempering cultivation had greatly helped him. But that continuous method of liquid spirit chi also came with its flaws. It simply took a lot of his time and he could not be interrupted in between. If he was disturbed, he could do nothing but end it right there and store the refined liquid spirit chi into the dantian. Arthur also could not repeat the same thing again as he had a few things to do every day and thus could not enter seclusion like before. A few hours passed and Arthur had fully replenished the 20 liquid spirit chi drops that he had used up. Arthur opened his eyes and let out a sigh. Sigh. I now need to focus on the nameless technique of the lost immortal and make sure that I reach the required level. Though I still have about four more months till the great slumber bear would start recovering. Hmm. I think I'll use the majority of the liquid spirit chi that I refine every day to practice the nameless technique of the lost immortal. I am already at a sufficiently strong cultivation base and need to gain the bloodline first. After that is done, I should have no problem reaching the core condensation realm with all the pills that I have with me now. These should easily last me for more than a year. Arthur thought out loud. Arthur then stood up, making little shrubby move to the side as it had no support from his back. The beast did not even react though and simply continued sleeping soundly. I need to go hunt some beasts. Even if Hei Wan will be getting me the beast meat, it will still take a week's time before I get the reply from the Lord and actually obtaining it will perhaps take even longer. I can't waste this week of time. I'll just hunt beasts and use them for the technique. Arthur thought to himself as he walked out of the room. 
An hour later Arthur was in the northern forest tracking down some spirit beasts that he had seen. While in the forest Arthur was able to come across some spirit beasts, but they were already being targeted by some mercenaries thus he had to give up on them. The mercenaries however were willing to share it with Arthur when they recognized who he was. Arthur kiddingly rejected their offer as he knew the beast would not even satisfy him for one meal. He just decided to continue on deeper into the forest. Another hour passed as he found his fourth spirit beast. He killed that one too and hear the sound of something in the distance. Arthur guessed that it was either the mercenaries fighting some beasts or just beasts battling amongst themselves. Arthur headed there and found a few ape beasts that were fighting a lizard beast. The apes were smaller than Arthur but were at the mid-stage chi refining realm. There were about four of them and the lizard beast they were fighting was alone being at the late stage of the chi refining realm. Arthur scanned the area with his spirit chi and did not even bother to hide. To him, these beasts were rather easy and would not take him much of an effort to kill. The five beasts of course detected him when he approached them and got enraged. The ape beasts bared their fangs at him while the lizard beast simply hissed at him. Arthur looked at their conditions and saw them to be relatively fine. Looks like they had just started fighting when I interrupted them, Arthur thought. Arthur used his spirit sense and his short sword came flying out of the scabbard while Arthur himself withdrew a spear from the ring. He then commanded the short sword to fly towards the four ape beasts while he himself went to the lizard beast. The apes were surprised by the flying short sword and jumped around while dodging it. Arthur did not mind it, as his main goal was to merely distract the ape beasts and keep them occupied while he killed the lizard beast. Arthur directly blinked to the top of the lizard beast and pierced its skull with the spear. With its brain skewered from the middle, the lizard beast let out a light hiss before dying. Now it's your turn. Chapter 299 Methods for Bloodline Refinement Arthur flicked the blood off of his short sword and looked back at his handiwork. The lizard beast and the four ape beasts were lying on the ground. Dead. All of them had been killed in one precise blow to the head and had their skulls pierced. It had not taken Arthur even a minute to finish the five beasts off which showed his capabilities. If it were any other cultivator, they would have either been unable to do it alone or would have taken a while to do it. And even if they were able to do it, they definitely would have sustained some injuries. Arthur kneeled and used his spirit sense to check their bodies for their beast cores. He found them rather easily but did not remove them there. He would do so with all the other beasts he had hunted till now, back at this house. The only reason he checked the beast cores was to see if there was any beast core that had awakened a bloodline ability. Because Arthur was soon going to assimilate the bloodline of the great slumber beast, he wanted to get some practice. This practice was not going to be the actual assimilation of the bloodline, as that would be counterproductive. No, rather Senior Shukong the stanzas was going to teach him the way to prepare the bloodline for assimilation so that he knew when the time so arose. The most common method that was used was to refine the beast core of the spirit beast along with a few supplementary materials and turn it into a type of alchemical pill. There were many other methods, but depending on the bloodline, they greatly varied. Some methods were suitable for some bloodlines while some were not. Senior Shukong the stanzas was going to teach Arthur about a different method that needed no additional material and could be done as long as the entire corpse of the beast was available. But Senior Shukong the stanzas had already warned him that the process was going to be quite painful and difficult. Still, Arthur did not falter and was fully determined to go through with it. Not these either, Arthur said, looking at the corpses. You will have to look for more. Beasts that have awakened bloodlines are harder to find. Though, there are still some methods to refine and awaken bloodline if you have more of the same type beasts. Shukong the stanzas replied. Same type of beasts, huh? Hmm. How many would I require if they are on the level of these ape beasts? Arthur questioned. With their cultivation bases? I would say anywhere around 20, but even then there will be chances of failure and this is only to refine the awakened bloodline. To make it into the form which can be assimilated will take even more effort. Shukong the stanzas answered. Sai. It is indeed quite complex. Guess. I'll just have to keep looking. Arthur stated before looking at the sky. Or not. It'll be dark in a couple of hours. Arthur muttered. He then stored the corpses into the ring and headed back. In today's hunt, Arthur had been able to hunt about 12 spirit beasts and 5 normal beasts. From this, he estimated that he would need to hunt for about a week to even get a basic amount needed to test out the progress of the nameless technique of the lost immortal. Still for Arthur, hay when gathering the beast meat would be the fastest option, as it meant that he would not have to spend the time he could use for cultivation in hunting down beasts. 
the chances of finding spirit beasts was also not absolute. That time when he had found the herd of the ash-crowned deers was also rather uncommon and would likely not happen again. The large herds such as those were rather rare, and only a few types of beasts would stay like that. Most of the spirit beasts in the northern forest were either solitary or lived in smaller groups. The journey back was much faster for Arthur, as all he needed to do was run in a straight line. With his skills, he could ignore most obstacles or jump over them. Arthur was back at the town in an hour's time and was now in the courtyard preparing the beast corpses. As soon as he started digging out the beast cores from the corpses of the spirit beasts, Little Shrubby ran out of the house and came towards him. It had been attracted by the scent of the blood and was probably here to get some. Meow us tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. It lightly growled and looked at the beast core that was in Arthur's hand. It nudged Arthur with his head and then Arthur felt a thought appear in his mind. Want? The thought said. Oh, you want the beast core? Arthur said as he gestured to the small olive-sized beast core. Little Shrubby nodded in an almost human-like manner, showing his response. Give it to him, you won't be using the beast cores anyway, will you? Shukong the stanzas said. Will it be fine though? It won't have any bad effects, will it? Arthur asked in a concerned tone. The beast cores are kind of like alchemical pills for the beasts, and they often consume them to grow their cultivation base. In fact, it's one of the primary methods by which they cultivate. Though there are of course certain beast cores that they can't consume depending on the type of the beast. Still, the beasts innately know what kind of cores are good for them, so whichever beast core it like you can give it to him and it won't be problematic for you. Shukong the stanzas answered. All right, senior. Arthur replied before handing the beast core in his hand to Little Shrubby. The beast core he had just given it was that of the lizard beast and was dark green in color. The color matched to those of its scales and looked a bit like a gem. Little Shrubby did not even look at it for a second before swallowing the entire beast's core. Well, that was fast. Chapter 300, A Wedding Invitation Little Shrubby looked pleased after eating the beast core, and Arthur could feel the faint waves of spirit chi coming off of its body. They had increased in frequency and were now getting stronger. Is he gonna break through? Arthur wondered. It won't be unusual, you have been feeding him spirit beast meat for the past months. With the amount he has eaten, his progress should be quite fast compared to other beasts who have to spend time hunting themselves. Plus, his aptitude along with intelligence has also been raised because of the dual Circe Ascension fruits. This beast core should possibly push him into the late stage of the Qi refining realm. Shukong the stanzas replied. Arthur nodded in response and watched the condition of Little Shrubby. After a few seconds, it seemed to have become sleepy and thus went back inside to sleep on the warm bed. Arthur went back to preparing the beast corpses and took about an hour to butcher them all. In all, he had obtained about three late-stage Qi refining realm spirit beasts, for mid-stage Qi refining realm spirit beasts and five early-stage Qi refining realm beasts. Arthur especially stored the beast cores separately so that Little Shrubby could get them to eat whenever he wanted to. Oh, almost forgot about all the blood, Arthur remembered. He then went to the yard and willed for all the spilled blood from the ring to come out. It was as if a dam was broken and a river of blood started flowing. Ah, I may have misjudged the amount, Arthur muttered, feeling shocked. Soon the entire ground of the yard was covered in beast blood, but it didn't take long for it to be fully absorbed into the soil, leaving behind some stains which showed that blood was spilled here. There wasn't much of a bloody scent either, as it was soon dispersed by the blowing wind. Right now, the only place that was left bare of the blood was the two graves of Arthur's parents. Arthur shook his head and went back to the bedroom to continue his cultivation. Arthur returned to the routine that he had before. He cultivated and refined the liquid spirit chi and then infused about 80% of it into his stomach in order to progress the nameless technique of the lost immortal while storing the remaining 20%. He would then eat as much beast meat as he could and improve the technique further. This also led to an increase in Arthur's body tempering cultivation and he was getting even more closer to the Sientian physique. The day after Little Shrubby had eaten the beast core, he broke through to the late stage of the Qi refining realm. Arthur didn't see much change in him except for it getting a bit stronger. He had not seen any change in its speed either. He could have gotten faster, but because he didn't use its full speed it was not apparent. Arthur would also go to the forest and hunt down some beasts for him to eat and was able to hunt about 65 spirit beasts in total by the end of the week. But even out of all these beasts, not one of them had an awakened bloodline. 
neither was Arthur able to find a large number of the same type of beasts so that he could use the alternative method that Senior Shukong the stanzas had told him of. Today was the eighth day after he had spoken with Heiwan, and was also the day when he was supposed to receive the answer back from the Lord. It would be good for him if he was able to obtain the beast meat early on, as that would mean he could keep a reserve stock of them when it would be the time to assimilate the bloodline of the Great Slumber Bear. Hugh get the latest chgers on n slash velbin.com. Arthur opened his eyes and let out a breath. He was able to sense that someone was standing outside the gate of his house and knew exactly who it was. Looks like Haywin got the reply, Arthur said before he stood up. He walked out of the bedroom and walked to unlock the gate. Standing in front of him was none other than Hay Ping, who had been posted near his house and would bring him any messages from the Hay Corps if there were any need for him. Senior Arthur, the leader has called you. She told me that a letter has come for you. Hei Ping informed. Ah, nice. Right on time. Arthur replied before closing the gate on his way out. Hei Ping nodded and went back to his post while Arthur went to the town center. Hei Wan was waiting in her office and an open letter was lying on the desk in front of her. She noticed Arthur walking in and gestured for him to sit down. So, what did the Lord say? Arthur asked. As per your request, a year's worth of beast meat is being shipped to the town as we speak. It should be here in two to three days of time and will be entirely filled with spirit beast meat. Haywin replied. Also about the other thing that I spoke to you about. She added after taking a pause. You mean about me representing the Lord in a competition of some kind? Arthur asked. Yes that. Well, there is a great chance they will be holding it in the next week so now you know to be prepared and to keep your schedule clear. It will be lasting for about 10 days and you are free to stay in Wu Lim City for the entire time. You also don't need to pay for anything all the expenses will be taken care of by the mayor. And you will also need to attend the wedding so take this as an official invitation to the wedding. Hei Wen answered. Chapter 301 Jing Weiss News Chapter 301 Jing Wei's News Arthur had certainly not expected something like this. Not only was he representing the Lord in the competition but he would also be attending the wedding now. He had never been to a wedding of anyone that had a high status like the son of the mayor Wu Tung. All the weddings Arthur had been to were of the commoners and were usually a rather simple affair with little costs. They were also quick and would be complete within a day, unlike the more richer people whose wedding proceedings could last for about a week. Arthur hearing that the entire thing was going to last for ten days made him feel both excited and a little sad at the same time. Excited because he would be getting to see the city and also experience the high-class event. Sad because he would not be able to focus fully on cultivating during those days, most likely. Hmm. Haywin said that all expenses would be borne by the mayor and the lord. Then does this mean I can eat as much as I like? Arthur wondered. Arthur had heard stories of how precious ingredients were used in the banquets of the rich and this was no ordinary rich person, but rather the city mayor Wu Sun's own banquet. Not to mention hearing that his son Wu Tang will be marrying the daughter of an elder of a cultivation sect. There was bound to be even better stuff in the entire event, if not the same. You said that all expenses are borne by the mayor and the lord, right? Arthur questioned. As soon as Arthur asked this question Hei Wen didn't know why but she got a bad feeling at the bottom of her stomach. It was as if her guts were telling her that misfortune was bound to strike soon or something. Well yes, but it depends on the kind of expense too. As long as it's not something unreasonable like a person destroying property or hurting people, it will be fine. Again there can be exceptions. So just use your judgment and don't do anything untoward. Haywin warned. How about eating food? Arthur further asked, not minding her mask chiding. Food? Of course, food is included in that. Any invited guest can eat and drink as much as they want. It would be a dishonor to the mayor if he could not do even this much. Haywin answered. A smile bloomed on Arthur S. face while the feeling in Hay Wen's guts worsened. All right then, it should be no problem. I'll be ready. Just call me when you are about to head there. Arthur replied before walking out of the town center. Hay Wen rubbed her forehead as a headache sprouted out of nowhere. Did I... perhaps taunt the god of misfortune or something? Why do I feel bad? Hay Wen thought to herself. Meanwhile, Arthur was on his way to the entrance of the town now. He wanted to hunt more beasts and try to find a beast that had awakened its bloodline. He now knew how much time he had before he could head there. Hmm. So once I'm back from that wedding, I'll head to the northern forest to get the great slumber bear's bloodline and then prepare for assimilation. Though I'll also have to do something with little shrubby, as I can't leave it on its own the entire time. The house too.
can't leave it just like that for a year. People are bound to come to check if it is not opened for a year. What should I do for that? Arthur muttered to himself while trying to plan for the future. For the house, you can try placing an illusory formation on it. I'm sure you can try asking Jing Wei for it. Xukong the stanzas suggested. US tirize at n slash vel slash by slash n dot co. Oh yeah, I can try that. Perhaps he'll even have a beast core with an awakened bloodline. If he does, then I won't have to hunt specifically for one. Arthur replied. He then took out the communication jade from the ring and contacted Jing Wei with it. For a minute, there was no response. But then he could sense Jing Wei respond. He seemed to be in a hurry and asked Arthur what did he contact him for. Arthur quickly told him what he needed and got both a positive and negative answer. In the case of the illusory formation, there wasn't much of a problem, and Jing Wei could give him the things needed for setting it up. As for the beast core with an awakened bloodline, Jing Wei said that they did not have them. They had sold off most of the raw beast materials that they had gathered to Jingming Shang for the resources that were needed to fix the spatial ring that Arthur had given to Jing Wei and thus could not do much about it. Arthur understood this and said that he'll be fine with just the illusory formation. Jing Wei told him to come to the shop right away and also said that he had a little more news about them. Hmm, what could the news be? Arthur wondered as he changed his direction to go towards Jing Wei's emporium. He opened the door of the shop with a loud creak and walked to the back room. There was no one in the shop, and it seemed like the dust had started to settle again. Arthur blew out the lamp in the back room and appeared in the courtyard before heading to the mansion at the other head. While walking there, he looked up at the sky and found it to be the same as before. The environment of the courtyard was also restored to its normal one, and the damage caused by the repair of the spatial ring was also gone. Arthur then saw Duan Ku standing there at the doorway, seemingly waiting for him. Upon getting close, Arthur could see that her expression seemed to be a bit troubled. Chapter 302 A Patriot Chapter and a Princess Arthur was about to ask Duan Ku what was wrong when she suddenly spoke. Let's go grandfather is waiting for you, she said before walking in. Arthur didn't even have a chance to respond to her and simply decided to follow her for the time being. Though he was also having a strange feeling in his guts now. They reached the hall and Arthur saw Jing Wei sitting there with his eyes closed. He seemed to be deep in thought and from his expressions it looked as if he had detached himself from this world and the only things that existed for him now were the things in his mind. Jing Wei opened his eyes when Arthur came to a stop in front of him. Grandfather, I've got the illusory formation components ready as you asked. Duan Ku said. That's good. Now give them to him and tell him how to use them after that. Jing Wei said in a calm tone. Duan Ku withdrew a box from her spatial treasure and handed it to Arthur. She also took out a small jade slip and held it to her forehead for a minute before giving it to him as well. The box has the components you will need to set the formation while the jade slip has detailed instructions on how to construct it. It shouldn't be hard as the components are already refined. Duan Ku said. Arthur kept the box of components in his ring and looked through the contents of the small jade slip. The information appeared in his mind and he found it to be relatively simple. I can guide you with the formation so these instructions don't really matter. Shukong the stanzas said in Arthur's mind. Hum Arthur hummed in response to both Duan Ku and Shukong the stanzas. He then looked at Jing Wei who was still sitting on the throne like chair. So what news did you have for me? Arthur questioned. Well, first of all I would like to thank you and your master again for giving us the knowledge. We will eternally be grateful for that. Jing Wei said and then stood up. Duan Ku also seemed to have tensed up and was now standing in a rather different posture. Jing Wei then brought his hands in front and upped them in a salute, and Duan Ku did the same. What? Arthur was about to talk when he was interrupted. I Jing Wei, the sixth patriarch of the Jing clan hereby declare that me and my clan, as long as they exist shall be in your debt, and if you so desire will be available to help for five generations of your offsprings. Jing Wei declared in a powerful tone before bowing. Arthur kept on listening with shock face couldn't say anything either. I Duan Ku. The sole princess of the former Duan kingdom hereby declare that me and my family, as long as they exist shall be in your debt, and if you so desire will be available for help for five generations of your offsprings. Duan Ku declared in a staunch voice before bowing as well. Arthur was overwhelmed by their words and felt as if his mind was going blank. That was certainly unexpected. Xu Kong the stanzas commented. While Arthur could still understand Jing Wei's words, he was confused about Duan Ku's. Princess? The Duan Kingdom? Arthur questioned in his mind. 
He tried to recall if he had read anything about the Duan Kingdom and remembered that there indeed was one a long time ago. The Duan Kingdom was one of the kingdoms of the former Central Continent and was also a great power once upon a time. Eventually, it was taken over by the Zhou Kingdom like the rest and became a vassal. The royal clan of the Duan Kingdom still existed back then, but something happened about 50 years ago when a civil war broke out. There was some kind of conflict in the royal family and all of its members were either wiped out or disappeared. After that, the kingdom was split up by the neighboring kingdoms and disappeared forever into the annals of time. Arthur had not expected that Duan Ku was a princess of that kingdom at all. Jing Wei and Duan Ku stood back up from their bow and looked at the perplexed Arthur. I know it's a lot to process but don't take it to your heart. We, we are no longer the same as before. I am the patriarch of a clan that has no members, and Duan Ku is the princess of a kingdom that has no subjects. Our titles are mere scars of the past and hold no meaning. Jing Wei said in a calm tone. Arthur didn't know what to say and simply nodded his head. He knew that the words they had said were heavy and were their way to express their gratitude. He could not disrespect them by denying them this thing. Grandfather, you still need to tell him that. Duan Keskivik prompted. Tell me what? Arthur asked. The knowledge that we obtained has greatly helped us, and in a long time I finally feel like I have hope. Hope to take revenge for my clan. Jing Wei replied with flames in his eyes.